Welcome to Billionaire Romance Audiobooks. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It helps more than you know and is the best way to stay up to date on our latest releases. When you subscribe, you'll also get notified when we release new videos. Marriage by Mistake An Enemies to Lovers Secret Baby Romance Audiobook Book 1 of the Accidental Love Series By Jessica Fox Narrated by Google Play Auto Narrated Voice Audio Copyright 2024 BFA Publishing Blurb Where the hell am I and what is this ring doing on my finger? This is not the way I thought I'd be waking up after my first night in Vegas. No clothes. Pounding headache. Strange bed. And an even stranger woman lying asleep next to me. I'll admit she's smoking hot though. I'm supposed to be here to party for my buddy's engagement. Not to get married myself. Something crazy definitely went down last night. She's wearing the same gold band I am. I'm definitely starting to panic now, trying to remember yesterday's details. Trip down on the private jet, check. Meeting the rest of the bachelor party guys at the hotel, check. Afternoon drinks, check. Dinner and drinks. Blackjack and drinks. Dancing and drinks. Shots with a deliciously curvy blonde, and then it's all a blur. FML. I need to get myself out of this mess ASAP. Judging from the morning so far, last night was full of terrible decisions. And I'm dreading what other surprises might be in store for me. Chapter 1 Maxim Thanks for stopping by in San Francisco to pick me up, I say to my old college buddy. Taking a private plane to Las Vegas is way cooler than showing up in a regular airplane. I grabbed my bag, walking out of the plane behind my friend, who'd done pretty damn good for himself. No problem at all. Brownsville, Texas to San Francisco is just a hop, skip, and jump for me. Plus the ride gave us some much-needed time to catch up on each other's lives. Callan tossed his bag over his shoulder, leading me to the limo waiting for us on the tarmac. I had no idea you'd become such a tech whiz since our college days. A millionaire at only 30 years old, impressive. I ain't got nothing on you, Callan. A billionaire before you turned 30. Callan's success was beyond phenomenal. That came with loads of help from my generous family. I wouldn't be close to being what I now am if it wasn't for them. But you, man, you built that entire tech company all on your own. I'm proud to say I went to school with you. And proud to call you one of my best friends. Even if it has been ages since we've actually seen each other. Talking on the phone is okay. But getting to see you in person is way better. Clapping him on the back as he tossed his bag into the car, I wore a smile that wouldn't fade away. This weekend is going to be the bomb. You bet it is. We're gonna party like it's 1999. Granted, we were around 8 years old in 1999 but we can still party like it's back in the day. He hopped into the car, taking the seat behind the driver and facing me as I sat next to him. It was still hard to believe that my old pal Callan Duran had gotten married and had two kids already. It was damn cool of your wife to let you attend something like this. She went to a bachelorette party a few months ago in Cancun for the weekend. How could she balk when I told her about Tanner's bachelor party and that it would be a weekend-long deal. Plus I promised not to get wild and to call her each night. Cool? I needed a sort of sober person to keep an eye on me. I'm not a big drinker. And by that, I mean that I haven't had a drink of alcohol since our college days. It just isn't my thing. It messes with my mind too much, you know? And my mind is my moneymaker, so I take pretty good care of it. Burning brain cells in any way, shape or form is pretty much a big no-no to me. You know that you don't have to drink if you don't want to, Maxim. This isn't college, and you don't have to give in to peer pressure. And the guys might not be as bad at pressuring you as they used to be, we're all adults now. I wasn't as sure of that as he was. 
Tanner alone can be relentless. Don't you remember his motto? Come on dude, be halfway cool for like a second. And that was just one of the guys who we would be joining at the hotel and casino on the strip. And Noah, Eli and Tyler have those looks that say, come on join us. That's not the worst peer pressure ever Maxim. Callan laughed as we headed down the strip. Look at all the people walking around with drinks in their hands. He pointed out one woman in particular. She's got a giant fishbowl in her hands, carrying it around like it's a trophy of some kind. See, I don't want that to become me. I knew I was far too easily pressured into drinking, but I wanted to live a little too. I want to do some drinking. I've had a lot of stress on me the last few years with my company. Granted I put the stress on myself, any tech founder could probably say the same, but it's been stressful nonetheless. And lonely too. No time for female company, if you know what I mean. So have a few drinks and get to know a few girls while we're here. Callan had always found it easy to just flow with things. I wasn't that talented. I don't need a few women. But one would be nice. Just for the weekend though. I don't have time for anything serious. My company is doing good right now, but I want it to become better than good. I want it to become great. And it will. He gestured to the hotel we'd stopped in front of. But for now forget about work and go back in time before we all had jobs. Go back to when we had no cares and were just starting college. Go to the day we all ended up in line to join the best club on campus. Yeah, the rock and roll club had everything our group wanted. Music, alcohol, and brotherhood. No girls allowed. I liked that the best. The girls had their own club, so we could relax and be ourselves. And we got to know each other, on a level that most guys never get to. We shared our ideas on life, our ideas about love and the future. And we all ended up making something out of ourselves. I like to think that sharing so much with other guys like ourselves made that happen for us. You know, gave us the support system we needed to succeed in business. Man I have the best memories from those days. Looking out of the window and at the sidewalk and the rivers of people walking up and down it, I knew that this weekend would help me unwind. And I needed that more desperately than any of my friends even knew. Me too man. Me too. Life had gotten away from me. My personal life, that is. My business life had taken over completely. I needed to live carefree for the next couple of days. But I didn't want to get super drunk and ruin it. Callan, just don't let me get wasted and make a fool out of myself. Promise me that you will drag my body up to my room before I can let that happen. I can promise you that, Maxim. I won't let you make a fool out of yourself. Now come on. Let's get out of this car and join our friends inside. Noah just texted me that we're the only ones who haven't shown up yet, and they're waiting on us to take the first shot of our party weekend. Already, it's starting. I had to smile though. Leave it to the rock and roll club rebels to get the party started. I brought my club leather jacket. I hope you packed yours too. You know, Tanner's gonna want us to take a group photo in them. Yeah, I brought mine. Even though it's like a zillion degrees in Las Vegas. I read the email ten times to be sure I brought everything Tanner asked us to. Not sure what the shaving cream is for, but I brought a can of it. Do you think he plans to make us shave our beards? I ran my hand over the one I'd been growing for three years. It went all the way down to my belly button. Callan, who always had the clean-shaven look, nodded. His fiancée, Beth, said no scruffy faces in the wedding photos. And we're all expected to be in them. Get what I'm saying? No way. I held tight to my beard. I can't do it, Callan. I just can't. I've been growing this since I got serious about my company. It will grow back. Just keep telling yourself that. I was about to protest again when the chauffeur opened the door. We have arrived. The bellboy will take your bags to your suites. Have a pleasant stay in Vegas. And good luck, gentlemen. I got out first, then put my bag onto the little carrier the young bellboy had waiting for us. Names on the tag. He nodded. 
Yes, Mr. Cambridge. I'll get your bags to your suites. No worries. Callan put his bag on the carrier too. Duran. Callan Duran. You sound like James Bond, I said with a chuckle as we headed inside. I like to put on an air of mystery sometimes. Laughing, we headed inside. The sounds of the bustling crowd filled the air. In the background, there was the faraway sound of people playing slot machines, the bells and whistles going off as people won money. How much are you going to gamble, Maxim? I brought only 500 for that purpose. I knew the others would out-gamble me. They always had. No high-stakes poker this time. I lost my favorite pair of sneakers in the last one we had. I lost my only issue of Playboy magazine that I'd stolen from my oldest brother. That was high stakes man. The sound of a group of men laughing met my ears, and I looked around to find our friends standing around a tall table where six shots were lined up, waiting for us to arrive. Tanner looked up and saw us first. There they are. Hugs ensued, and laughter was about all I heard. It has been way too long, Noah said as he patted me on the back. Maxim, heard about your success. Congrats, man. And I heard about you gaining your doctorate in sports medicine. Congratulations on that. If I need some medical advice, can I call you? You better call me. And call me when you're ready to start investing some of that tech fortune you've accumulated, Maxim, Eli said. I'm working on Wall Street now. But how long that's going to last, I'm not sure. As soon as I have enough of my own funds, I'm thinking about investing in foreign markets. Tyler nodded. Soon, we'll have to put the old rock and roll club to the side and open a new club for wealthy men. At least you guys will. I'm satisfied with running my dad's diner in Philadelphia and being a thousandaire. Save up some money, and I'll turn it into more money for you, Tyler, Eli told him. Hey, Tanner shouted. No talking about work. Right after I say this, I got the promotion I was up for. You're looking at the youngest district manager of Champion Hotels. We are global, so you can expect to see me in various countries on my social media posts from now on. Tyler picked up the first shot glass and held it up high. And that should be our first toast, I think. Tanner shook his head as he handed me a glass, then picked one up for himself. No. I've got the first toast of this bachelor party that you guys have graciously thrown for me. Hold your glasses way up high. This toast is to rock and roll and how it brought the six of us together in a way that I have never connected with any other guys. To rock and roll and all that it entails. I had a gut feeling that we'd be spending the weekend like we were rock gods from another era. A much cooler era. Part of me loved the idea of going back to those easier times. The other part of me was afraid Tanner's plans included copious amounts of alcohol, lots of fast girls, and rock and roll. That had been the thing back then. But that wasn't me anymore. I was the nerdy tech guy who hadn't shaved his beard in years and wore khaki pants and red polo shirts along with comfortable sneakers. In other words, I didn't look like a typical millionaire. Callan looked the part of a billionaire. He had on the most expensive clothes I'd ever seen. To rock and roll, and all that it entails, we all said together before downing the shots of what I found out was tequila. The bowl of limes on the table made perfect sense now. I grabbed a wedge and bit down on it to lessen the breathtaking effect of the alcohol. Scanning the area, I found a clothing shop inside the hotel lobby. I bumped my shoulder against Callan's. Hey, think you and I can go into some of the shops around here and you can help me dress more like I should be dressing? I would love to help you out, Maxim. It's not hard at all. You just let the personal shopper take your measurements and they will do all the hard work. That's what's worked for me, with the occasional suggestion from my wife, of course. Good. I knew hanging out with the guys I'd come of age with would be good for me. I lack fashion sense. I ran my hand over my khakis that I'd bought years ago at Walmart. As you can see, I'll make sure you get straightened out. Once you shave that beard off, see a hairstylist to crop some of those dark curls you've got going on and put on some fine clothing, you'll see a whole new you. No longer a computer geek. 
I liked that idea. I was dreading the idea of having to shave my beard, but now I'm kind of looking forward to it. Callan put his arm around my shoulders. Maxim and I need to get some things before we start tonight's activities. Please don't get polluted without us. What we have to do is rather important. It was to me, anyway. And to Tanner's soon to be bride's expectations for her wedding photos as well. It was time to put nerdy Maxim to rest, once and for all. Thanks, Callan. You really are the best. Tanner stopped us just before we walked away. Hey. I want to say this before you two leave us to go do whatever your secret stuff is. At the end of this bachelor party weekend, I will pick my best man. So keep that in mind when you're doing whatever it is you two are doing. It's nothing for you, Tanner, Callan said with a chuckle. But we will keep that in mind for when we do have something for you. Right now, our buddy is looking for a makeover and needs some stylish clothes to go with it. Blinking, I couldn't believe I was about to change the look of the man I'd been seeing in the mirror for years and years. It was about time. Chapter 2 Adele It had been a long time since I'd been dazzled by something. Tonight, though, the bright lights of the Las Vegas Strip were doing a number on me. Wow. You were right, Coco. Seeing Vegas at night is really trippy. How does that make you feel, Adele? She pulled up to the casino and hotel we were going to stay at. Seriously, you're going to try to analyze me right now? My best friend was a therapist. I'd known her before she became one though, so it sort of annoyed me when she morphed from my best friend into my therapist, which she was not. I didn't need a therapist. What was happening to me was purely natural. I'm just asking if you feel happy when you see the pretty lights, Adele. The valet opened the door for me. Welcome to Las Vegas. Are you staying with us or just here to play in our fantastic casino, where you can win an incredible Jaguar if you try our super snazzy slots? Coco was already out and had come around to my side of her car. We're guests here at the hotel. She reached in and grabbed my hand. Come on, let's get inside. I'm starving. We had driven a little over nine hours to get to our weekend getaway. The trip was Coca's idea. She wanted us to have a fun weekend to help get me out of the funk I had been in for a year. I haven't stepped foot out of this car for the last four hours. Give me a second to adjust to standing up. Oh, for heaven's sakes, she huffed as she pulled me out. Sometimes you act like you're a hundred years old, Adele. Honestly. Sometimes I felt like I was that old. Missing someone you're not sure you will ever see again can do that to a person. Looking up at the sign that blinked above the entrance to the hotel and casino, I thought of him, and out came the words Coco had told me were off limits this weekend, Jacob would have loved this. Nope. Still holding my hand, she pulled me close to her side then wrapped her arm around me tightly. No talking about a person you cannot build a life with. He was a great guy. And he is missed every single day by more people than just you. But he's gone, Adele. It's been a year. It's time to move on. So to help you stop talking about him, I'm going to make you take a shot of my choosing every time you say his name. Harsh, I whined. I agree, it is harsh. But nothing else I've tried has gotten you to stop living in the past with a man who is no longer available. Let's go up to our room, shower and change and then come back down ready to party. I'm going to do your hair and makeup too. You know I don't like to wear makeup. It was hard to look in the mirror when all I could see was the girl from our engagement pictures staring back at me. I preferred not to resemble the woman I was when I was with him. Or fix your hair. She flipped my ponytail to make her point. But you are going to let me do all that for you tonight. It's time, Adele. You don't have to keep saying that. I wish she didn't put a limit on grief. It's only been a year. You're not saying that right. You should be saying, it has been a year. A whole year. A long time to grieve. A long time to stop living life. You haven't worked in a year, Adele. You haven't gone out to eat. 
You haven't watched a movie at the theater. You haven't done much at all, other than survive somehow. While Coco checked us in, the lady at the front desk filled two glasses with champagne. Here you go, ladies. Please enjoy this complimentary drink to help you get started on unwinding so you can have fun. You've booked a gorgeous suite that overlooks the strip. She pushed a couple of rubber bracelets toward Coco. These are for the free buffets that you purchased as part of your weekend package. Plus, those will get you into the pool area. And here are your loyalty cards. Be sure to put them into the machines you play to add up points. With points, you can get lots of freebies. And who doesn't love freebies? Sipping the champagne, I wrinkled my nose at the not-so-fantastic flavor. Not what I expected. I had no idea why people acted like champagne tasted so great. I hadn't had a drop of alcohol since I received the news that my fiancé would not be coming home from Afghanistan. It didn't seem right to me to have fun when Jacob could no longer even take a breath of air. Coco handed one of the black bracelets to me. Put this on. I don't want you to lose it, so just leave it on at all times. Okay, Mom. I put the thing on, snapping it a few times against my wrist. And don't play with it. You might break it, she said as we found the bank of elevators leading up to our suite. When she opened the door to our room, I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh my gosh, Coco. This place is so beautiful. It sure is. I want to surround you with excitement and beauty this weekend. I want you to feel the spark of life. I want you to hold on to that spark and never lose it again. I pasted a smile on my face for her. I did love the suite, but there was no way that a couple of days of fun and excitement would fix what was so badly broken inside of me. And that was okay with me. Jacob and I had been soulmates. We'd known it from the moment we locked eyes at a Mariah Carey concert at the Fillmore in San Francisco. When one soul dies, the other does too, at least a little. Coco didn't understand that about me. She'd never truly fallen in love with anyone before, so how could she understand how I felt about losing Jacob, my love, my fiancé, my reason for living? I went to the window and looked down at the busy street below. This is exciting, I had to admit. Coca's reflection on the glass moved, and she wrapped her arms around me from behind, resting her chin on my shoulder. I love you, you know. Running my hand over her cheek, I sighed. I knew Coco just wanted her old friend back. I do know that. And I love you too. She'd spent a ton of money on this trip. I couldn't let her down. So I turned to face her. Hey, I'm going to try really try this weekend. That's all I ask. Her genuine smile told me she meant that. The truth was, trying wasn't something I had done at all before. I was okay with being less of the person I was before Jacob died. When Coco had come up with this crazy idea of taking me to Vegas to bring the light back into me, I told her no way. But she wouldn't let up on me. Somehow she talked me into it. And since I was there, after she'd spent so much money on trying to make me happy, I was going to at least try to have a great time, for her sake not mine. I was a lost cause. Coco couldn't see that though. To her, I was someone she desperately wanted to fix. I had to hand it to her. She never got frustrated enough with me to just leave me alone. Even when that was all I wanted, to be left alone. An hour later, I looked in the mirror after she'd done my hair and makeup. I saw the face that I had not allowed myself to see in a solid year. Coca's smile told me she was extremely pleased with herself for finding me again. There she is. That's my best friend. It wasn't like she'd caked on the makeup. Just a bit of foundation, some light blush, barely there eyeshadow and some mascara and lipstick. But after having nothing on my face for a year, it was a drastic change in my appearance. My hair hung in long curls since I hadn't bothered to get it cut either. I hadn't done anything to myself since the day I heard the horrible news. She took my hands and looked at my unpolished nails which were cut short. Tomorrow we get manicures and pedicures. Okay. I wasn't going to go against her. She was being so nice to me. How could I be ungrateful? 
Why don't you look happy, Adele? You look gorgeous. You look the way you used to look. A smile is all that's missing from your pretty face. I know I look the way I used to. You did a great job. It's just been a while since I've seen myself like this. It's a huge reminder of who I used to be, that's all. You are still the same person. With her hands on my shoulders, she looked me in the eyes. Adele, you're still here even though he's not. You must admit that Jacob wouldn't have wanted you to just stop living because he died. He would hate what you've done to yourself. The isolation. The lack of drive. I mean, you quit your job as a reporter. You went to four years of college to get your degree in journalism. You worked hard to get that job. You deserved it, and you were great at it. Jacob was so proud of you for all your accomplishments, and it would upset him to no end to find out that you quit your job. That you quit your life. Yeah. I didn't want to talk about this at all. So, it's your turn to get yourself fixed up. I'll just watch some television while you get ready. I won't take long. I'm just gonna shower, throw on a little makeup, and put my hair in a ponytail. Go look in the closet. I bought something for you to wear tonight. It's in the garment bag labeled, First Night. Get dressed, and soon we'll get outside and you can begin soaking up some of that great energy that's going on out there. You didn't have to buy me clothes, Coco. Her generosity began to overwhelm me. I brought stuff to wear. I know. Don't think about it. Just go get dressed. I have the money to spend. There's a small matching purse in the bag too. It's got that strap that you can hang across your body, so you don't have to carry it around. I've put some money in it for you to gamble with. And the other bag, the one labeled, last night, has another bomb outfit and another purse with your gambling money in it. I've got you this trip. Coco, this is too much. I couldn't take all she was giving me. I don't want to gamble with your money. It's not right. Laying a hand on my shoulder she said, hey, look at it this way. When you get back to being you, then you can repay the favor someday. I mean, I could take a weekend in wine country if you get what I'm saying. There was no way one weekend was going to bring me all the way back. But I couldn't let her down right now. Deal. As she got ready, I went to check out bag number one and what I found made my jaw drop. A little black dress with spaghetti straps that fit me like a glove with matching pumps, and a designer purse had me looking like someone I hadn't been in what seemed like forever. Who are you? I turned to check out my butt in the full-length mirror. So you're still there, bouncy butt. I've been hiding you in sweatpants, so I wasn't sure you still existed. I looked at the swell of my breast as they peeked out of the top of the dress. Cleavage, huh? It's been a while since I've seen you guys like that. Staying up there, aren't ya? My mind may have shut down, but at least my body has kept up appearances. Inside the purse, I found ten $100 bills, a set of silver hoop earrings, and a matching silver choker-type necklace. I went to get the things I always carried with me from my purse, a set of rings. The wedding rings my grandfather gave me when Jacob and I went to the nursing home to tell him that we were getting married. Grandpa had given me the simple gold wedding bands he and my late grandmother had worn. I kept them in a small red velvet pouch that fit neatly into my purse. It was sort of my way of keeping a part of Jacob with me all the time, even though neither he nor I had ever put the rings on. We'd been waiting for our wedding ceremony to do that. I stashed the pouch in the small purse, then put on the jewelry Coco had put in there. Just as I finished, Coco stepped out of the bathroom, looking glamorous and smiling at me. Wow. I knew you would look good in that outfit. You like it, right? Shaking my head, I tried to hide the fact that I really hated seeing myself like this. I didn't want to let her down. I love it. After Coco had put on a dress and shoes that matched mine, except that they were red and looked great with her dark hair and green eyes, she put on gold jewelry similar to the one she'd bought for me. Twins but not identical, she said with a laugh as we left the room to head down to the fun that was waiting for us. When we were kids, we would often dress in the same colors or get our moms to buy us matching outfits in contrasting colors. 
We were about the same height and weight, but she had dark hair and green eyes while I had blonde hair and blue eyes. Coco was the sister I had never had. I had no siblings, and she didn't either. We'd met in third grade, and had been best friends right from the start. That's how the most important relationships in my life had gone. It was always love at first sight. It was like I had this sixth sense that told me when I would mesh with someone, or when I would not get along with them. With our arms looped, we went to the buffet first to get something to eat before the drinking began. We have to pace ourselves, or we'll end up getting so drunk that we puke. And puking is a no-go. Got it, Adele? I agree. No puking. I heard men laughing, and turned to see who was having so much fun. Standing around a blackjack table, I saw some guys looking like they were having the time of their lives. One of them patted this one guy on the back as he said, let's see if you can do that again, Maxim. All I could see of the man who was playing the game was his back. But then he seemingly won another hand of blackjack and turned around to face his buddies, who hooted and hollered. His dark hair was cut short with a defined part along the right side. A clean-shaven face, dark eyes, and expensive suit that covered what looked like a muscular physique made him look like he was put together very well. Oh my, he's hot. My hand shook, and I nearly dropped the plate I just picked up, completely shocked by the thought. Chapter 3 Maxim Slowly sipping on the drink Tanner got for me, something called an Incredible Hulk, I scanned the area around us and found a couple of girls watching us. They stood out in the crowd because they were wearing the same exact dresses and shoes, only one was wearing it in black and the other in red. Cute blonde. Music filled the air, along with the sounds of noisy slot machines and people celebrating their wins. The alcohol was doing its job, mellowing me out. Watching the girls who seemed to be unsure of what game to play first, I waited until they got closer before trying to say anything to them. Looking for a good time? The blonde diverted her gaze while the brunette looked right at me. Yeah. We're about to get in on that roulette table, right there. You should join us. Putting the straw to my lips, I took a little bit of a longer drink this time, hoping it would make me act cool and not like the dork I really was. What is that you're drinking? The dark-haired girl asked as she eyed my drink, which had come in an enormous whalebone glass. An incredible hulk. Her brows rose up high. That's a hell of a lot of Hennessy and hypnotic. Yeah. It is strong. Thinking this will take me all the way through the night. I noticed that neither one of them had drinks in their hands, so I raised my hand so our waitress would come to us. We'd already tipped her well, so she was always close. What can I get for you, Maxim? I was impressed that she had remembered my name. Ladies, would you allow me to buy you two something to drink? The blonde whispered something to her friend, before continuing to look away. Her friend answered, a couple of apple martinis would be nice. Thank you. She said your name is Maxim? It is Maxim. Yep. I hated how uncool I could be. And you two have names, I would guess. Care to share them with me? I am such a nerd. Or not. I mean, it's not like you have to tell me what your names are just because I'm buying you drinks. I'm not that guy. What guy? The dark-haired girl asked. You know. That guy who thinks that just because he buys some drinks, he gets to harass women. That is not me. Not at all. I'm just wondering what your names are, is all. Like, what should I call you too? I'm Coco, and this is my best friend Adele. She touched her friend on the shoulder. Say hi Adele. With a fleeting meeting of her eyes to mine, she quickly dropped them to look at the floor. Hello. Hey there. Those are some pretty unique names you've got there. I mean my name is sort of out there too. I wanted to kick myself. I really couldn't come up with anything better than semi-insulting their names. I mean that in a good way. Unique is cool. You're cool. I guess. Putting the straw in my mouth to shut myself up, I tried not to feel like a complete dork, but it wasn't easy. The waitress brought them their drinks, and each took a sip as they looked at each other. 
Then the one named Coco said, Yeah, Adele, these are good. Great choice. The distinctly shaped martini glasses looked so much more elegant in their hands than the whalebone glass looked in mine. Those make you look sophisticated, while mine makes me look like a caveman. Adele finally looked at me, running her eyes up and down my body, making me feel uncomfortable in the best way ever. It's kind of hard to imagine why you ordered that drink when your style says that would never happen in a million years. Her eyes stopped on mine, but then she quickly averted them. Oh well, that's because my friend ordered this for me. He's a real funny guy. I pointed my thumb over my shoulder at my group. We're here for the weekend for that guy's bachelor party. Tanner's mission is to get me drunk for some reason. Coco smiled as she looked at Adele. Funny, that's my mission for this one too. Adele's pink cheeks turned red. Coco. What? It is. Coco looked past me at the roulette table. This is the game with the marble that lands on black or red, right? I think they call those little balls pills. But yeah. That's what this game is. Wanna try it out? We haven't gotten any chips yet, Adele said. So no thank you. Um yes thank you, Coco said. We just have to get some chips. I gotcha. I shrugged, not wanting to come off as some weirdo who was trying to keep them around for my own pleasure. But Adele did grab my attention, in a good way. Pulling some chips out of my pocket, I handed them five each. Go crazy. I don't know how to play, Adele said as she looked at the chips in her hand. And these say 100 on them. Does that mean that each one is worth a hundred dollars? She looked into my eyes again. There was something about the eye contact that just did it for me. Like she was looking way into me or something. Whatever it was, it was nice. Yeah, that's what it means. And I can tell you how to play. It's super easy. Absolutely no skill required for this game. It's all left up to chance. I made a place for the three of us at the table. Adele looked uneasy as she looked things over. If I win, I'll give you your chips back. She looked at me. Okay. Sure, I guess, if you want. But you don't have to. I've got plenty more of them. I took five of them out for me to bet with. So we can make both inside bets and outside bets. Inside just means that you put one or more chips on any number or numbers of your choice. So go for it. Put one down or whatever you want to do. I put one of my chips on the red 12. Adele hesitantly placed one of hers on the black 13. Coco put one on the red 34. Now what? Coco asked. So we can make more bets if we want. I put three of mine down on red. This is called an outside bet, and if the pill lands on any number that's red, I'll get something for that. Even if it's not my number. Adele quickly placed two of hers on black. I think I get it now. She looked at me. How much will I win if it falls on black? That depends on your bet. The money is really on picking the right number with this game. But it's a long shot, so don't freak out if your number isn't the one it lands on. K. Adele put another chip on black 31, then put the last one on the odd space. Is this a good bet? There are no bad bets with this game, so yeah, that's a great bet. I held up my hand for a high five, and she looked at me for a moment. You're not gonna leave me hanging, are ya? Smacking my hand, she smiled, finally. No, I won't leave you hanging. She sipped her drink, looking at her chips on the table. I'm nervous. I like to call that feeling excited, not nervous. It's exciting. You might be a winner. Who knows? A few others placed their bets, then the croupier called out, no more bets. Is it about to begin? Adele asked her friend. Coco nodded. I think so. The two of them held hands as they watched the wheel begin to spin. I tried not to make it too obvious that I was watching Adele for her reaction, from the corner of my eye. She was far more interesting than the game. With the toss of the pill, I watched Adele's blue eyes grow bigger and bigger as she watched the wheel turn. As it slowed, the pill found its resting spot. Her eyes got huge as she shouted, no way. I looked at the wheel instead of her, and my jaw dropped. No way. 
Coco shouted, no way. The croupier shouted, 13 black. We have a winner. When Adele's winnings were pushed to her by the croupier, she picked up 10 of the $100 chips, holding them out to me. To cover what you gave Coco and me. I didn't want to take them. I wanted her to keep them. But something told me that she would actually hate if I said any of that. Okay, thanks. Thank you, she said as she stacked her winnings. I think I love this game. Yeah, it's pretty cool. She started placing more bets, and I decided to go along and bet the way she did. I think you've got beginner's luck, so I'm gonna tag along for the ride. Smiling away, Coco decided to take the opposite approach. I think I'm going to do just the opposite of what you're doing, Adele. I wasn't sure why she would do something like that, but what did I care? Novel idea, Coco. Adele stuck with only one number, and it hit again. And then again, and one more time before she gathered her winnings to leave the game. No one was happy when she decided to quit. I know, I know. But I can't keep pressing my luck. Good luck, all of you. I watched her walk away, and her friend caught me looking at her. She's something, huh? What? I looked away. I mean, yeah. Didn't know you saw me looking. I saw you looking from the get go, Maxim. I'm glad she won. She needed that. What's her story? I stepped away from the table, too, putting my winnings into the pocket of my suit jacket. Don't tell her I said anything to you about this, or she will kill me. And I literally mean that. We walked away from the crowd that had gathered around the roulette table, as I hung on her every word. Adele's been depressed for a while now. Why is that? I knew it was absolutely none of my business, but I wanted to know why a woman like her had been depressed. She was beautiful and seemed sweet, albeit a bit shy. And apparently, when she finally let go, she was a ton of fun too. Suddenly, Adele was standing right in front of us. Aren't you coming with me, Coco? Coco and I both jerked our heads up, startled by her sudden appearance. Yes, of course I'm coming with you, Coco said. I was just telling Maxim thanks for showing us the ropes and giving us the chips to bed in the first place. Adele looked at me with a wary expression. Yeah, thanks. Maxim, I wanted to remind her of my name. I'll be here all weekend. What about you? She looked at Coco, answering my question reluctantly, us too. So remember my name and I'll remember yours, Adele. I looked at Coco. And Coco. I'm sure we'll be seeing each other around. I think we're going to the club later. It's a killer scene, I heard someone say. If you see me, come say hi. Same, Coco said. I'm sure we'll check out the club too. Right, Adele? Do some dancing. Shrugging, Adele said, maybe. I don't want to stay out real late. She can be a bit of a grandma at times, Coco said. We'll be there. Yeah. Definitely go to the club. Maybe you could save a dance for me, Adele. Better bring your a game, Coco said. She's a dynamite dancer. Not really, Adele said as she turned to walk away. Let's go, Coco. Okay. She looked at me then winked. We'll see you there. Hope so. I really did hope I would get to dance with Adele. A hand clamped down on my shoulder as I watched them walk away. What's up with the ladies, super stud? Noah asked as he looked at them. I'm not sure. But I'd like to find out. I couldn't stop looking at Adele, and followed her with my eyes until the crowd swallowed her up. Hopefully, they'll be at the club later. You like the blonde, huh? I do like the blonde. Was it that obvious? Sort of. Not real apparent, but I know you, so I know you don't talk that much to the opposite sex unless it's about computer shit. Noah nodded. The dark-haired girl is more my speed. That's Coco. She's nice. Pretty cool too. The other one is Adele, and she's got something going on. Coco told me that she's been to. I slapped my hand over my mouth as I realized I was telling something she'd warned me not to. Duh. Noah asked as he looked at me with one cocked eyebrow. Nothing. 
I'm not supposed to say anything about what she told me. Anyway, I just won a lot of money, and I'm thinking about getting something to eat. Wanna join me at the buffet? I could eat. We headed to the dining area. I won some on the craps table. I was thinking about what I should do for Tanner, so that I could win the best man spot. You got any plans for that? I do not want to be his best man. That wasn't my thing. He looked at me like I was crazy. Why not? Don't you know what comes with being his best man? Like tons of shit. Let me just point out that the best man always has the first shot at the maid of honor. Beth's best friend Lisa is pretty hot. Do you know that you're sort of girl crazy, Noah? I sucked the last remaining liquid from my drink, then put it on the bar that we were passing by. I thought that drink would last me all night. Seems I was wrong about that. Dude you're crazy. One drink for the entire night. He laughed as we grabbed our plates. It was a big drink. I saw some ribs that looked tasty. Would you look at all this meat? I'm sort of in heaven right now. I'm just going to have some spaghetti. He put a little on his plate. I don't want to eat too much, or it'll take forever to catch a buzz. You should think about that before you pile that plate full of food. You have a serious drinking problem, Noah. I added a thick slice of ham to the ribs I'd already put on my plate. If you're thinking that far ahead about drinking, that's an issue. Consuming that much meat is an issue, if you ask me. I haven't eaten a carb in over six years. So, meat is about it for me. Adding some pot roast, I thought that should be enough. What, no veggies? He laughed all the way to the table. Laugh it up. When you're puking your guts out with a hangover from hell, I'll be the one laughing. Chapter 4 Adele Sitting at the slot machines side by side, I asked Coco, why did you tell that guy our names? Maxim, she asked as she pulled the big lever down. Why do I like doing the slots this way, rather than pushing the button? I don't know. Maybe you feel like you are actually playing a game, rather than just waiting to see if luck will strike. And yeah Maxim. Why did you tell him our names? Why not tell him is my question. He was as harmless as they come. You didn't know that. I mean, it's a lucky thing he wasn't a huge weirdo. But you really shouldn't be telling people our names. At least not mine. So what are people supposed to call you? She waved at a waitress who came toward us. What can I get you? The server asked. We're drinking apple martinis. Coco handed her a 20. Can you keep them coming? Can do. Mine still had a little in it, but Coca's was long gone. No more than three of these for me. Wrong, she said. You don't count how many drinks you have when you're in Vegas. It's a rule. Looking around, I did see that most people had drinks in their hands. I think the free booze is so that people will spend more money on these money-taking machines. You're right about that. But we have plenty of money to give back to the casino since you won so much of it at the roulette table. That was pretty cool, don't you think? I have to admit, that it was quite the adrenaline rush. The excitement sort of took me over. But only for a little while. As soon as I thought about how cool Jacob would think my winning was, I had to quit. You looked like you were having fun. I liked what I saw. She took the two drinks the waitress handed her. Thanks. She looked at the woman's name tag, Gretchen. Not a problem. I'll be here all night. She took my empty glass and gave it to the waitress named Gretchen. Coco handed me one of the new glasses. We should make a toast, Adele. About what? I wasn't good at making toasts. Probably because I'd never had the chance to make one before. About new beginnings. With a nod, she raised her glass and I raised mine too. Here's to bright beginnings. To bright beginnings. I took a tiny sip. I wasn't looking to begin too much and said, I can try to move on with my life. I can try to leave behind the idea of the life I was going to live. But I have to tell you that it's not going to be easy. 
We had lots of plans, Coco. Marriage. Buying a house together. Having babies. We were going to do it all. And then it was all taken from me in an instant. That kind of thing isn't easy to move on from. I know it's not, Adele. I really do. She put her hand on mine, looking into my eyes. I'm here for you. You can cry on my shoulder or talk to me about anything. You know that. But what I've noticed is that you're not talking about things that much. As soon as you start getting emotional, you clam up. Honestly, I don't like the way it feels when I talk about that. It's not supposed to feel good. Her eyes drooped at the corners, showing me how sad I made her. But the thing about crying and talking about bad things, things that really hurt you, is that speaking about them is dealing with them, and then you can start to move past them. Keeping them all bottled up keeps them with you. You need to set all that free. Can I tell you something about that? I gulped down some of my drink, to give me the courage to tell her the truth about how I felt. I want you to tell me anything you want to. I don't want to set anything free. I want to keep things the way they were. Sometimes I tell myself that Jacob is still alive and just being a soldier in Afghanistan. That one day he will come home. And on that day, we will begin the life we planned on having. You know that's not okay. She shook her head. You can't live your life thinking he will come back. He can't come back to you. There was more I wanted to say, so I took another drink to help me get it out. I'm having trouble believing that I'm going to see him again. Like, what if there's no heaven or hell where he and I can meet again? And if that's the case, then I have to keep thinking that one day, he's just going to come back home to me. Her brows shot up. No. You cannot think that way. But I do think that way. I took another drink, wondering if she thought I had gone crazy. Well, you can't. See, this is why you needed to talk about things. You've gotten things screwed up in your mind. I'm not about to force my religious or spiritual beliefs on you. What I am going to tell you is that there are certain facts in this life. One of them is that we all are going to die. Every single body on this planet will stop working at some point. It doesn't really matter what happens after that. She took a drink then shook her head. I don't mean that. I mean that something might happen, and something might not happen. But the only reality is this, Jacob is not coming back to you here in this life. You can't live as if he might. You must face reality. A reality without Jacob in it. She was right. There are certain facts. But even though she was right, that didn't stop me from wishing he would just come back to me. What about the dreams we shared? I've still got them. You can have them with someone else. I don't want to have them with anyone else. Those dreams are mine and Jacob's. I took another drink, realizing the martini was finished already. Damn it. Coco raised her hand, and in no time at all I had a full drink in my hand. Okay, I've let you get away with saying his name a few times. But that's over. What you've told me lets me know that you've been living in a dream world. But now it's time to wake up. It's time to live in the here and now. There's a guy who wants to dance with you, Adele. A real live man. The guy from the roulette table? I laughed and shook my head. He's just being nice. He can see that I'm damaged. I saw it in his eyes. Maybe he just cares. He doesn't just care. He doesn't even know me. You should think about what you're saying, Adele. You and I didn't know each other from the moment we were born. We met in school. And we became instant best friends. I don't know what it is about you. Something in your eyes, I think. When I searched the classroom for a friendly face, the only one I saw was yours. And I knew from the moment we locked eyes that you and I would be friends forever. Yeah, I've got that weird thing about me. I just know when I'm going to click with a person. I'd felt something sort of like that when I saw Maxim. But I didn't like the way it felt. I wasn't supposed to be clicking with anyone. Not yet. Maybe not ever. It's not weird. You're just in tune is all. 
He was my soulmate. I know I've told you this before. But I don't know how I'm supposed to move on without him. It felt like I was one part of a whole being. And half of me died with him. Let's use logic to confront that feeling Adele. Is it realistically possible for something like that to occur? Her therapist's side had fully emerged, but I was done with this topic of conversation. Coco, we're in a casino sitting in front of slot machines in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is not the place to do this. Another sip of my drink began making it feel as if my nose had gone to sleep, which wasn't good at all. I've had too much to drink. I put the glass down, then looked at the machine that was waiting for me to make my bet. A vodka-based drink may have been too much for a person who hasn't had a smidgen of alcohol in a year, she agreed. We'll switch to beer, I think. Wait. I looked up, trying to remember a rhyme from my college days. There is something about mixing liquor and beer. Something about something makes you sicker if you drink it first. And we have the no puking rule. So we have to get this right. So you're still up for having more drinks, she asked with surprise. That's great. We're gonna have the best time ever. We're safe within these walls. No driving needs to be done. We can do all the fun things right here. So let's get drunk. No. I wasn't going that far. I don't want to stop this road I'm going down. But I want to slow the speed a whole lot. My mind and body are beginning to loosen up. I like it. Okay, Coco said as she tapped her chin. Is it beer before liquor, never been sicker? It hit me like a rock. Hell yeah it is. And it's liquor before beer, see your way clear. Or something along those lines. So, order us a couple of beers. No, she said as she shook her head. I'm getting fuzzy too. We should eat something first. Holding up her arm, she pointed to the black rubber bracelet. Thank God for these. We can eat whenever we want. Something like an all-you-can-eat buffet at our disposal when we were in college would have been the bomb. Right? I got up and felt a little wobble in my step. Not cool. Coco was quick to come up beside me, wrapping her arm around me then taking a step forward. I've got ya. Once we eat, we'll be good. I'm not that bad yet. Carbs. We need some carbs. I wonder if they have lasagna. The more I walked, the clearer my head became. And spaghetti too. I want some of that. No meat though. Do you know that I'm like almost a vegetarian now, or something along those lines? Well, you eat oatmeal and cereal mostly. Thinking about what to eat makes me sad. I didn't like to think about much. So I eat what's easy. But tonight, I need something with some flavor. To hell with pasta. We're going for the lobster. Her dark eyebrows wiggled as she looked at me. Lobster Adele. The most succulent of all the seafood. It has been a long time since I've eaten any seafood. I wonder if they have grilled shrimp. Man that sounds good right now. Look at you talking about food. She kissed my cheek. I've missed this. I hadn't thought about how she felt when I faded away. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was making you miss me or our friendship. I had no idea how selfish I was being. You had a lot on your plate and I knew that. But yeah, I've missed you Adele. You and I were close, and then it felt like it was just me. I don't know, maybe being an only child had me thinking you and I were like sisters. But when you just sort of ghosted on me, I felt like I had lost one of the most important people in my life. But you're still here. In the flesh. I'm sorry. I had no idea I'd made her feel that way. I've been so selfish. And sort of stupid too. She stopped and looked at me then said with a firm tone, No. You have never been stupid. You've been hurt. You've been shocked. You've been shattered in ways I cannot even comprehend. But you have never been stupid or selfish. You've just been preoccupied with things that can't be brought back. He's never coming back. I know that sounds harsh. It was true. He's not ever coming back. I didn't like saying that, or even thinking that, but Coco was right. 
My future will never be what I thought it was going to be. But you still have a future. Hugging me tightly, she said it again, you still have a future. I've got a future. I hadn't thought of things like that in a very long time. There was a future for me. I just had to crawl out of the hole I'd put myself in. A hole I had dug to hide from the world while I waited for Jacob, a dead man to come back by some miracle. Honestly Adele, Coco said as we stepped up to the buffet that now had a line of people waiting to get to the food, you have the most awesome future just waiting for you to start moving toward it. You merely have to start taking the steps to get to it. Like the steps I took when I was head cheerleader at our high school. Rolling my hips, I put my hands on them the way I used to back in the day. That would be a start. Get back in the game. Get back into life. Get back to being that badass girl who never said never and was always up for anything. That was me, wasn't it? I'd pretty much forgotten the girl I used to be. It could be again. I don't know. I didn't see any way in the world I could ever move past losing Jacob. I'm up for trying to return to the real world. But I'm not up for moving on with anyone else. One step at a time, I guess. One step at a time. Chapter 5 Maxim. While Noah nibbled on spaghetti, I finished all the food on my plate, then looked at the buffet to see if I'd missed any of my favorite meats. But a cute blonde wearing a little black dress took my attention instead. There she is again. Who? He looked to see what I was staring at. Oh? Those girls again. Maybe they're following you. Maybe they're thinking about having a threesome, starring you, Maxim. Aha, I scoffed. I'm going to check out the seafood. They were checking that out too. More food, he asked. Maybe. I wasn't hungry anymore at all. But a lobster wouldn't kill me. If that's what it took to get to talk to Adele a little bit more, so be it. Coming up on the other side of the buffet, I acted like I hadn't seen them as I looked over the variety of seafood. Coco said, look Adele, the lobsters look delicious. It's been such a long time since I've eaten lobster. Adele reached out with a pair of tongs to pick one up. So I did the same thing, going for the one she'd chosen. It got her to look at me, and I smiled. Great minds think alike. You take it, Adele. I'll grab the one next to it. Thanks. She plated the lobster without looking at me. Coco looked around. There aren't many seating choices right now. You guys can sit with us. It's just me and one of my buddies. Quickly, I led them to our table, trying not to be deterred by the scowl that Adele was aiming at her friend. Noah was all smiles as I brought the girls along with me. Who have we here, Maxim? Coco took the seat next to him. I'm Coco, and this is Adele. I'm Noah. He nodded at Adele, who reluctantly took the seat next to me after staring at it for a long moment. Nice to meet you both. Same, Adele said, giving him a quick smile. I forgot to get the melted butter. Me too. I got up. I'll bring back plenty for all of us. Looking at Noah I asked, care for a lobster? With nothing left on his plate, he shrugged. Sure. Thanks bro. I returned as quickly as I could and sat back down. Here we go. Thank you Maxim, Coco said. That was nice of you. No problem. Adele took the tiny fork used to pull the meat out of the tail. If I moan please don't think I'm crazy. I've hardly eaten anything other than oatmeal and cereal for a long time now. Why is that? Try to control yourself, Coco said with a laugh. After dipping the white chunk of lobster into the melted butter, she put it into her mouth, and there came the moan she'd warned us about. The sound made things happen inside me that made me very happy. Her eyes cut to one side, looking at me as she swallowed the bite. I dare you to take a bite without making any sounds. Now I felt put on the spot. Everyone looked at me to see if I could compete with Miss Moner, who smirked at me while I took my first bite. Of course, my moan was completely made up. Oh yeah, right there, baby. 
that's the stuff. After a moment of silence, the three of them cracked up. Noah shook his head. Dork. You try, I threw down the gauntlet. Oh, I can beat that sorry excuse for a moan in my sleep. He took a bite, closed his eyes, and made a deep groan that sounded like he was trying to take a crap. Coco died laughing. Need to find a restroom? No's eyes flew open. That was a great moan. Adele shook her head. Sorry but no. It was a sound someone makes when they're constipated. Suddenly we all were staring at Coco. Then she looked at each one of us. No way. I'm not in this little competition. Noah nudged her with his shoulder. Come on. Let's hear it. With a shrug she gave in. Ah. Fine. But get ready to get stiffies because I'm damn good at this. Adele grimaced. Oh my Coco. She took a bite, closed her eyes, and let out a moan that made Noah sit up and take notice. I looked at Adele to find pure embarrassment on her pretty face. I leaned in to whisper, yours was way better. At least mine was real, she whispered back. But it was over lobster. So was it real? I questioned. A playful, quirky smile curved her red lips. You will never know. Never. I thought that was a pretty long time. Not ever. Taking another bite, she seemed done with that line of conversation. The girl had me interested, that was for sure. So, I went for the old, reliable questions people like to ask so they can get to know one another, before they really get to know one another. So where do you young ladies hail from? Coco answered, Oakland, California. Hey that's close to you Maxim, Noah pointed out. I was happy to hear Adele lived so close. It is near me. I'm in San Francisco. I work in Silicon Valley. I have a company there. Where do you work, Adele? That is none of your business, she snapped. Coca's eyes got big as she said, no reason to get snippy, Adele. She looked at me. She's a reporter who is currently between jobs. Noah asked, and what is it that you do, Coco? I'm a therapist. I have an office in San Francisco. And you, Noah? What is it that you do? I'm a doctor. I practice sports medicine in Tampa, Florida, where I live. My great aunt lives in Florida, but way down in Palm Beach, Coco said. About three and a half hours away from me. But please stop by if you go visit her. I've never gone to see her, Coco informed him. Noah wasn't going to let that stop him from making a play for her. Don't let that stop you from making a visit. You're cute, she said with a pretty smile. I might just have to make a trip down there sometime. How? Adele asked. You don't fly. It's a long drive all the way across the country. I haven't flown, Coco corrected her friend before looking at Noah. I'm not completely against flying. I just haven't done it yet. What about you, Adele? I asked. Have you ever been a jet setter? I used to fly in a helicopter to do the Bay Area traffic report when I was doing my internship. It was for a radio station. I'm not going to lie, I was scared to death the first few times. But it eventually became sort of fun. Being a reporter sounds like a cool job. I wanted to ask why she was between jobs, but that seemed too personal. At times it was. Her eyes clouded over. Sometimes I miss it. I didn't understand what she meant by that. Aren't you looking for another gig? Chewing on her lower lip, I could see she wasn't keen on answering my question. Coco, do you think we should go up to the room to freshen up before we head to the club? If you want. Should we change clothes, Noah? I hadn't been out to a club in ages. We're dudes. What we have on is fine. Coco checked him out, nodding. Yeah, you guys look great already. Us girls have to freshen up our makeup and hair before we're ready to party the night away. Being a woman must be hard, I said. Adele nodded. Some people expect a woman to look perfect at all times. Which is impossible. You look perfect right now. But I would imagine that you look perfect without any makeup on, 
and your hair up in a messy bun too. My eyes moved over her face, taking in her bone structure. Her high cheekbones and big blue eyes were mesmerizing. Um thanks. She pushed her plate away. So, I'm going to head up to the room now. Wait for me, Coco said as she got up to leave. I didn't want Adele to take off at all. Hey, if what I said put you off, I'm sorry, I said quietly. No, it was nice of you to say that. Pushing her chair in, she ducked her head, then turned and left. Coco gave me a sad look as she waited a moment for her friend to get out of hearing range. Maxim, don't feel bad about the way she's acting towards you. Like I told you before, she's been depressed. What you said to her was very nice. And I'm glad you said it too. She needs to hear things like that. Can I ask why she's depressed? I knew it was none of my business, but I wanted to know. Coco was silent a moment, looking at me contemplatively. Her life hasn't turned out the way she'd planned. I can't say much more than that. I hope you still want to dance with her tonight. She needs to get out of her shell. She needs to move on and get back to living her life. Believe it or not, she's talking a lot more to you than she's talked to anyone in a long time. She hadn't said much at all. I find that kind of hard to believe. I bet you do. She's been pretty quiet. But the fact is that she hasn't said a word about her job in a long time. So, telling you about her internship was quite a breakthrough. Thanks for that. You're welcome. I wasn't sure what had gone wrong in Adele's life, but it made me upset. And that felt a little weird. Thanks for letting me know this stuff. I know you don't have to tell me a thing. But I care for some strange reason. And not only because she's hot. Something about her makes me care. Not sure why that is but it's just that way. Adele used to be a charismatic person. You're probably picking up on what she's shoved down. Her smile was genuine as she looked at me. Keep it up. I would love to have my best friend back to who she was before she stopped herself. I've gotta go. She looked at Noah. See you at the club. You will see me there. Noah watched her walk away before looking at me. She's cool. I told you she was. Yours though, man she's got something going on inside her head. You can see it. She's hot, don't get me wrong. But she has issues. You might want to steer clear of all that mess. I should steer clear of her. But this is Vegas. What happens here stays here. So, what would it hurt to spend some time with her? Hell, I might be able to bring her out of her shell the way Coco said. That is highly doubtful, Maxim. You might end up getting hurt. I'm not looking for a girlfriend, Noah. How can I get hurt? Because you have a big heart, Maxim. And that woman lives close enough for you to look her up. You might keep on trying to get her to come out of her shell, and that might not be possible. Sometimes things happen to people and it leaves behind a permanent impact that can't be changed. You're getting ahead of things. I'm talking about tonight. Maybe tomorrow too. Not forever. Getting up, we left the table to head back to our friends. But if someone is depressed and has been hurt real bad, it doesn't make them so damaged that no one should ever want to be with them. I'm not saying that, he sighed. Maxim, you've got a lot going on in your life. You're very busy with your company. Someone like her would need a lot of your time. You don't know that. I didn't even know why we were talking about this. I'm just saying that Adele could be more than what she is right now. I can see it in her eyes. I can feel it when I'm near here. It's weird. But it's like this great sort of weird that I don't mind feeling at all. This won't end well if you don't keep things very simple. One night. Don't get her number. Don't even ask for her last name. Don't try to look her up on social media. Noah, I know that you're a doctor and way smarter than I am about people. But I think you're being kind of a jerk. Adele is already having issues, and you want me to hit it and quit it. Then don't do anything at all. His brows rose as he eyed me. You don't have sleep with her. Who said that I was going to do anything with her anyway? I just figured, is all. 
With a laugh, he said, I mean, you are sort of going out of your way to get to her. I don't see you doing that with anyone else. So yeah, I got the idea that she was on your radar for doing the horizontal bop. I mean, I wouldn't turn her down if that's what she wanted. But I'm not sure whether I'm going to be making that move on her or not. Do it, don't do it. Whatever man. But I can tell you that I think I'm gonna make a move on Coco. You think? If he got Coco to himself, that would leave Adele all alone. For some reason, that bothered me. If you end up doing that, I'll be there to keep Adele company. You know, be your wingman. Thanks. Smacking me in the arm, he smiled. You can make it out like you're doing a good deed, if you want to. It would be doing a good deed. I'm not going to be all up on her. I know too much about her now, and she's sort of fragile. I'm not going to bring my A-game against her, is what I'm getting at. So, you'll take it easy on the poor girl then? Pointing out our friends at a craps table, he got excited. All right. They're cheering for our boys over there. Come on. We might be able to get in on this and win some money. Going along with him to join our friends, I suddenly wasn't feeling the gambling. Maybe it was too much food. Or maybe it was too little alcohol. Or maybe it was Adele and this depression thing she had going on. Whatever it was, my mind wasn't in the game or the fun time everyone else seemed to be having. Tanner won big and shouted, Shots for everyone. Chapter 6 Adele I'm proud of you, Adele. Coco ran the curling wand around a section of my hair that had gone limp. You are trying. I can tell. I thought it would be harder than it is. I feel sort of comfortable when Maxim is around. But at the same time, I feel awkward and sort of afraid. Does that make any sense at all? It makes perfect sense. If you weren't feeling that way, that's what would be odd. He's a nice guy. I think he's a safe person for you to talk to. You know, I feel like he's trustworthy. Looking at myself in the mirror as she fixed my hair, I saw the old me and felt like I was looking at someone I didn't even know anymore. Can I really go back to who I was before Jacob died? Putting the curling wand down, she walked away and then came back with a shot in her hand. Here you go. What? I told you that every time you said his name, I was going to make you drink a shot of my choosing. All I have up here is some vodka that I found in the mini fridge. So bottoms up. I took the shot from her hand and looked at it. You want me to forget about him? In a way, yes. I need to do this. Taking the shot it burned like hell all the way down, leaving my stomach smoldering. That's not gonna mix well with butter and lobster. You'll be fine. It's one shot. She plucked a tube of lipstick from the makeup bag and began fixing my lipstick. This is the smudge-proof kind. This way, you can drink all you want without worrying if your lipstick is smeared or has rubbed off. You sure are thinking about me doing a lot of drinking. Looking into her eyes as she focused on my mouth, I noticed they looked a little tired. I hadn't even asked her what had been going on in her own life for such a long time. Smack your lips, she directed me. I did as she said, and then she moved back in to do a little more to them. Once she was done, I looked in the mirror. Nice. Thank you. She reached for the curling wand again, and I took her hand before she could grab it. Hey. How have you been? Blinking I watched her eyes droop a little. Lonely. Sad. Lost at times. But above all those negative things, I've been hopeful. You're talking about how you felt about me. What I'm asking you is how has your life been going? Other than how you've been worried about me. My practice is growing. So my business life is doing well. The dating scene hasn't been working out so far for me. But I haven't given up hope. My social life is okay. I've gone to the movies with some friends. I've gone out clubbing a few times too. You know me, Adele. I can tell you things I don't feel comfortable telling other people. I can be myself with you. You know, bossy. 
You are that, I said with a smile. And you love it. I do love it. I love you, Coco. I've been the shittiest friend ever to you. And I'm sorry. I will start thinking about you each and every day. We used to talk on the phone every day. We used to meet up for lunch once a week. We'd go out for dinner twice a month. When new movies that we liked came out, we went to watch them together. And then I lost Jacob. She held up her hand and walked away, coming back with another shot. Here you go. I want to move on. I want to forget him. Even if only for a little while. I took the shot. You have to forget, Adele. Once you're back to you, then you can think about him again. For now though, he consumes too much of you, even just to think about him at all. You're not going to get past this point, if you keep him front and center in your mind. I know you're right. She went back to curling my hair. So Maxim. He's a great distraction. I sense a connection between you two. Let's not go that far, Coco. He's nice. He's easy on the eyes, too. And he's sort of funny. I do feel comfortable with him. And I think I could trust him, too. I don't know why I said the things I said about my eating habits and work, though. Because you two are connecting. I think it's a great thing. Spritzing her hands with something, she rubbed them together then ran her hands through my hair, turning my curls shiny. I think you need this. Don't ignore him. And don't run away from anything you feel with him. In other words, let come whatever may come. Taking a deep breath, I thought I had no idea what that might be. He lives too close. Yeah, that's a little bit of an issue. But it's not a deal breaker. Just because he lives near you, doesn't mean you have to keep seeing him if you don't want to. Looking at her I had to ask, what if I want to keep seeing him and he doesn't want to keep seeing me? Let's not go there right now. I mean, that could be the case with anyone you ever date. I don't think what ifs are appropriate at this point. If you start asking yourself those types of questions, you will never take the leap that you so desperately need to take. Do you think I should decide how far I'm willing to go tonight? Shaking her head, she pulled out the blush brush. Don't limit yourself. Just go with your feelings. Go with the vibes you get from him. He's into you. There's no doubt about that. And I think you're into him, too. Yeah. A smile came to my face as I remembered noticing him for the first time. I saw him before we even spoke. He's very attractive. His style is great, too. I like that line where his hair parts. I've always liked that look. Jacob wouldn't do that, though. His marine grade buzz cut was it for him. Grimly, she looked at me. I'm going to let that one pass. Thank you. I didn't mean to bring him up. He's just sort of there, like all the time. I knew I had to let Jacob go, or I would never really live again. I've told you this hundreds of times, but it bears repeating. Jacob would want you to move on. You've had a year to mourn him, and that's enough time. He would want you to be happy. He would want you to get back on the horse, both with your career and romance. I doubt that. Jacob had been somewhat jealous. She took me by the shoulders. Do not doubt that. Wherever his soul is, he knows more than either of us about what life is really about. Romance is part of our lives here on earth. He would not want you to miss out on any part of what it means to be alive and human. She might be right. Maxim made me smile. He's the first guy who's made me smile since you know when. I was going to try extremely hard not to say Jacob's name. I saw that. She smiled. And I liked what I saw, Adele. When he whispered in my ear, chills ran down my spine. My palms felt hot too. I had to fight the urge to run my hand over his cheek. I don't know why that happened. Her brows raised as she pursed her lips. You want him? No, I don't. I didn't want him. I wasn't ready for anything like that. Yes, you do. That's your body's way of telling you that you have chemistry with someone. You get all wah and bothered, and you want to touch each other. Hell, go for it. 
it might help you get back to yourself a lot faster. I think they call that getting your groove back. Do I even want my groove back? It's a crazy world out there, Coco. I don't know if I'm up for it. Do you know what comes with getting out of your house, going to work and finding someone to share your life with? I did know what came with that. Death. Grief. Unbelievable pain that never seems to stop. A lot of bad can and sometimes does happen. But a lot of good can and does happen too. Ask yourself if your life would have been any better had you never met Jacob. I wouldn't know what love really was if I hadn't met him. Exactly. You would be sitting in your house not knowing what love was. You would sit there doing nothing, never knowing what a kiss felt like on your lips. You would never know how it felt to be hugged in a way that wasn't platonic. You would never know what it feels like to do be with a man. Jacob's arms used to comfort me. His kisses made my knees weak, and his caresses always took away everything that was on my mind. It would have been more of a tragedy if I had never met him than me losing him. Don't miss out any more, Adele. I wonder what Maxim's kiss tastes like. I wonder if his kiss will make your knees weak. Hugging myself I wondered out loud, would his hug make me feel secure and safe or wild? Imagine his lips grazing over your entire body. She wriggled her eyebrows at me. Heat flushed throughout my body. Stop it Coco. Why? You getting all bothered for Maxim? I couldn't go that far with him. I will dance with him. I might even let him kiss me. But nothing more than that. It's Vegas Adele. Who is going to know if you're a skank for one night? Let your inner self freak out is what I'm trying to say. You've locked her away for way too long. I can't do that. Right? You can't be a human woman for one night? You can't set some of that pent-up frustration free. You can't live a little? No. I can't do all that. I couldn't let myself just go like that. It's too soon. No, it is not too soon. I don't know him well enough for something like that. So what? Coco, I'm not on any type of birth control. Raising one finger, she went to the bathroom and came out with a handful of rubbers. Put these in your purse. No. I wasn't going to go out there prepared to get myself screwed. Yes. She went to the bed where I dropped my purse when we'd come to the room. Putting them into an inside pocket, she zipped it up. Discreet. No one will know you have them. I don't want to have them. I don't want to go that far. But you might find yourself thinking differently after a few dances with your new boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. You can pretend. You two have already sort of gone out on a date. You ate dinner together. You had the game too. Pretend he's your guy and you're his girl. No way. She had gone over the edge with this idea. How about this? She tapped her chin as she racked her brain to come up with an idea I would fall for. If he comes up to you as soon as we walk into the club, then he's your guy. I mean, there's the chance that we go into the club and he's dancing with some other girl. You know that's true. He most likely will be dancing with someone else when we get there. He's not going to stand around waiting for me, a total stranger to show up before he starts to have a good time. What if he does? He won't. He might. You're impossible. I gave myself one last look in the mirror. I'm going to use the bathroom. I'm going to put a few curls in my hair and lose the ponytail. Noah is hot and I think he's into me. Turning on a dime, I pointed at her. Aha. What do you mean by that? You want me to be busy with Maxim, so that you can do the dirty with Noah. No. Yes. Well what if we come up here and get crazy? What are you going to do with yourself while I'm indisposed? Sit at a slot machine and feed it nickels I suppose. I'm not going to Maxim's hotel room, to get myself some of the action you apparently are seeking. And with Maxim's friend too. How convenient is that? I couldn't believe her. You've been trying to figure out how to keep me entertained, 
while you find some entertainment of your own. Not really. She pulled the rubber band from her hair, letting it fall around her shoulders. I just want you to have fun, the way I'm having fun. Well, I can entertain myself, thank you very much. If you bring him to our room, just put out the do not disturb sign and I'll go find something to do with myself. You don't have to worry about me. You're mad. I wasn't mad. I was irritated. Coco, I honestly want you to do whatever you want to do. I don't want to get in your way. But I don't want to have a one-night stand with a stranger. I know I've done it before. We both have. But it's not really my thing. I didn't get Jacob to ask me to marry him by being with him the first night we met. Take a shot. She pointed at the mini-fridge. No, I will not take a shot for saying that. You're not trying to get Maxim to marry you, Adele. You aren't trying to get him to even date you, either. So, why can't you just have fun while you have that man salivating over you? I wouldn't say that Maxim has been salivating over me. Well, he's not the type to show it. But he has, most definitely, been into you. You've just kept your head ducked too much to fully notice that. I could not be with another man. I couldn't do it. None of that matters. All of that matters. Get ready so that we can go. I'll use the restroom and be ready by the time you're done. I was going to get ready for going out, but I was not ready to be sleeping with a man tonight. And maybe I never would be. Chapter 7 Maxim Flashing lights, bass that reverberated all the way through my body, changing my heartbeat to match its driving pace, and too many people in the club to ever possibly count. I moved through the pulsating crowd, looking for one face and one face only. Bobbing my head, I danced as I went, holding a tall glass filled with a Long Island iced tea. Zillions of arms in the air, and asses shaking, made it impossible to get through the throng of dancers any other way than by dancing. As luck would have it, the music changed to something a little slower, making the people sway their arms closer to their bodies, and their butts move more in waves than violent shakes. Easing through, I made my way around the dance floor. I moved in behind a woman and she turned to face me, singing along to the song that played, I want you to spend the night. No thanks. I tried to move past her but she moved with me. With your clothes off, she sang on. Or clothes on. You know, whatever. I turned around, trying to dance away, but she was in front of me again. The music changed again and the song was hardcore. She sang it too, apparently knowing the words to every single song the DJ played. I wanna dance with you, lose my mind, think about you all the time. We don't know each other. And I think you may have already lost your mind. Backing up as she came at me, her body ready to grind against mine, I thought I was about to freak out. Feeling a tap on my shoulder, I looked over it to find Coco smiling at me. She took my hand and pulled me around her, blocking me with her body from the crazy go-go girl who was obviously set on defiling me for her own selfish pleasures. Thank you, I mouthed as I turned to move on. Then there was that one face I'd been searching for. And the music changed again, this time to something sort of cosmic. Hey you. Hey. Adele moved in a much more conservative fashion, which I liked very much. That chick was trying to grind on me. Did you see that? I did see that. She held out the tall glass that she held in one hand. Mojito. What are you drinking? Long Island iced tea. I held it out. Want a taste? Nodding, she handed me her drink. Try mine. David Guetta came over the speakers, bringing the vibe to something ethereal as he sang, I think I just died and went to heaven. Taking a drink of her mojito, I thought I might have just died and went to heaven myself. Not because of the sweet drink, but because I'd found her. Unable to explain why I felt like I was suddenly with the one I was supposed to be with, I gave in to the feeling. And I danced. I danced like I had never danced before. Adele smiled as she danced with me, making exaggerated movements that forced the crowd to move back to accommodate our moves. Before I knew it, the song changed again. 
I felt like the DJ was all high or had ADD or something, because no song seemed to last more than 30 seconds. This song was slower, and I decided to take the chance that Adele would be into it. So I took her into my arms, our feet moving in sync like we danced together like this millions of times. When she laid her head on my shoulder, I thought I might die. My heart felt like it got bigger inside my chest. My head went light. My body tingled, and I held her tighter. When the music changed to something that sounded like an arcade game track was melting inside an old VCR, I let her go, not that I wanted to at all. Neither of us seemed sure how to dance to the weird music, but we gave it a shot and took the time to gulp down our drinks. Coco came out of nowhere with two more drinks in her hands and handed them to us, then took our empties. Head bobbing, she danced away. I was impressed with her skills as a friend. Man, she's like the best friend ever, huh? She is. Adele nodded in agreement. Her eyes lit up as the song changed again to some revised version of the song Blue by Eiffel 65. One of my faves. Bouncing to the beat, she couldn't stop smiling. I found it funny in a sad sort of way that someone who was depressed would love a song about being blue and having nobody to listen to you. It was almost as if Adele was trying to stay sad or something like that, singing songs that would remind her that she was depressed. Like, she didn't want to allow herself to move past the depression for some reason. But now, dancing with me, she looked anything but depressed. An inner glow radiated from her, surrounding her, enveloping me and enchanting me in a way no one ever had. With so many people around us, and all the movement and the music beating within our bodies, we got thirsty, and drank the drinks Coco kept showing up with. I didn't want to sit out even one song though. Even when my shirt became sweat-soaked and her dress clung to her damp body, we kept dancing like we would never get the chance to dance together like this again. Someone touched my butt, and I looked back to find Noah and Coco. Noah laughed at me, copying my moves, which he must have thought were lame. Not that I cared. Coco pulled her heels off, then motioned for Adele to give her the heels she had on. Adele took them off just as the song changed to something that would have us holding each other, her arms running around my neck as she danced on her tiptoes. Picking her up, I held her feet off the floor, moving around the room with her in my arms. She buried her face in the side of my neck, and when her lips pressed against the back of my ear, I lost my mind. The way we danced changed. Our hands were on the other's body at all times. Except when Coco showed up with something for us to drink. We would down the cold liquid, neither of us caring what the hell we were drinking, and then we would grab each other again and move. We moved like no one was watching. Grinding, bumping, dry humping, you name it, we did it. All I saw was Adele's glowing face. And then I saw Tanner's face. Cocus too. Nose came into view, and I suddenly realized all of my party was there, Forrest, Eli, Tyler. Where's Callan? I shouted. No one answered as they danced in a circle around Adele and me, singing with David Lee Roth as he sang the song Jump. Jump. Might as well jump. The sound of a very loud cowbell sort of hypnotized me, as they kept singing. I couldn't stop looking at Adele's smiling face beaming at me as she sang, They say you won't know, you won't know, until you begin. Maybe this is the girl for me. I think about you day and night, the song changed, and a woman sang the words that began to feel like they were sinking into my brain, I can't get enough. The music switched to something slow. Adele reached out and caressed my cheek before moving into my arms. She might as well have stroked my heart with her velvety soft hand. I melted into her, inhaling her, becoming part of her. Biting her earlobe I whispered, marry me. Dropping her head back she answered, yes. Then she looked at our friends, who danced around us. We're getting married. We laughed and kissed as I twirled her around and around. Playing along with the marriage fantasy, I asked, how many babies are we going to have, wife? Three, she said with no hesitation at all. Two boys and one girl. In that order? I asked teasingly. I'm not sure what order they'll come in. I only know it will be two boys and one girl. Her smile mesmerized me. What will you name them, husband? Me? I had to laugh, as I'd never even thought about having kids, much less naming them. 
isn't that like the mom's job to name the children? I don't think that job only belongs to her. So, I will give you that job. A driving beat came on, and we moved provocatively together as she spoke in my ear, name our children husband. Whatever it was about having her call me husband in a deep husky yet feminine voice, it did me in. Jack, George and Kate. Sounds good to me. She kissed me with more passion than I'd ever felt in my life. When our mouths parted, we both panted as we stared into each other's eyes, not moving at all with the music. We should go up to my hotel room. Suddenly Coco was there with all the guys in my group. She handed us shot glasses. A toast. We all held up our shot glasses as she went on, to new beginnings and lasting feelings. Before I said the words, I looked at Adele. You want that? I watched her gulp before nodding. I do. I do too. I couldn't wipe the smile off my face. We all made the toast, to new beginnings and lasting feelings. Taking the shot, I didn't even taste it as it glided down my throat. We handed our empty glasses to Coco, then slipped into each other's arms. What I felt wasn't natural. What I felt wasn't ordinary. It felt more like a dream than real life. We danced, swaying to the music, ignoring everyone else as we gazed into each other's eyes. You're really beautiful. You are the most handsome man I've ever met. I ran my hands down, resting them on her butt. I felt her hands move. Ditto. Her eyes twinkled as she asked, So, what will my new last name be? Cambridge. So, my initials will remain the same. My last name is Constantine. Shit. That's a great last name. Let me take your name. Maxim Constantine. Sounds regal. Like a king or some shit like that. What? She frowned. No. I get to change my name. I like Cambridge. Adele Cambridge. That sounds regal too. I know what we can do. We will be Mr. and Mrs. Cambridge Constantine. Or we could be Mr. and Mrs. Constantine Cambridge, she suggested. The alphabetical order way sounds better. Don't you think? I was a stickler for alphabetic order. It was kind of my thing. You're right. Plus I think it's more common to put the man's surname before the woman's. It's settled then. We will be the Cambridge Constantines. We're gonna be such a great couple. Couple? Sure. I laughed. But we're also going to be the best family there's ever been. Our kids Jack, George and Kate will all be little angels. Kate will look like her mother, and the boys will look like their dad. And they will all be extremely smart, and have insanely awesome personalities. Kate will be in dancing school, and one day she'll rule the stage with her skills. Our sons will be genius tech developers that take their father's ideas and push them to the extremes. But we're not going to live vicariously through our children. Oh no. No. We're going to be successful in everything we do. Why, she asked. Because we are the Cambridge Constantine family, and everything we touch turns into gold. Our fantasy marriage is way better than any real one. It might have been the alcohol talking, but I said what I felt, I love you. I love you too. Resting her head on my chest she said, you're the best. No you are. Coco showed up again, handed us two tall glasses of dark liquid, then disappeared. I began gulping my drink down, not wanting to waste one second of time with Adele, who was fired up and ready for it. After we both downed the drinks, I took her by the hand, taking her with me as we finally left the dance floor. Heat pounded in my body as I ran with her, our feet barely hitting the floor as we ran towards somewhere. I wasn't sure where we were running to, whether it was to my room or hers. Wait a second, she said. We stopped, and she unzipped the crossbody purse she had on, then handed me a little red velvet bag. When I opened it, I found two gold wedding bands. I looked at her, finding her biting her lower lip. Her blonde curls, limp now as they'd become damp with sweat, beckoned me to run my hand through them. I knew just what she wanted, as I went to one knee with the rings in my hand. Will you marry me? Tears fell down her cheeks as she nodded. Yes? I went to slide the smaller ring on her finger, 
but she jerked her hand back. No. No. I didn't understand. What then? I think I'm going to throw up. Well, that's not good. Chapter 8 Adele The heaviness in my eyes made it hard to pull them open. My head throbbed with the most intense headache I'd ever had. Moving proved difficult to almost impossible. Everything on my body hurt, every last thing. The soreness between my legs was unmistakable. What did I do? Sliding my hand over the bed as I lay on my side facing the wall, I kept moving it until it hit something. Yanking it back, I eased over onto my back, still unable to get my eyes to work properly. Then I turned my head to the side and willed them to open. All I saw was a blurry white lump. Whoever was in bed was under the blankets with me. Closing my eyes, I tried to remember the night. There were lots of drinks. There was loud music and lots of dancing. Maxim. I had danced with Maxim. I remembered going to the club. But I didn't recall leaving it. My stomach felt as if I'd been punched repeatedly. My mouth tasted horrifyingly bad. Easing my hands to my head, I felt my hair clinging to my face and knew I looked a mess and not in a good way. Easing back to my side, I tried to sit up slowly so as not to wake up whoever was in bed with me. My hope was that I was in someone else's room and could sneak away to the room I shared with Coco. Sitting up I felt like I might pass out. Putting my head in my hands, I tried to remember the last time I saw Coco, but I could only picture her holding a champagne bottle for some reason. Nausea blossomed inside of me, and I stood, trying not to barf in the bed or on the floor. Fisting the sheet tangled around me, I tugged it until it was free, whoever was in bed with me be damned, then gathered it around my body before slowly making my way to the bathroom. Blinking to clear my vision, I realized I was going the wrong way. This was not my room. This was some enormous place that didn't look a thing like the room Coco had rented for us. Daylight streamed in from a window so high up that I could only see the blue sky outside. Turning, I looked at the lump on the bed and noticed that whoever was lying in it had the pillow over their head, so I couldn't make out who it might be. Even though I'd taken the top sheet, whoever it was had somehow managed to get under the bedspread in the time since I'd stood up. Each step I took told me things I did not want to know about myself. With stiff muscles, I turned in a circle until I spotted the door I thought must lead to the bathroom. My red dress lay on the floor at the end of the bed. I groaned quietly as I looked around to find my shoes, but they were nowhere to be seen. My underwear hung off the side of a lampshade. I didn't want whoever was in the bed to wake up and see that. Easing to the lamp on the nightstand by the sleeping person, I tried to be as quiet as a mouse as I picked up my clothes. Opening the door, I found an enormous bathroom with a sunken bathtub in the middle of it. Looking for a toilet, I spotted another door and went to see if it was hiding in there for some reason. Glad to find a toilet behind the door, I dropped the sheet and went inside the very small, closet-like structure. When I closed the door, I began to feel claustrophobic and had to open it again. I looked at the outer door leading to the bathroom that I'd left open and wondered if I should make a dash for it or just puke my guts out. I decided I needed to close and lock the door. I wasn't about to get caught throwing up in the nude and looking like I'd been chewed up and spit out by a very large cat. Heading back to the toilet, I spotted a stand-up shower and opted for it instead. I needed water in a way I had never needed it before. I was beyond parched. My skin felt as dry as my mouth. Turning on the water, I was happy to find hotel soap, shampoo and conditioner inside. Lathering up, I began feeling slightly better. When I put my hand between my legs to give myself a good washing, I had to wonder if we'd used protection. There was a brief memory of Coco putting some protection inside my purse. But I hadn't seen my purse in the bedroom, so I had no idea if I'd lost it somewhere. Please let it be that the guy used some protection. The last thing I needed was to bring home an STD from our trip to Vegas. Or worse. I couldn't think that way. 
I opened my mouth, flooding it with warm water. I had to get the hell out of there. That's all I could concentrate on. I had to stop trying to remember things and just get back to my room. I hoped like hell Coco would be there. Without my purse, I had no key to let myself in. Stranded in the hallway, wearing a wrinkled party dress and no shoes, wasn't the way I wanted to be seen by the other hotel guests. With no idea what time it even was, I had no idea how many people would be out and about. Why did I do this to myself? When I found Coco, I was going to wring her neck for giving me so much to drink. I hadn't had this bad of a hangover since my college years. And this one might have even been worse than any of those. My body had never hurt this badly. Last night must have been rough as hell for my body to hurt in every imaginable spot. Whoever was in that bed wasn't a person I wanted to face in the light of day. All I really wanted to do was go back home. There, I could hide away from the world once more and never come back out again. Coming to Vegas was a mistake. Leaning against the wall, I took a few deep breaths to try and settle the anxiety that filled me. Flashes of the night came in and out of my head. So many people. Pounding music. Coco and some guys dancing in a circle around me. And there was Maxim too. Smiling at me. Holding me in his arms. Gosh, why did I get so drunk? Another flash, this one full of emotion. A flicker of adrenaline coursed through my body for a brief moment as my heart pounded. I'd felt something. During the madness of the night before, I had felt things that I hadn't felt since. I stopped my train of thought. No. I'm not going to bring him up. I'd managed to think about myself, leaving Jacob out of it. And I'd had fun. I'd felt like my old self. There was a spark inside of me again. I didn't want to extinguish it, just so I could hold onto a memory and things that could never be. He was gone and I was still here, alive. Even with that knowledge resonating inside my head, I knew that if I had to face whoever I'd gone to bed with, humiliation would overtake me. It had been well over a year since I'd been intimate with someone, so I was positive that I'd been on the ravenous side. And that was too embarrassing to deal with. A deprived woman who was drunk and had no inhibitions left at all could be the nastiest person on the planet. That must have been me last night, and I wasn't about to face the person I'd been like that with. I had to get to Coco, and we had to cut short our little vacay and get the hell out of Vegas while my pride was still somewhat intact. She would try to stop me, tell me that I was being silly or stupid, and that whatever I did was completely human and okay. But it wasn't. Not for me. Turning off the shower, I rubbed the foggy glass with my hand but saw no one there. Maxim? Is that you? Pulling a towel off the bar, I wrapped it around me and stepped out slowly. No one was there. It had been my imagination. Or maybe a bit more than that, a memory from the night before. Toweling off, I thought about all that had happened during the night, and then it hit me that Maxim had said that. But it wasn't during intimacy. It was when we were eating, and I moaned over the way the lobster tasted. Man that was good lobster, I whispered to myself. I wasn't going to go back to how I'd been. I wasn't going to deprive myself of things that brought me joy. Now that I saw that I could get completely out of control, I knew that I'd been depriving myself of way too much. I couldn't keep doing that to myself. Otherwise, I would go nuts. Still, I didn't want to be in Vegas anymore. I had no idea who or how many people had seen me lose all my inhibitions. I had no idea what I'd done. For all I knew, I might have streaked naked through the lobby. Anything could have happened. Something good had come out of our trip, and I would take that home with me. Even if I would never be able to remember all the events of my one night in Vegas, I felt different. I'd accomplished what Coco had brought me here for. I was me again. Not altogether my old self, I had gone overboard sleeping with a stranger and all. But I had my spark back. I wanted to start living again. Vegas had brought me back to life. Or whoever was in the bed in the other room 
had done that. I wasn't sure which was true or even how it had happened, but I was sure that this trip had changed me for the better. Coco was right. Jacob was a good man. The kind of man who would never want to see me isolating myself, quitting my job, turning into a hermit, destined to become a spinster. Jacob would have wanted me to continue living my life, because he knew what a gift it truly was in the first place. Looking up at the ceiling, I wanted to say it out loud and set my words free for him to hear if that was a possibility. Thank you for loving me, Jacob. I won't forget you. But I'm going to move on. Or move backward. Whichever way you want to look at it. I'm going to start being me again, that girl you fell in love with. And I wish you peace wherever you are. Goodbye. A tear fell down my cheek and I wiped it away. I wasn't going to let grief take over, not again. Spotting a toothbrush wrapped in plastic, I saw a tiny tube of toothpaste beside it and went for them. Brushing away the bad taste in my mouth, I almost felt human again. In another plastic bag I saw a small black comb. So I opened it and combed my wet hair. Looking in the mirror, I used some tissues to wipe off the black from under my eyes. I'd washed away all the other remnants of my makeup in the shower. What I saw looking back at me wasn't what I'd seen in the last year. My eyes, even though I had one hell of a hangover, shined bright. My skin glowed. The way my legs ached told me that whoever I'd been with had given his best to please me. The way my jaw had a slight ache told me I'd tried my best to please him too. Rubbing my jaw, I smiled as I looked at my reflection. Looks like Adele got her groove back, doesn't it? It didn't matter who had given me my groove back. Leaving the room without knowing who I'd been with seemed like the best way to leave things with the man who'd helped me find my inner goddess again. That way, if I ended up with an unattractive man at the end of the night, I will never know it. In my future memories, the man I'd been with during the one night I'd spent in Vegas would look just like Maxim. That man was hot. So naturally, I wanted to believe that it was him who I'd ended up with. But with no memories of that at all, I had to hedge my bets and get the hell out before I found out the truth. Maxim had been in the flashes of memories I'd had so far, but the later the night got, the sparser my memories. There was no way of knowing for sure what I'd done or who I'd done it with. That was okay. But only if I could get the hell out of the hotel and Vegas before I had to see anyone other than Coco. I could leave all these mistakes behind me. I could go back home with my head held high instead of it hanging in shame. Coco was the best friend anyone could have. She would never tell a soul about anything I'd done. If she herself could even remember what had happened. She'd been drinking a lot too, from what I could recall. Another flash, and I saw her holding up a glass of champagne, smiling at me. I put both hands over my face, trying to remember more. Suddenly, I felt something cold against my left cheek. Pulling my hands back, I saw the wedding band that my grandmother had worn. It was the one I'd been carrying in my purse ever since Jacob and I had gotten engaged. But I hadn't ever put that ring on before. It fit me perfectly, though. Maybe I just wanted to try it on and forgot to take it off or something. I did hope I hadn't lost the ring that my grandfather had worn. I needed to find my purse. I needed to get back to my hotel room and find Coco. Just as I put my hand on the door to let myself out, I saw another flash of memory. Maxim on one knee, looking up at me, my grandfather's ring in his hand. Holy shit! What have I done? Chapter 9 Maxim Holy cow, I feel like death. Taking a deep breath, I sucked something into my mouth and felt like I was suffocating. Grabbing at whatever covered my face, I threw the offending pillow that I felt in my hand as far away as I could. Even with my eyes closed, the light still blinded me. So it's daytime. How long have I been sleeping? My mind was a complete blank. I couldn't remember a damn thing. Like nothing at all. Am I brain dead? My body wasn't even moving. Laying on my back, I tried to roll over, but it was useless. 
it felt like I was completely exhausted. Maybe I was roofied. That would explain a lot. The loss of memory. The body that wouldn't work right. I wonder if there's a girl in bed with me right now. I'd been able to move my arm once when I threw the pillow off my face, so I tried to run it over the bed to see if I could feel someone next to me. It moved in tiny increments, sliding across the sheet, but it never touched anyone. Surely there must have been someone with me at some point, or it wouldn't reek the way it did. I needed a shower. I needed a drink of water. I needed to pee. I needed to be able to get up and out of bed. But still my body protested, and I laid there in the same position I'd woken up in, flat on my back. Building up the energy to turn over, I took several deep breaths then managed to turn onto my right side. And that's when a shooting pain shot through my head, and the pounding began. Ouch, I groaned as a headache the size of Texas ravaged my poor brain. Definitely been roofied. The worst part about the memory loss was that I obviously had been with someone and couldn't remember who it was with, or any other damn thing about it. It would have been nice to be able to remember at least a few scenes from what had probably been the wildest night of my life. Maybe it'll come back to me in bits and pieces. The one thing I hoped was that it had been Adele, and not some random stranger. Sure, I barely knew Adele, but I still knew her. And I liked her. If I was going to be with anyone, I wanted it to be her. My mouth was as dry as it had ever been, and I had to get some water into my body, or I would definitely lie there and die. Trying to move again, the pain in my brain went into high gear and kept me lying right where I was. What the happened to me last night? Damn. Speaking out loud was a major mistake because somehow, the headache got even worse. I wasn't sure how I was still alive at all. I'd never had a migraine in my life, but this is how one had to feel. The light was killing me, and my eyes weren't even open. Bet that's why I had the pillow covering my face. Unable to move, I tried to remember anything at all about the previous night. The image of sitting at a table with Adele beside me ebbed into my pained brain. Dinner. We had dinner together. Something about lobster and butter came to mind too. If I had eaten dinner with her, it was likely that we'd hung out more together after that. Tanner's face popped up asking, you guys ready to go to the club? The club. That's where I got drunk. I saw Adele's friend Coco, coming up to me with drinks in her hand every time I saw her. She did this to me. Unsure of why Coco would want to get me plastered, I had to take a guess that it had something to do with Adele. Another scene popped into my head. Adele was drinking something from a tall glass. That meant Coco had been trying to get her drunk too. What could be so wrong with Adele that her friend thought I had to be stark raving drunk to be with her? Plus she'd gotten Adele drunk too. Taking a guess as to why that was, I came up with the idea that Adele wouldn't have been with me had she not been intoxicated, which sucked ass. I was a catch. If I cared to be on that show The Bachelor, they would take me in a heartbeat. I didn't care to do something like that to myself though. No woman should have to be tanked up to be with me. Unless there really is something wrong with Adele. Coco had told me that Adele had been depressed. So, maybe she thought a good roll in the hay would help bring her out of it. But what good would that do if the girl couldn't remember getting that roll in the hay? Not that I knew if Adele could remember what we did or not. If that's even who I had been with. Without a woman in my bed, how was I to know if I'd been with Adele or someone else? I had to open my eyes and take a look around. Putting my hand on my forehead, I shielded my eyes from the sun as I worked hard to make them open. When they finally did open, they burned like fire. I was sure I looked like complete dog shit with bloodshot eyes from hell. Peeking through my fingers, I realized that I was lying in a way that made it so I could see half of the room. Blurred vision made it impossible to make out anything though. Damn this hangover. My head throbbed as I'd made the mistake of speaking out loud again. Shut up stupid. Since my head wasn't going to quit hurting unless I did something about it, I sat up with one swift movement. That was a mistake. 
My stomach hadn't bothered me until I sat up. Now, I felt like I was going to throw up. Even if I hadn't been roofied, mixing so many different alcohols had been the worst thing ever. When I saw Coco again, I was going to give her a piece of my mind, if I would have any mind left once the headache went away. A weird memory came to me, one that had Coco and all my friends moving in circles around Adele and me as their lips moved. I guess they were singing some song. But what I didn't know was why they were doing circles around us. It was odd. And I wasn't sure if it had actually happened or if it had been a dream. One thing I was sure of was that I had to get myself up and out of that bed so I could get some water into my body. Afterward, I had to take a shower, get dressed, then get downstairs to find some place to buy aspirin to deal with this smashing headache that seemed to be getting worse. Placing my hands on the bed, I pushed myself up to a standing position. A burp that sounded threatening escaped my mouth. The smell it left right under my nose nearly made me gag. Oh my! Waving my hand in front of my nose to disrupt the stench, I took a look around as the stink had woken me up a bit. A red dress lay crumpled on the floor. Something that looked like a bra was on the dresser. My clothes were scattered everywhere. Adele had a red dress on last night. Sighing with relief, I was glad it had been Adele and not someone else. But there was a fair amount of embarrassment that I would have to face her after whatever we had done during the night. My hope was that she remembered even less than I did about it. And I hoped, since we'd already been intimate, she might be willing to give it another shot. This time though, we'd both remember it. But not if I looked and smelled like a beast. I had to do something about that, and fast. If her clothes were still in the room, then she was probably in the bathroom making herself presentable. When she came out she'd see me looking like a Sasquatch. I couldn't have that. With adrenaline boosting my body, I headed to the mini-fridge. My balance was off, and I made a zigzag toward the other side of the room. This is not good at all. I had no idea how long it would take for the effects of the alcohol to wear off. I needed it to be done with already. In my present state, I would make the worst ever impression on Adele. She would think I couldn't hold my liquor. She would think I was a complete loser. She would want nothing else to do with me. I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror over the dresser and nearly screamed. There were long red trails all over my chest. I turned to check out my back and saw the same thing there. Even my ass cheeks had scratches on them. What did she do to me? What did I do to her? Craning my neck, I saw bite marks and purple and red spots where she'd sucked all over it. If I look this bad, what does she look like? With no idea how long she'd been in the bathroom, I began to worry about her condition. What the hell did we do last night? Other than the marks all over my body, I didn't look as bad as I thought I might. My eyes weren't bloodshot, and thanks to getting the haircut and shaving my beard off, I was still pretty clean cut looking. Thanks to Callan helping me shop, I could wear a suit and tie that would cover up all the marks on my body and neck too. I had no idea what Adele was dealing with though. I didn't want to barge in on her while she was in the bathroom. But I thought I should at least knock and ask her if she was okay in there. For all I knew, she was passed out on the floor. Or maybe worse than that. There was a chance she could have gotten alcohol poisoning and needed help. I wasn't sure how to go about approaching her. I wasn't sure what to do at all. But I knew I had to do something. I couldn't just stand there not doing shit. But I did need some water before I tried to do anything. Finally, I got to the fridge and reached out to open it. What is that? Something shiny was on the ring finger of my left hand. When I pulled it up to give it a closer inspection, I found a plain gold band on my finger. That looks a lot like a wedding ring. Something popped into my mind, me looking up at Adele while holding something in my hand. The rings. No. 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 Grabbing a bottle of water out of the fridge, I downed it, trying to get myself under control, as I was freaking out. I cannot be married. No wonder Adele was in the bathroom. She was probably as freaked out as I was. 
When did we buy wedding rings? Why did we buy them? Why did we even want to get married? We're perfect strangers. So many questions and not even one answer. The one thing I knew for sure was that this was bad. This was very bad. I had wanted to date Adele, but marry her? No way. Where the hell were all my damn friends while I was doing something that dumb? Callan had promised me that he wouldn't let me do anything stupid. But he'd mess up. I was now a married man. Married to a woman with a friend who thought we had to be beyond intoxicated just to be together. This was a huge mess is what this was, and I had to start trying to clean it up. But how? I didn't have the first idea. Plus, I didn't want to be a huge fool and tell Adele that I was sorry, but I hadn't meant to marry her. She was already depressed. If I told her that marrying her was a gigantic mistake, it might send her further into that depression. I didn't want to be responsible for doing that to her. But I couldn't stay married to her either. There had to be a nice way to tell someone that getting married to them was a mistake that had to be corrected. I didn't know how, but I had to say the words to let her know that this marriage wasn't going to last. Another piece of the night came to my mind, a small red bag with two gold wedding rings in it. Running my hands over my face, I started laughing. We're not really married. We were just pretending. I remember now. I asked her to marry me and she said yes. For some reason she had these rings in her purse and we must have put them on. Relief spread through me like a wildfire. Thank God I finally remembered. I'd been close to having a heart attack before the memory came to me. Adele came to my mind, and I knew I had to get to her to make sure she knew that it was all just pretend. I bet she's in there freaking out right now. I heard the sound of the doorknob turning, and looked in that direction. Adele opened the door then stepped out, wrapped in a fluffy white towel. She turned her head, looking me up and down, then began screaming in sheer terror. Chapter 10 Adele What did I do to you? I shrieked at the top of my lungs the moment I saw Maxim standing there, covered in scratches that I had obviously made. It's okay. He ran his hand over his bare chest. I'm fine. He looked me over. I didn't leave any marks on you. No. I felt like I could kill myself for covering the man in long red scratches. Maxim, I'm so sorry. It's fine. They don't hurt. I didn't even know I had them, until I looked in the mirror. His eyes went to my left hand, and then he raised his, wiggling the finger with my grandfather's wedding band on it. I see you're wearing the partner to this one. Yeah. Ducking my head, I didn't know what to say about that. Um, I want to be honest with you. I don't remember much about last night. Do you remember last night? He asked with a curious expression. Not a bit. He sighed, looking relieved. Good. Me neither. At least we have that in common. I thought it was odd that he wasn't saying anything about us being married. That and the fact that we share a last name now. He began laughing and shaking his head. I thought you might think that we'd actually gotten married. But I just remembered a few minutes ago that you showed me the rings you had in your purse, and I think we must have put them on. I sort of remember us playing like we were going to get married. I don't remember that. I do remember you in front of me on one knee, holding these rings though. The rings belong to my grandparents. My grandpa gave them to me for when I get married. You remember me getting on one knee. His dark brow furrowed. Hum. You know, now that you mention it, I do remember us saying some things to each other about getting married. Like what our last name would be. Do you remember that? No. He began pacing. Why can't I remember that? Him being with no clothes on, with all the marks I'd left on his body, sort of disturbed me. I must have gone full-on animal with him. Poor guy. Maxim, would you mind putting something on? He looked down at his body, then grinned. I completely forgot that I had no clothes on. What a dork. 
You're not a dork. You're just freaking out a little. And who wouldn't be freaking out if they woke up with a wedding ring on their finger? I hoped he was right about the pretending thing, and that the marriage wasn't real at all. He grabbed something out of the drawer, slipped on some underwear, then pulled out a t-shirt and put that on too. His neck was still visible, and it looked like a vampire had gotten to him. So you don't hate me or anything? Why would I hate you? I had no idea why he would say something like that. We were both drunk. And from what I remember, Coco was behind that. So I'm not mad at you for anything that happened last night. And I hope you're not mad at me either. No way. He walked over to the bed then sat down. Come here so we can talk. Maybe together, we can piece together the night. It would be nice to know a little about what we did. Don't you think? I took a seat next to him. I do think that would be nice. So, what do you remember? For some reason, I remember seeing our friends moving in a circle around us. There were flashing lights and stuff, so I think we were at the club. Yeah, I remember that too. I wonder why they were doing that. It was weird. I tried to think about everything I had already recalled. Oh, I saw Coco with a bottle of champagne in her hands and then she had a glass of it. We weren't in the club though. The wall behind her was white. And I also saw you on one knee, holding out the rings, but we weren't in the club then either. There was a red carpet on the floor. Still that was just us being silly, I think. I mean, we were way messed up. I certainly don't expect you to stay engaged to me, even though I asked you to marry me and you said yes. He looked at me with raised brows. Hey, I just remembered that part. We were dancing, and I was nibbling on your earlobe, then I asked you to marry me. You dropped your head back and said yes. Maybe talking about it will bring our memories back. I looked at the bed. I sort of hate that I can't remember what we did in here. Me too. He looked at the bed, and then at me. Now that we're sober, we could. I shook my head. Not right now. My stomach is a mess. I could blow chunks at any minute. Yeah, me too. It was a dumb idea. Looking around the room, I didn't see any indication of us having used protection. There are no condom wrappers. We looked into each other's eyes. Did you have any? No. He shrugged. I didn't come here to have sleep with someone, Adele. That wasn't part of the plan. I'm not really into being with strangers, as crazy as that might sound right now. Me neither. In the last four years, I had only been with Jacob. I'm sure last night was great though. I mean, I do like you. We had fun last night, from the things I do remember. I mean, I would love to date you. If you want that. I have some issues. I wasn't looking to hook up with anyone. I'm not sure I'm in a good place to be dating. You know, I've got lots to work on. My number one goal is to get a job. That's a good goal. He smiled. You know, Coco told me that you've been depressed lately. Wanna talk about it? No. I wasn't about to get into all that. But I want you to know that whatever happened with you last night helped me see that I can get back to being who I used to be. Thanks for that. You're welcome. He ran his hand over his chin, which was already sporting a shadow from a budding beard over it. I'm glad you told me that. I was worried this would send you into a deeper funk than you'd already been in. It's good to know that is not the case. Being with you was nice. I do remember that. Dancing and laughing. I haven't done anything like that in years. Years? He looked like he found that hard to believe. You've been depressed for years? No. A heavy sigh came out of me. Only for about a year. Before that, I was in a relationship and we didn't go out often. Why is that? He was out of town a lot. I didn't want to get into the whole thing about Jacob. I see. So, you might have been sort of lonely even though you were in a relationship. Sometimes I did feel lonely. And there was this thing about never knowing 
when we would get to actually be together all the time. His job kept us apart, and he didn't know when that would end. Sounds sort of hard. But you aren't with this guy anymore. So it came to an end, right? Nodding, I tried not to think about why it had ended. It wasn't meant to be, is all. And it's taken me a while to understand that. Leaning his shoulder against mine, he asked, Is there a chance you and this guy might get back together? I'm only asking, because I hope that you keep me in mind when you are ready to date. There is no chance that he and I will ever get back together. It felt good saying that out loud. I'd been having fantasies about Jacob coming back, and that had to stop. And when I feel emotionally healthy again, you will be the first person I will think about. Good. Wrapping a lock of my damp hair around his finger, he went on, I like you, Adele. It would be nice to get to know you. I think it would be nice to get to know you too, Maxim. You're a very nice person. I try to be. He looked good even after a drunken night. I knew any woman would be glad to have his attention. And someday, I hoped I was ready and worthy of it. Well then, you've succeeded. I would totally kiss you right now, but my breath is worse than a dragon's. Maybe after I clean up, we can talk a little more before you go. That's probably a bad idea. I think we both know where that would lead. And as I've pointed out, we have no protection. We had none last night, he said with an impish grin. But we weren't in our right minds. I don't live so recklessly. Not when I'm sober. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to tell Coco that I want to leave today. I thought he should know that. I thought you two were staying the whole weekend, he said with disappointment in his voice. Don't go, Adele. Not just because this happened. Don't be embarrassed or ashamed of what we did. I'm not. I'm actually glad that it was you I ended up with. Me too. I have to admit that I was worried that I'd hooked up with a complete stranger. At least we kind of knew each other before we got drunk. About that. We should confront the evil Coco together to let her know that what she did was not okay. It wasn't okay, you're right about that. And she should know that you're not happy with it either. Well, to be honest, I was unhappy with the hangover that it gave me. But being with you was a bonus. I just wish I could at least remember some of the really good parts. I wasn't sure if I wanted to remember any of it now that I'd seen how savage I'd been with him. Just so you know, I'm not really that animalistic in bed. I moved my finger over a huge place where I'd sucked on his neck and left a bite mark. I have never done anything like that to anyone in my life. His dark eyes flickered as he looked at me. How long had it been since you'd last been with someone? Over a year. It had been almost two years, actually. Disbelief peppered his expression. You're serious? Almost two years, I said, then sighed. Now I'm beginning to think the way I've been living has taken more of a toll on me than I'd realized. You know, like I'm starving myself of things that aren't bad for me at all. Like the fact that you've been eating oatmeal and cereal instead of real food? Nodding, he ran his fingers along my cheekbone. No need to starve yourself of anything, Adele. It's not a healthy way to live. I can see that now. I honestly hadn't seen it before. Living without things that make me happy has done a number on me. My best friend feeling like she had to liquor me up just so that I would start living again says a lot. She should know that I didn't need to be liquored up to be interested in you. But I guess I was a necessary participant in the drinking, or she thought you would turn her drinks down. Sorry about that. I didn't realize what was going on until I woke up with my head splitting in two. See, I'm not a big drinker. Haven't had any in a very long time. Me too. I felt bad about what Coco had done to him. I'm going to make her apologize to you before we leave today. Don't go, he said with pleading eyes. No alcohol today for either of us. I'll make sure of that. I really don't want you to leave. It felt good to be wanted. What about the people who saw me making a fool of myself? If you will recall, 
I was right there making a fool of myself too. I honestly don't care what anyone thinks. Well that's not true. I care what you think. As long as you don't think I'm a fool, that's all that matters to me. I don't think you're a fool. And I don't think you're one either. So stay. We can go and see some shows. I love magic shows. How about you? Magic is pretty cool, I had to admit. Running my hand over the marks on his neck, I asked, You sure you want to go out with all that mess on your neck? I am so sorry about that. Gosh, what the hell did I become last night? I wish I could tell you. I really do. No one has ever left me in this condition. To be honest, the more I think about it, the more turned on I get. I've never been the object of so much desire. If that's what it was. I hope it was desire, and not that you were trying to kill me. He laughed. I blushed. Gosh, I hope so too. Anyway, I've already had the idea that I can hide my neck with a collared shirt and a tie. I bought some suits when I got here. Normally, I'm not a suit and tie sort of guy. What sort of guy are you? The sort of guy who wears khaki pants a lot, and I do mean a lot. Pull-over polo shirts are the norm too. I never wear dress shoes unless I'm going to something dressy, usually. I'm a big sneaker guy. He ran his hand over his face. Until yesterday, I had a beard that I'd been growing out for years. And my hair was down to my shoulders. One of my friends got me all cleaned up at a place here at the hotel. And he picked out some suits for me too. This is the new me. But I'm not sure how long it will last, or if it will even come back with me when I leave Vegas behind. The look suits you. But I totally get that you would want to be a lot more comfortable, on a day-to-day -day basis. Looking at his hair, I ran my hand through it. I bet you looked adorable with all that hair. You think? I do. Getting up, I knew I had to get back to my room, no matter if I decided to stay or leave. I'm going to put my wrinkled dress on and go to my room. I'm not sure if I'll leave or stay. I'll think about it a bit. I hope you decide to stay. Whatever decision you make, please come and let me know. Or better yet, I'll give you my cell number. Where's your phone? I'll put it in your contacts. That way, I'll save your number when you call me so that I'll have it too. I do not know where my phone is. I don't know where my purse is. And that thing had lots of money in it. I am under the impression that Coco has them though. I picked up my bra off the dresser and saw a paper folded up underneath it. What's this? I put the bra down and picked up the paper. As I unfolded it, Maxim came up behind me. What did you find? My heart stopped as I looked at the unassuming paper. A marriage license. Chapter 11 Maxim My eyes were glued to the paper Adele held in her hand, until it began shaking as she broke down in tears. No. This can't be. I took the paper from her as she descended into a puddle on the floor. Let me see it. It can't be real. It can't be legal. What are we going to do? Sobs filled her voice. I don't believe in divorce. But now, I'm going to have to get one. I'm going to go to hell. You're Catholic? I asked as I looked down at her. Yes? I'm Jewish. We can get divorced. At least I wasn't going to hell. She looked up at me with tear-filled eyes. Why would you marry a complete stranger, Maxim? Why would you? I thought that to be a better question. Me? She put her face in her hands and continued to bawl loudly. Obviously, I'm a messed up person. But you're not. I found No's signature as my witness and Coco as Adele's. The real question here is why our friends let us do this. Coco and Noah were our witnesses. What up with that? Your friend got us all drunk and then witnessed our marriage. This has to be some kind of a joke. That's it. It has to be a big joke. Stop crying. It's a joke, Adele. I knew I sounded panicked, but that's because I was. It has to be. 
There is no way in hell both of our friends would let us do something this insane. I wondered why I remembered Coco holding a bottle of champagne, and now I know why that was. We were celebrating our marriage. Oh gosh. She got back to crying. I guess she didn't believe it was a joke after all. Looking at our signatures at the bottom of the page, I saw how we'd signed. We hyphenated our last names. I don't have my name anymore. I'm no longer a Cambridge. I'm now Maxim Cambridge Constantine. My dad is gonna be pissed at me. She stopped crying for a second to look up at me. I remember it now. You wanted my last name. You wanted it. I bet that's why you married me. There is no way I married you, just so that I could kill my father Adele. This will kill him. I'm his only son. I'm the only one who can carry on his name, and I've just messed that up so completely that it's not even funny in the least. How do you think my parents are going to feel about their only child marrying a man she got intimate with, on the first night she met him? They're going to think I'm some kind of skank. I won't be able to look them in the eyes again for the rest of my life. At least they'll still be alive. My dad is gonna have a heart attack over this shit. I looked at the paper again, hoping to spot something that would show it was all a joke. This can't be real. This is Vegas, Maxim. People get drunk and get married here on a daily basis. And you can't believe this is real? My friends wouldn't let me do this. I had money to think about. Lots of money. And now, if this was legal, Adele could take half my money when we got divorced. Did you and your friend do this to me on purpose? I had to ask the question. Nothing else made sense to me. Did you plan to do this all along? Pulling herself up off the floor, she glared at me. Are you crazy? Do you honestly think that we're a couple of grifters out to get guys to marry us? And what reason would I have to plan that, Maxim? She didn't know about my millionaire status. And I wasn't sure I had to let her in on that. I just had to ask, is all. You know, be sure this wasn't some sort of a trick that's being played on me for some reason. I cannot believe a stranger is wearing my grandfather's wedding ring, she snapped before walking away from me. I wasn't going to let her just say that and leave. Instead, I grabbed her by the shoulder, spinning her back around to face me. Who carries around a set of wedding rings in the first place? And why does this ring even fit me? I really think you two planned this. Nothing else made any sense. I carry those rings for my own reasons. But it wasn't so that I could dupe some fool into marrying me. Do you think I want to be married to you? I don't. That ring wasn't ever meant for you. I don't know why the thing fits you. And you were the one to talk to us first, not the other way around. So stop thinking that we're con artists. Well, in all reality, a real con artist knows how to get their pawn or patsy or whatever they call the person they scam to make the first move. Don't ask me how they can get a person to do that, but they can. And you had this great backstory of being depressed. That way, it would drag me in, piquing my curiosity and make me want to help you. It doesn't hurt that you're attractive. Who wouldn't notice you? My depression is no backstory meant to make anyone do anything for me. I didn't tell you about that. Think about that for a second before you accuse me again. She pulled the towel around her tighter as it had begun to slip. Coco told me about that. I took my hand off her shoulder as I rubbed my chin. And she's the one who got us both drunk. How long have you known her? Practically my whole life. She's a therapist, not a scammer. Well, she got us drunk. She signed as your witness. And somehow she got my friend to sign as mine. Remember all that weird circle dancing they did around us? What was that all about, anyway? Like I know. She sat on the bed, looking like she was about to puke. Everyone at the club did weird shit. And they were probably all drunk too. She wouldn't have let me do that if she'd been sober. I know that for a fact. Taking the marriage license with me, I sat in a chair, not wanting to be too close to Adele, since I wasn't sure if she could be trusted anymore. My friends wouldn't have either. 
Callan was supposed to be watching out for me, but he disappeared sometime during the night. Everyone had been drinking heavily, even before Coco began feeding me and you drinks like they were M&Ms. Wiping her tears away, Adele took a very deep breath before asking, So, what are we going to do, Maxim? We're not going to stay married. I didn't know that I needed to spell it out for her. I don't love you. You don't love me. We don't love each other. We don't even know each other. Looking at the ceiling, she said, We confessed that we loved each other last night when we were at the club. I remember that part. It was just pretend, Adele. None of that was real. I couldn't believe her. It sounds like you're not fully understanding this. We are not staying married. It seems to me that our unconscious minds may have done what we were afraid to do. That sounds crazy. Do you realize that? I thought she had to still be drunk, if that's how she thought. Our brains were swimming in so much liquor that they should have drowned. In no way was that decision thought out by anyone. I'm just saying that we did it. We got married. Neither of us can remember why that is. So we should give this some time, and see if we can figure out why we did that. Because? We. Were. Drunk? There was no other explanation. I think it was more than just that. It wasn't. I could not believe how impossible she was being. This isn't some tattoo we got together. This is till death do us part. Which isn't going to happen. I thought I should spell that out for you. So don't stop paying your rent because you're not moving in with me, baby. Her eyes got really big as she looked directly at me. Wow. Just wow, Maxim. This is how you handle a crisis. Telling people what you're not going to do instead of taking care of things the way an adult would. Good to know, I guess. At least we know that when in a crisis, I'm the level-headed one. She was talking as if we would be staying together as man and wife, and that was not going to happen at all. Crossing my arms over my chest, I asked, so what do you think we should do? I mean, you didn't even want to date me a few minutes ago. So do tell how you feel we should do this thing. What if this was fate, Maxim? It wasn't fate. It was too much alcohol. She stared at the floor. I think we should just wait. Don't start the process of getting a divorce yet. We don't move in together, either. Just wait to see what happens. That could prove disastrous for me. Here's what I think about doing that. I think it's a terrible idea. First of all, how is waiting going to solve anything? It will give us time to decide what's best for us. Do you honestly think that being married to me, a man you hardly know at all and do not love, is best for you? Surely she couldn't believe that. Look, there are some underlying feelings that we have for each other, or this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Let's see how things play out. What's the rush? You got some girl who's going to care that you're married? No. And I have no one who will care either. So let's wait. And do what? Date. Not sure that's a great idea right now. Like I said before, I've got things to work on. But eventually, yes. So, you want me to stay married to you, but we're not even going to go out together, I stated. Can we talk on the phone so we can get to know each other? I had no idea why I was even asking her these questions. I wasn't going to stay married to her. I couldn't do that. It could cost me half of everything I owned, which was a lot and also very important to me. I think that talking on the phone would be a good idea. We can do that. Sorry Adele. I really am. I know this isn't your fault. Or at least I hope it's not. But I can't do this. I can't stay married to you. You don't care that I believe that divorce is morally wrong. You don't care that I think being married to someone you don't love is wrong. I tossed back at her. You told me that you loved me. She smiled. I thought that was odd. Why are you smiling? There is nothing worth smiling over right now. Unless you think you've tricked me into believing that you and your friend didn't plan this. Tell me, 
What would make you think that anyone would plan some elaborate scheme to marry you, Maxim? She was not going to get me to tell her about my money. I've never had to think about that before. Until now. I guess you could consider me a catch. Maybe this is going to turn into blackmail. How can I blackmail my husband? She asked with a grin. Plenty of ways. You could demand I pay for things. You could say that if I didn't do what you wanted, then you would divorce me and take everything I've got. You're worried I'm going to try and take your things? She laughed. I won't do that. I just told you that I don't believe in divorce. I'm not lying to you. How am I supposed to know that, Adele? The only other person here who knows you is the one who got us drunk. Who can vouch for your character? Not Coco. She's not a viable witness for you. I stopped right there. Hey. Wait a second. How can a couple of drunk people be viable witnesses to a marriage contract? I thought I had found a loophole. What if that marriage contract isn't legal, since everyone who signed it was blitzed out of their minds? If it's not legal, then there never was a real marriage. She tapped her chin as she thought. Then her blue eyes met mine. As long as there is no divorce, I won't argue about it. It's not like I consciously made the decision to marry you anyway. I just don't believe in breaking vows I made to God. You don't know what vows you made. And neither do I. Suddenly, an idea came to mind. We could go and see the man who married us to find out if there's a video. But as soon as I said it, I realized that it was a terrible idea. If Adele saw herself making vows to God, it might mean that she would fight to stay married even if the contract was proven to be invalid. Nah, let's not do that to ourselves. I'm sure we were sloppy drunk, which would only embarrass us both. I'm sure it would, and I'm sure we were. Probably nothing I want in my memories. One bullet dodged. Only a machine gun's worth to go. Chapter 12 Adele After putting my clothes on, I had to get to Coco to see what she could remember. Maxim still sat in the chair he'd been sitting in, looking dazed and confused. I'm going to my room. He held out a small piece of paper. My phone number. Call me as soon as you find your phone. Taking the paper, I saw the marriage license sitting on the table and grabbed it too. I'll call as soon as I find it. Hey, he said as he got up. Why are you taking the marriage license? To show it to Coco. Why? Don't lose it. I had the idea that he didn't know squat about these types of things. But I did. You do know that this is just our copy of this, right? He stared blankly at me. No, I don't know that. The person who married us had to file the original at the county courthouse, I informed him. So he might not have done that yet. A smile blossomed over his entire face. Maybe we can stop him from doing that. Maybe we can fix this right away. Have you even looked at the time, Maxim? I mean, I haven't looked at it, but by how the sun is getting lower in the sky, I know it's early evening. What do you think are the chances that it hasn't gotten filed yet? Holding out his hand, he said, give it to me. I'm going to look up the name of the man who married us and find a number so that I can call him and figure that out. If it hasn't been filed, I'll tell him not to file it and then I will go pick it up and shred it. Once I do that, this nightmare will all be over. I handed him the paper, then waited to see what he found out. Don't count on it being that easy, Maxim. I'd hate for you to get your hopes up. A minute later, he made the call. Hi, this is Maxim Cambridge. I was in there last night with... I couldn't hear. Turn it on speaker. Putting the phone on speaker, I heard that the person on the other end of the line had interrupted him. I remember y'all. How is Adele doing today? He looked at me, then shrugged. Fine, I guess. You two were so cute. It wasn't last night, though. We did the ceremony for you two lovebirds around four this morning. Like we talked about, the video of the ceremony was sent to the email you gave us. 
I gave you an email, he asked. Sure you did. And I sent that out around nine this morning, when I was getting all the paperwork done. I looked at him, knowing he'd already taken the marriage licenses to the courthouse. But I didn't say anything. He asked, did you turn in our marriage license? I did. That's so sweet. You were worried that we didn't make your marriage official. Nothing to worry about, it's now a real marriage. As legal as they come. Without looking at me, he asked, even though everyone who signed the document was completely wasted? What are you talking about? No one was wasted. You all were very sober and respectful too. It's not often that a wedding party comes in at four in the morning, acting the way all of you did. You had a rather large party for that hour too. More boys than girls but still, a large party for the early morning hours. That kiss you two had after becoming man and wife was off the charts romantic. I hope you two have a blessed marriage. Is there anything else I can help you with, Mr. Cambridge Constantine? He pinched the bridge of his nose, seeming aggravated. No thank you. He ended the call, then looked at me. Well this isn't good at all. Do you have any idea what email you gave them? I wanted to see the video more than I wanted air to breathe. Look, it doesn't matter. We have a lot to deal with right now. He put the marriage license down, and I picked it up. I'm going to see if Coco remembers anything. Want to come too? Damn, he shouted. Yeah. Why not? He walked toward the bathroom. Let me get dressed first. So, Maxim wasn't into the whole idea of being married clearly. But I wasn't about to end a marriage if it was based on something good. I wanted to see that video. I wanted to know everything I could about what had happened. I waited until I heard the shower running, then took the license and left his suite. I had to go all the way down to the lobby to find the right bank of elevators. On the way down, a nice woman told me that it was six in the evening. Far too late to leave now. When I found our room, I knocked. Coco, it's me. I heard some noise inside the room, then the door opened and she wrapped her arms around me. There she is. Congratulations. Looking over her shoulder, I saw Noah sitting up in her bed. He waved and said, Hello, Mrs. Cambridge Constantine. How was the honeymoon? They both wore the robes the hotel provided. Wish we could remember. Coco pulled me inside. What do you mean? Neither of us can remember a thing about getting married or what we did after the wedding. I looked at the bathroom. I really need to change clothes. Can we talk after? Yeah. Coco went to get into bed next to Noah. Your stuff is in the closet. My phone? My purse? Yeah. All that. You didn't remember giving it to me after the wedding. She looked confused. No. It felt like I was going crazy. Let me change so we can talk. A few minutes later, I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt with my hair pulled back in a ponytail feeling more like myself as I went back out to find Coco and Noah making out. Clearing my throat I asked, so this wedding was I okay at it? Coco pulled her mouth off nose then wiped it with the back of her hand. Oh. You're out already. So the wedding was so sweet Adele. You two were made for each other. Everyone said so. Noah nodded. I've never seen Maxim that happy. He couldn't stop smiling and telling you that he loved you. Imagine that. He can't remember that at all. He just keeps saying that he doesn't love me and that I don't love him. What? They said at the same time. Noah shook his head. You're messing with us. When is Maxim gonna knock at the door to tell us how happy he is that we were there for you guys? Probably never. I had no idea why Maxim and I were the only ones who had no memory of the night. So here's the thing, why can't we remember anything? Coco sat up, pulled her knees up then wrapped her arms around them. Let me go over the events of the night for you. I made sure you two had drinks. Yeah. We both recall that, 
and neither of us is happy that you got us drunk. She looked hurt. You didn't have to drink what I gave you. I wasn't forcing liquor on either of you. I wasn't about to try to argue with her. Anyway, go on. One of the guys? I think you said his name is Tyler. Right, babe? No one nodded. Yeah, it was Tyler. Coco went on. So Tyler had illicit substances. White stuff? I asked to be sure. Yes, Adele. He had some white stuff. And we all thought that we should take some, so that we could sober up enough to drink some more. We were all getting a little plastered, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, I do. So we all took some. I did not remember doing that. When was this? The song Jump was playing. She sang some lyrics, might as well jump. Jump. Go ahead and jump. It began coming back to me more clearly. You guys were moving in circles around Maxim and me while you were singing that song, weren't you? Yeah, Noah said. And after that song, I guess Maxim proposed to you because you guys were all loved up on each other, and then you shouted that you were getting married. Don't you remember the toast, Adele? Coco asked. No. To new beginnings and lasting feelings. Noah asked. Surely you remember that toast. Not even a little. I hated how I felt. So what happened next? Coco took over. You and Maxim ran out of the club. I'm not sure how long after the toast that was though. Anyway, by the time we caught up to you guys, we saw Maxim on one knee proposing to you. And then you ran off. I followed you to the bathroom, where you said that you were about to throw up. But you didn't because I gave you some an illicit substance. And then we all went to the chapel next door, and you two got married. I was sober? I asked, because I found it impossible to believe. It sure seemed like it. You kept telling me that he was the one. I mean the one. Coco laughed. You two were meant to be together. No doubt, Noah agreed. I cried, your love was so beautiful. They said there's a video, I told them. But why can't he nor I remember a thing? They looked at each other, then looked back at me. Did you take anything from Tyler after the ceremony? Noah asked. I have no idea. I began to panic. Why are you asking me that? Because he's the pharmacist, Noah said. You know, the guy with the supply. Are you saying that you guys have a drug dealer in your party? I could not believe what I was hearing. This is a bachelor party weekend, Adele. He looked at me like I was crazy. Of course we brought a drug dealer to the party. What is a party without one? So we were roofied? I couldn't believe it. I honestly have no idea if you were or not. But I can see to it that Tyler comes clean if he did give you guys something. Not that it matters. You guys have found it. I was confused. What's it? Are you kidding me? He asked. No. True love. It is true love. I saw it in my buddy's eyes. Stars man. Tons of them? Coco nodded. You know I wouldn't have ever signed as a witness unless I knew you were perfect for each other, right? Yeah. But somehow, knowing that there had been some substances in the mix with all that alcohol began to bother me. But what if Maxim and I only thought that we had found this great love, when all we had really found was a love for substances and booze? Nah, Noah said, blowing off that idea. You guys already named your kids. Um, Kate was one of them. And then there was Jack, I think. Coco added George too. She laughed. Unless it's written in the cosmos, who would know that? No one? I'm sure we were just making names up. It occurred to me that they might have continued drinking. You guys okay? We are awesome, he said. Coco is the find of my life. She leaned against him, making goo-goo eyes at him. And he's mine too. I could bet a million bucks that this Tyler guy has other substances too. Maybe he put it into our drinks. Maybe Noah has some. Maybe this has more to do with substances than real feelings. 
If I had any, I would most def use it with this woman here, Noah said. But I don't have any. I'm not saying Tyler didn't spike some drinks. But I am saying that if he had, that shit would have worn off by now. Maxim wants a divorce, I blurted out. No's face showed actual pain. No way. Yeah. I nodded. He thinks this marriage is a bad idea. Coco frowned. What do you think, Adele? I don't know. I mean, I don't believe in divorce. You know that, Coco. But how can I stay married to a man who thinks we don't love each other when we really do? You are a strong Catholic woman, she reminded me. We have to pull our reluctant husbands up once in a while. We have to make them understand that what God has joined together, no one can ever part. It's our job. She looked up, then back at me. I think that's what they tried to teach us anyway. It has been a hell of a long time since I've been to church, Adele. I had no idea what to do. He's Jewish. In his religion, there is divorce. He told me so. Noah shook his head. Look. Take your clothes up to his room, put on something sensual, and be with your husband. He'll never say another word about divorce. I promise you that. Coco nodded in agreement. Yeah, Adele. Take your things and go be with the man you love and who loves you. It will all come back to you both with one kiss. I know it will. But what if it doesn't? Plus, I wasn't ready for a full-blown marriage. And I've got things to work on about myself. Work on them with him, Coco counseled me. Who better to help you get over your loss than your husband? But Jacob was supposed to be my husband. Are you sure about this, Coco? I am positive. You need to watch the video of the wedding. Anyone can see that what you two have can't be manufactured by substances or alcohol. It's real. Don't be afraid of it, and help your husband not to be afraid of it either. I'm not afraid. I just don't know how real it is. And he doesn't either. It was an impossible situation, with too many variables in the mix. Noah looked me in the eyes. Hey, let's get real here, okay? Okay. I wasn't sure what he meant by that, but getting real sounded good to me. I want to be with this woman, right here. Okay. I still didn't understand what he was saying. Coco wrinkled her nose as she nodded. And I want to sleep with this smoking man, right here. Do you get me? Yeah. You guys want to get to it. I held up one finger as I finally got their drift. Oh. Right now. Like this minute. I get it. So get your things and go to your husband's room, Noah directed me. I'm sure that if you kiss him, all this will be fixed right then and there. Oh my. I guess we'll see how that goes then. Chapter 13 Maxim Walking out of the bathroom in my underwear, I went to the closet to put some clothes on. I put on the entire suit ensemble, buttoning the shirt all the way up but foregoing the tie, I wanted all the marks on my body covered. After slipping on my dress shoes, I walked out of the closet, noticing that Adele wasn't in the room. Adele? She must have gone to her room without me. Oh well. My cell rang, and I saw that it was Callan calling. Hey man, have I got something to tell you? I heard, he said in a terse tone. What the hell, Maxim? I'm starving to death. Meet me at the buffet, and I'll tell you what I know. See you there. Checking my phone to see if I had missed a call from Adele, I found that I had not. Shoving the cell into my pocket, I went down to meet up with Callan. All the guys were there, except Noah. I had some beef with Noah for witnessing my mistake of a marriage, so was eager to talk to him. You guys seen Noah today? I barely woke up about an hour ago, Tanner said. Forrest and Eli shook their heads. Tyler shrugged. Callan rubbed his temples, looking worried. I'm gonna grab some food, then I'll meet you guys at the table. Then you can all tell me why you let me do something so stupid. I had to get some food into my body. After loading up a plate, I went to sit down across from Callan. 
I'm the one who's in a mess here, so why do you look so distraught, Callan? I feel responsible for what you did, Maxim. I made you a promise that I wouldn't let you do anything stupid, but I went to my room early, leaving you to these idiot wolves. He looked at the others. What got into all of you last night? No one dared to look at Callan as he stared at them one at a time. Eli finally broke down and said, maybe Tyler knows why. Callan looked at Tyler. What did you give everyone? First of all, everyone was consuming tons of alcohol, and that had nothing to do with me, Tyler defended himself. It was Forrest who came up with the idea of doing some to sober everyone up a little. So, I gave everyone a little of that. And shortly after we all took that, Loverboy over there popped the question to his girl. I had nothing to do with it. Callan looked at me with narrowed eyes. Why did you ask her to marry you? Like I know, Callan. I shook my head, wishing I had an answer. All I know is that neither Adele nor I can remember much about last night. And we don't remember a thing about getting married. I looked at Tyler. Do you know why that might be? Well, it might be because of the rehypnol that was in the champagne that you and she drank after the wedding. He smiled at me. You asked for something that would enhance your ability to perform. You were worried about how much you'd had to drink, and how you might be shitty in bed if you didn't have something to help you out. So X was out of the question. I asked. And you intoxicated us instead. It helps with anxiety, and I ran out of X early on. He looked at the other guys at the table, all of them with the exception of Callan. These guys made sure of that. I looked at Tanner. Even you. Hey, I'm about to get married. Don't judge. So, you are telling me that I asked Adele to marry me after taking an illicit substance, which was supposed to help me sober up? I couldn't understand how our playful marriage thing had gotten so real. When we were in the club dancing, that was all just sort of like a fantasy she and I were playing around with. It wasn't real, and we both understood that. Yeah, we all knew that too, Eli said. But when you guys left the club, we found you down on one knee, actually proposing to her. Forrest chimed in, Adele ran off before we caught up to you guys. Coco found her in the bathroom, and when they came back out she shouted yes, then you two ran to each other, and you scooped her up. You told her that you were taking her to the nearest wedding chapel, and making her your wife. It was romantic. I was wasted. I thought they all needed to be reminded of that fact. Regardless if we took an illicit substance or not, we still had the alcohol in our systems, and we shouldn't have been making what could be lifelong commitments. Neither of us. Well, you're going to have to get the marriage annulled, Callan told me. And you're going to have to make sure you don't upset this wife of yours, because she now owns half of everything you own. She doesn't know about my finances. How long that would last, I did not know. The thing is that she didn't even want to date me when I was asking her about it this morning, before we found out that we were married. She said that she's got to work on herself before she can date. But then, after we found the marriage license, she said that she doesn't believe in divorce, so she wants to stay married for a while to see how things play out. Only we're not even going to date. We can talk on the phone, is what she said. That's crazy, Callan said. She sounds crazy, Maxim. She's not crazy. She's been depressed is all, I defended her. But she is kind of back and forth with this marriage thing, and that's pretty annoying. If we were both on board to end the marriage, which was a terrible mistake, then this would be so much easier. Get her on board, Callan said. I tried. I asked her why she wanted to stay married to a man she doesn't love, and who doesn't love her. Forrest interjected, you both were telling each other that you loved each other last night. Or was it early this morning? Anyway, you guys were all lovey devey. What the hell happened? We sobered up. Rolling my eyes, I felt like Callan was the only sane one there. Where is she right now? Callan asked. I think she's in her room. My cell rang, and I saw a number without a caller ID. Since I didn't have hers in my contacts yet, I assumed that it was Adele. This might be her. 
I swiped the screen. Hello? Maxim, I got my bags and came to your room but you're not here. Coco and Noah sort of kicked me out of the room she and I were sharing, Adele said. They did what? I got up, furious at those two. First, they witness a marriage between two intoxicated people, and now they throw you out of your own room. Yeah. I'm sorry. I looked at the other guys. Are any of you sharing a room with Noah? Eli nodded. Yeah, he and I are in the same room. Only he never came in last night. I think he's with your wife's friend. First of all, don't call her that, and second of all, can you call him and tell him to get out of Coca's room so that Adele can go back there? Are you coming up, Maxim? I'm standing in the hallway with my bags, and people are looking at me weird. Hang on. I've got No's roommate calling him to tell him to get the hell out of there, so you can go back. Oh. She got quiet. The silence told me I'd hurt her feelings. I looked at Callan, then pressed the mute button. Should I just let her stay with me? Does she sound upset that you haven't asked her to stay with you? Sort of. Then definitely ask her, he advised me. You don't want to make her mad. Get her on your side. Eli put the phone down. He's not answering me. It's okay. I walked away to head up to my room and unmuted the phone. I'm on my way. You can stay with me. It's not a problem at all. Noah didn't answer, huh? No. They were about to go to bed. That's why they told me to leave. I figured he wouldn't answer his phone. They looked like they'd been at it all night and all day too. You know, maybe those two should have gotten married and left us the hell alone. Although the guys had told me that I had spearheaded the whole let's get married idea, I still had a hard time believing that I would do that without someone putting it into my head first. I'll be right there. Just wait for me. Okay. Before I got to the elevator, Callan caught up to me. Hey. I want to tell you one more thing before you go up there. Yeah? Don't sleep with her. Well, we already did that, and I've got the marks all over my body to prove it. I didn't see the point in denying her or myself if that's what we both wanted. Not that I knew whether I did at the time, but I wanted to keep the option open. Neither of you was really capable of making that decision at that time. But now you're both sober. If you knowingly and soberly sleep together, then it will be a lot harder for a judge to give you an annulment. Some of them are pretty strict about that sort of thing. You don't want to chance it. Also, you might think about offering her some money if she'll agree to the annulment. That might hurt her feelings. I didn't want to hurt her, I knew that for sure. You have to understand that I do care about her. She's already suffering from depression, for some reason. I don't want to make it worse. Just don't make things worse for yourself either. That's all I'm saying. Come Monday, you can talk to your lawyer back home to find out what he can do about this. I'll do my best. The elevator opened and people came off. Then I got in. When the doors opened again, I saw her standing in front of my door. Hey. Her cheeks went red as she looked at me. You look like a million bucks and I look like trailer trash. She had on shorts, a t-shirt, some flip-flops, no makeup, and her hair was pulled back into a ponytail. You look great. As soon as I got close to her, I had the urge to kiss her but managed to hold myself back. You okay? Sort of. But not really. Things seem surreal to me. I mean, my best friend just kicked me out of my room and told me to go to my husband. They said we should kiss and everything will come back to us or something like that. Opening the door, I let her go in before me. I talked to the guys about things. I should let you know that we were both roofied when we drank the champagne after the marriage ceremony, and that's why we can't remember anything. That guy named Tyler, huh? She left her luggage by the door then took a seat in a chair. Noah said something about him being your guy's pharmacist. He's Tanner's old friend from his high school days. And I am so sorry about him doing that to you. It's not your fault. I'm not mad at you. Well, maybe you should be. 
Coco told me that we did an illicit substance before you asked me to marry you. She said that we were acting pretty sober when we got married. She and Noah seemed to think we were made for each other. This was not good. Adele, I'm not saying that we will never be together as a real man and wife. Who knows? I like you. I want to get to know you. I care about you. But I do not know you enough to truthfully say that I love you. I know that. And I'm glad you want to be honest with me. I don't know you well enough to make that statement either. Let's watch the video. Now that I know we weren't sloppy drunk, I'd like to see how we acted. That seemed like a terrible idea. Adele, we weren't really us at that time. You understand that, right? I do understand that. I'm just having a hard time believing what Coco and Noah said. I want to see with my own eyes if you looked at me with stars in your eyes, the way Noah said you did. And I want to see how I looked at you. Getting on my knees in front of her, I didn't know how to get through to her that the marriage was a huge mistake and that we had to put an end to it. No matter how we had looked when we got married. I took her hands in mine, and that's when I noticed that we both still had the wedding rings on. I need to give you back this ring. No. She ran her thumb over it. For now, keep it on. Adele, this isn't mentally healthy. For now. Please. Don't make her mad. For now. But we're going to have to take them off before we go back home. I don't see why. The rings will remind us that we are married and that we have something to work on. I wasn't getting through to her. I don't want to be married. A part of you does. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gone through with it. But if we were of sound mind, or sounder than the alcohol made us, then we made the decision with somewhat clear heads. I just want to see how we were acting. I'm not going to stop asking you, Maxim. I'm sort of stubborn at times. I just don't want you to think that we can have a real marriage. Not like this. This marriage was a mistake, and it doesn't really matter how we acted when we said our vows. We can't even remember them, Adele. Because we were roofied, Maxim. What if we hadn't been? What if we could remember everything? Wouldn't that make a difference? My heart skipped a little when I realized she had a point. Chapter 14 Adele Maxim pulled the video up on his cell, and we sat side by side, watching it. My eyes are wide open, I pointed out. I don't look drunk at all. Neither do I. But we were drunk and high. All that alcohol was still in our system. Coco and Noah stood right behind us, their arms around each other as they smiled like crazy. Maxim's other friends were all smiles too. Everyone seemed very happy. Yeah, it's weird. Maxim's attitude about the whole thing was on the negative side. I couldn't blame him though. Not being able to remember things was more than frustrating. In the video, I saw Maxim looking at me, and I realized what Noah was talking about. You do have stars in your eyes there, Maxim. I was high as a kite. Look at the way I'm looking at you right there. I've never seen myself like that before. You were also way messed up, Adele. I doubt you've ever had that much alcohol in your body before. Listen, I said to hush him up. The preacher guy, or whatever he is, said something I couldn't hear because you were talking. Okay, I'll shut up. The preacher asked, do you two have vows that you would like to say? Maxim nodded. I'd like to say that I've never met anyone like Adele in my entire life. She's got my heart, but I gave it to her freely. And I feel like I am holding her heart too. I'm never going to give it back. I want to be with you forever, Adele Constantine. A tear fell from my eye, and I looked at Maxim who was frowning. That was really beautiful. He looked at me without blinking. We shouldn't watch this. No. You're wrong. On screen I said, Maxim your soul shines with goodness. Your eyes tell me that you truly love me. I just hope mine are telling you how much I love you too. Our lives were meant to be spent together. 
I want to wake up every morning to your handsome face and fall asleep in your arms every night. I want to have your babies. Let's make a life together, Maxim. You and me, forever. This was a bad idea, Dell, he said as his finger came up to swipe the screen. Wait. I took his hand away before he could end the video. I want to see it all. The man marrying us asked, do you have rings that you wish to exchange? Maxim nodded, then held out his hand, revealing the rings that rested in his palm. I took the man's ring, smiling at him the whole time. Maxim slid the ring onto my finger. With this ring I thee wed. I did the same to his. With this ring I thee wed. The man said, what God has joined together no man can part. You are now husband and wife until death do you part. You may kiss the bride. Neither Maxim nor I could stop smiling as we moved into each other's arms and kissed like there was no tomorrow. Our friends cheered, and Coco grabbed a bottle of champagne. One of the guys shouted out in the background, What does it feel like to be married to a millionaire, Adele? I looked at Maxim. What did he say? He quickly swiped the screen to end the video. What? Why did I hear someone asking me what it feels like to be married to a millionaire? Shoving the phone into his pocket, he shrugged. I mean, I guess you could call me that. I own a tech company, and we make good money. Do you have millions of dollars in your bank account? I asked, confused. Well, yeah. But I don't like to be flashy or walk around talking about the money I have. I got the idea that part of his problem with our marriage had to do with the money he had. Maxim, I don't want you to worry about me trying to take anything from you. I'm not like that. Yeah, you say that right now. But when we're in front of a judge, you might change your mind. He got up and went to the mini fridge, pulling out a bottle of something. I'm going to have a beer. Want anything? No. I didn't like him thinking that I was a money grubber. Is there anything I can do to show you that you can trust me? Give me an annulment. He smiled as if he were joking, which he was not. After seeing how we were at our wedding, you still think it was a mistake to marry me? I thought our true colors had shone through during the whole ceremony. It looked like I meant the words I said to you. What do you think about what you said? At the time, I'm sure I meant them. But now I don't think that way. He popped off the cap on the beer and took a long drink. This is a very confusing time for me, Adele. You have to admit that this is a very unorthodox start to a marriage. You don't want to live together. You don't want us to go out together. You said we can talk on the phone, but that's it. You know, I'm not so sure I want that anymore after having seen the video. Being apart might be bad for us. With a heavy sigh, he sat in a chair far away from me. Funny, I think we should be apart. You know, see if we even miss each other when we get back to our real lives. That's the real test, I think. I think our friends might be onto something. I think we should kiss and see what happens. I got up and went to him, getting on my knees in front of him. I would like to see you looking at me the way you did in that video. Adele, that wasn't real. It was very real. If we could remember all of that and all that came after we said our vows, then things would be very different right now. I knew that was the truth. What about your depression? He asked with concern. What makes you think that you are capable of making decisions when you've been suffering from something like that for so long? It was time to tell Maxim the truth. You asked me earlier why I carried the wedding rings around with me. It is quite the mystery, he said. Well, I carried them to keep someone in my mind. I didn't want to lose him entirely. See, I was engaged to a man. When we told my grandfather about our engagement, he gave me the wedding set that we are wearing now. A man named Jacob was supposed to be wearing the ring you that is now on your finger. So what happened? He took a drink of the beer, looking at me warily. He was in the Marines, and about a year ago he was killed in action. His body came home in an urn because he had been nearly completely destroyed. I never got to see him again. 
That is why I was depressed. That is why I quit my job. That is why Coco brought me here to get my groove back. And it seems that I did just that. This was fate, Maxim. Let's not shut the door in its face. I am wearing a ring meant for the man you truly loved, Adele. He pulled it off. This isn't right. Handing it to me, he said, you've suffered a terrible loss. I can't replace the man you lost. I can't be him for you. I took the ring, holding it between my fingers. You are nothing like Jacob. He was tense most of the time. A good man but a strict one. He had no sense of humor and you're funny. He wasn't as tall as you. He had blonde hair that he kept in a buzz cut. His blue eyes looked nothing like your dark ones. To be honest, I'm more attracted to you than I ever was to him. Does that sound like I'm trying to replace him with you? But you loved him. He took another drink. We don't love each other, Adele. That doesn't mean that we won't love each other someday. I'm not some silly girl who thinks that everything we said to each other while under the influence of substances and alcohol was true. But there is an undeniable spark between us. I agree. But I don't want to be in a committed relationship with you until we know if we will fall in love or not. Can't you understand what I'm saying? You're afraid that I'm going to take half of your stuff if you break up with me. I get it. Okay. I'm glad you get it. I am afraid. I've worked my butt off to get to where I am, and I can't let anyone destroy all I've worked so hard for. The tension in his face told me just how afraid he really was. If I didn't have my beliefs, then I would gladly let you have the annulment. But I do have them, and they are very strong. When I told Jacob that I would marry him, I stuck by what I'd said. There were times when I wasn't sure that being married to him was going to make me happy. He was a career Marine. He never planned on leaving the service. And that meant he would be called out at times, leaving me alone at home. Maybe with some kids to care for while he was gone. I'm sure that life would have been hard, he agreed. But you didn't have to stay engaged to him if you thought that sort of life wouldn't make you happy. This belief you have isn't a good one. You have to think about what you need. You have to know what you want and accept nothing less than that. Give yourself a chance, Adele. I'm not holding you to what you said to me. I'm letting you go so we can see where things go with us. If they go anywhere at all. I'm a complete slob. You don't know that about me, but it's true. I do like things kept clean. But that doesn't sound like it would be an issue if you've got money to pay a housekeeper. I do have a housekeeper who keeps my place looking nice. He ran his hands over his suit. This isn't me. You have told me that already. You are actually a scruffy sort of guy who likes to wear office casual attire and sneakers. That's fine with me. Looking at me without blinking he went on. I've been told that I fart in my sleep. So have I. I wasn't going to let him throw away our marriage because of normal human things. We both began laughing, and I liked the way our combined laughter sounded. Adele, what do I have to say to get you to think that I'm gross? The thing is that we do have to get to know each other. We might not like every single thing. But we might find that we do like a lot. We will just have to see. Until we know if we can work or not, we need to keep the marriage intact. I promise you that I won't take your money. I held up two fingers. Scout's honor. You weren't the scout. You're not even holding your fingers right. He took my hand and put my fingers in the right position. It's like this. I held up the ring. Please put this back on. Please. He held out his hand and I slid it back onto his finger. It still won't make me think that this wasn't a mistake. We'll see. I changed the subject, were you a scout? For a couple of years, yeah. He held my hand for a moment, then let it go. You own a tech company, so you must be pretty smart, I said. He sat back, picked up his beer and got quiet before taking a drink. I'm smart, yeah. Where did you go to college? MIT. His eyes cut to one side, and I could tell that he didn't like talking about that with me. 
I went to UCLA. Journalism major. One day, I'd like to write a book. But so far, I've just been a reporter. The one thing I don't want is an anchor job. Sitting at a desk, reading the news others had to go out and find is not my thing. So, you like to get into other people's business. He looked at me. Like, now that you know that I own a company, you're going to snoop around until you learn everything about me. No. I exclaimed, unable to believe the way he was thinking about me. Maxim, I'm not a bad person. If I want to know things about you, I will ask you. There is no need to snoop around in your business. I can't believe you don't trust me at all. Maybe it's only because I don't know you, Adele. For all I know, you could be the biggest liar the world has ever seen. Can't you see how this isn't going to work? You will get to know me, the same way anybody gets to know a person. And I'll get to know you too. No rush at all. How long do you expect me to stay married to you before we call it quits? You have a very negative attitude right now. Where's that guy that I first met yesterday? I'd like to know where the standoffish girl I met yesterday went. You made her disappear. I'm glad you did. He had no idea the effect he had on me. I didn't want to like you. I really didn't. I didn't come here to find a husband. But you are going to leave with one, he said, then took another drink. And I am leaving with the wife. A woman who I am not taking home. What if you did take me home? I had to wonder if living together would make things better between us. I'm not going to do that. I want an annulment. Taking you home would be the opposite of the smart thing to do. We were talking in circles, and it was getting tiresome. I think we should go and get something to eat. I haven't eaten a thing. I was eating when you called, so I'm good. Plus, my appetite is pretty much ruined. Oh, so if I give you an annulment, you'll get hungry again? He was acting like a big baby. Probably so, yes. Well, I'm not going to do that. Getting up, I went to the door. Coco and Noah should be done by now. I grabbed the handle of my suitcase and pulled it with me. See ya? You're taking your stuff with you? He asked as he remained seated. I am taking my things with me. Our conversation is going nowhere. I see no need to continue it right now. Call me if you start thinking rationally. You think I'm being irrational? Completely. Chapter 15 Maxim I watched the video of the wedding again. This just doesn't make sense. I did look at Adele with love in my eyes. And she looked at me with just as much love in hers. Even though I knew for a fact that we were both under the influence of, it was hard for me to imagine myself feeling that way for her. I'd never had super deep feelings for anyone before. To fall in love with a woman I barely knew made no sense. No matter how happy we looked when we got married, it was all a complete sham. Someone knocked at my door, and I shoved the phone into my pocket then went to see who it was. Coming. It had been a couple of hours since Adele left, so I thought it might be her. When I opened the door, Noah stood there wearing a smile on his face. Hey there Mr. Cambridge Constantine. How's married life? With a grunt, I turned away from him. Traitor. It was hard for me to care much for the men who were supposed to be my friends. No true friend would do what they'd done. He came in behind me, closing the door. You didn't feel that way when we were at the chapel, and you asked me if I would be your witness. I wasn't quite myself, Noah. It was hard for me to understand why no one was thinking about that little fact. None of us were. But what's done is done. He went to the mini-fridge and got himself a beer. Mind if I take one of yours? We're all out in our room. Drink up. I flopped down on the sofa. So, you coming out tonight? He took a seat in the chair closest to me. I mean, you're already dressed to kill. Why not join us for some fun at the gaming tables? We're thinking about getting in on a poker game later. 
I am just not feeling it. Imagine that. Adele told me about what you want. Did she tell you how she won't agree to it? Nodding, he took a drink. You should hold off on making any decisions right now, Maxim. You should have given me that advice when I said I was getting married. I'm not sure that's true. You two had some major sparks. She told us that you guys watched the video. Did you see how you looked at her? Because I saw it. And I know that drunk or not, you've never looked at anyone that way. So? So? Yeah, so? Who cares? It felt like I was the only one who clearly understood that I had not been in my right mind when I married Adele. Well, Adele cares for one. He took another drink before adding, and you should care too. How often do you think something like what you two found last night comes along? Do you mean how often do two people get drunk and think they're in love? Lots of times. You can literally go out to the club tonight and find one or more people who are finding the same damn thing. But not all of them are going to get married. Most of them will wake up in the morning in bed together after a wild night and be able to walk away from each other that same afternoon. Why would you want to walk away from Adele? I didn't want to walk away from her entirely. But I didn't want to be bound to her either. Noah, come on. Think about it. Put yourself in my shoes. You were with Coco. Right. His eyes brightened just hearing her name. Yeah, I was. It was great. Bet you felt like you two were in love, huh? Sort of. I mean, I knew there was no way we could possibly be in love already, but it was damn close. Too bad I live across the country from her. But you live very close to Adele. It's like only a half hour or so between you two. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to see her. She doesn't want to see me. It seemed to me that Adele hadn't told Coco and Noah everything. She said that she needs time to work on herself before she can date me, which is crazy since we're already married. Coco told me about her depression and why she struggled this past year. Did Adele tell you about her dead fiancé? Yes, she did. And it's a sad story. I looked at the ring on my finger and held it up. This was supposed to be his ring. But it's yours now. Be thankful. Coco said that Adele used to be like a shooting star. She had a great career that was moving forward before that guy died. And Coco said that Adele had a personality that drew people to her. I think if you give her the time that she says she needs, you'll be happy with the results. She can have all the time she needs. The only thing I want to rush is the annulment. I don't like the way this feels. You feeling tied down, bro? I shook my head. It wasn't about being tied down to one woman. I feel like I did something crazy and can't seem to get anyone to see that. With the exception of Callan, no one else thinks that getting married was the biggest mistake of my life. How do you know that it's the biggest mistake of your life? You haven't even been married for 24 hours yet. You know, now that you two are married, you could put her on your health insurance policy so that she could go see a shrink to help her get better faster. You want me to pay for Adele to get over her depression. You are her husband, and you do have excellent health insurance. I think that it's the least you can do for her. You do want her to get mentally healthy, don't you? You do realize that if I go adding her to things like my insurance policies, it will only cement this marriage further, reducing any chance of an annulment to zilch, zero, nada. Maybe you should stop thinking about what you want and do what's best for the woman you married. He took another drink, and I felt like yanking the bottle out of his hand and beating him over the head with it. You are beyond frustrating, Noah. Getting up, I went to make myself something to drink. Why can't you be on my side about this? I am on your side. I think that dissolving this marriage would be a big mistake. One that you would end up regretting. You were hasty in getting married, you should think about why that was. Spinning around to face him I shouted, I have. He shook his head. And stop blaming it on the alcohol. Think about why you swept that girl off her feet and carried her to the nearest chapel. 
You didn't have to marry her to be with her. That was clear by the way you two were making out on the dance floor. You could have simply swept her off her feet and took her to your room. You didn't do that though. You declared your love for her over and over again, talked about your children together, and you married her. Steam had to have been coming out of my ears, as I was about to blow off my top. Gritting my teeth, I growled. I was not in my right mind when I did that. You were very coherent. Because of the illicit substance, which you took all on your own. No one slipped it to you without your knowledge, like with the roofie. But from what Tyler said, you had asked him to give you something to enhance you physically. So that shouldn't have been thought of as being slipped to you. You asked for it. Noah, I haven't had any alcohol in my system in a very long time. I know you guys drink on the regular. Maybe you were all fine. But I was not fine. I was plastered. No you weren't. I saw you Maxim. All your motor skills were functioning quite well. How could that be? Coco kept coming out of nowhere with drinks for both of us. So much that I lost count of them. Laughing he said, most of those had no alcohol inside. I stopped filling the short glass with a tiny bottle of Hennessy, as I thought I must have heard him wrong. Say again. Most of the drinks she brought to you too had no alcohol in them. And you think this because? Pouring in the remainder of the bottle, I took the glass and went back to my seat on the sofa. Because I was with her. Remember? He laughed again, as if that was so damn funny. I told her that you hadn't drank in a long time, and she said that Adele hadn't either. So I ordered the woman drinks, and she brought them to you. You had no alcohol at all, except for the shots. Everything you drank from the tall glasses was alcohol free. You're lying to me. There was no way I could believe him. I felt drunk. On her love. He smiled then took a drink. But not anything other than that. Why didn't the illicit substance make me super hyper if I hadn't been drunk when I took it? How hyper do you think a pinch of coke can make you? It was a tiny amount. I'm a doctor, Maxim. I wasn't going to let any of you guys ingest anything in dangerous amounts. You're telling me that I married Adele while I was sober. Yes, that's what I'm telling you. The reason neither of you can recall anything is due to the substances involved. Shaking my head, I couldn't believe I'd done that while sober. I'm sorry, Noah. I just can't believe you. There's no way I would do something that life-changing on a whim. That's not me. That's not who I am as a person. And yet you married Adele with such speed. Boggles the mind, doesn't it? Is that why you signed as my witness? Because you knew that I was sober and of sound mind? Yes. I wouldn't have done that if I didn't know for a fact that you were sober and had real feelings for Adele. Why are you just telling me about this now? Honestly, I've been all wrapped up in Coco. I just forgot about it until now. Mentally, I began adding up how many alcoholic beverages you'd had, and the non-alcoholic ones outnumber them. And I began thinking about how you didn't have impaired motor skills. Putting two and two together, I came to the conclusion that you weren't drunk. You were feeling good, but that was a pretty natural high. What about Adele? She said she was drunk too. On your love. Grinning at me he asked, still think you should rush ending this marriage? I do. Care to explain? This marriage doesn't feel right. Adele isn't ready for a relationship of any kind. How can we have a marriage when one of us needs time to heal from some very deep wounds? I don't see how being married will get in the way of her healing. What about me? Am I supposed to just wait? And for how long? Cocking one brow, he said, I don't recall you doing any dating in a good long while. Why would it matter whether you're married or not? What if Mrs. Wright comes along, but I can't be with her because I'm a married man? Do you think lightning will strike twice for you, Maxim? And in such rapid succession, too? He shook his head, wearing a solemn expression. No, sir. I do not see that happening. You never know. 
And just for shits and giggles, let's not say that lighting has struck at all, shall we? I have no idea if Adele is the one for me. I do not know her at all. We might even hate each other after spending an entire day together. Why not find that out before you end this marriage, he asked. I think you owe it to yourself. Get to know each other before you make any decisions that might affect your happiness. It's day one of this marriage, and I am anything but happy. How'd you wake up this morning? With a headache that could kill a bull. That's how I woke up this morning. Oh, and not knowing who I'd slept with. It was a pleasant surprise to find that it was Adele, and not a complete stranger. So, you were happy that it was Adele. See, you do like her. Yeah, I like her. Did you notice how I stress the word like? That's because it's not the same thing as love. Love is what two people have for each other before they get into a commitment like marriage. I mean, would you get into any sort of partnership at all without really knowing who you are partnering with? It's simple business, Noah. Marriage is not a business contract, Maxim. Isn't it though? I asked. You were just telling me how I should add Adele to my insurance policy. Isn't that sort of like business? Hey, he said with excitement. I just thought of something. As a married couple, you'll pay lower insurance rates. Even for your automobile insurance. That's a bonus. So, you think I should stay married so I can save a few bucks on insurance? I had to laugh. That's nuts. Call Adele. Spend some time together. Hang out. Get to know one another. What can it hurt? Pulling out my phone, I made the call. You're right. What can it hurt? It's not like I'm doing anything else anyway. I mean, at least not until the poker game starts. I've gotta spend a little time with Tanner before we leave tomorrow. The call went straight to voicemail. She forwarded my call. Let's go and see if they're in their room. Noah led the way, but when we knocked, there was no answer. I'm getting a bad feeling, I said. Noah just shook his head. Don't. I'm sure they're eating. Come on. But they weren't eating. We looked everywhere before going to the front desk. Hi, I'm looking for my wife. She was in room 428. Adele Constantine is her name. The lady clicked away on the keyboard, then shook her head. They checked out about an hour ago. Chapter 16 Adele Do you really think this is going to work, Adele? Coco asked as she drove us back home. I'd asked her to take me home, thinking that my leaving would jolt Maxim a bit. Trying to talk to him about giving this marriage a chance wasn't working. So I had to come up with another way to get him to see that we can't just end a marriage before it even has a chance to begin. And if this also doesn't work, then what? I have no idea. I'm a little worried that this is going to deepen your depression. Try not to worry. I'm a little upset about Maxim wanting an annulment, but I've got a lot of hope that he'll come around. Hope is good. You haven't had hope about anything in a while. She was right about that. I'm glad you made me come out to Vegas. It has opened my eyes to what I've been missing. Jacob really wouldn't have wanted me to stay miserable forever. And Maxim makes me laugh. Jacob never even tried to make me laugh. Who knew I liked funny boys? I'm just sort of sad that I didn't get to tell Noah goodbye. Call him, I suggested. Didn't get his number, she lamented. We live so far away from each other anyway. Long-distance relationships never work out. I've got Maxim blocked for now. Once I unblock him to see if he calls, I'll get No's number from him for you. That way, you can explain our hasty retreat to him. Maybe it's best not to talk to him. I really like him, and if I can't be with him, it's just going to bother me. We had a great time, so it's better if we just leave it at that. I'm sorry, Coco. I didn't even think about you when I said that I wanted to go home early. I have to stop being so selfish. It's okay. You have a lot on your mind. 
and having one more night with him would probably only be more torches for me when I had to leave him in the morning anyway. My main concern is about you. I'm not sure that playing mind games with Maxim is a good idea. I'm not playing a game. Same as you, I knew we had to part ways come tomorrow morning anyway. Thinking about what I was doing, I had to admit that there was a fair amount of playing around involved, though. Well, blocking his number was sort of a mind game, huh? And so was leaving without telling him anything. Call him. Let him know that we decided to go home early and that he can call you whenever he wants. But I don't want to hear him nagging me about getting an annulment. I knew that was childish on my part, but I didn't want to end the marriage. I want to prove to him that I'm not after his money. Oh, so he told you about that? After I overheard one of his friends shouting it out on the wedding video, he admitted to being afraid that I would take half of his stuff, which I would never do. Noah told me about Maxim's tech company. I'm sure he is worried that you could ruin that for him. He doesn't know you, Adele. Why wouldn't he be worried about that? I understand that. And that's exactly why I'm doing this. This way, he'll come to realize that I'm not a money grubber. Can't you just tell him that? I did. Obviously, he isn't sure whether he can believe me. But this way, he'll see that I am not after his money. Never was. Never will be. Still, being married to a millionaire is bound to affect you. If we ever get to be a real married couple, I'm sure it will. But not in a bad way. I'm going to work, Coco. I want my life back. Just because Maxim has money, doesn't mean I'm going to want to sit home and eat bonbons all day. She laughed. Yeah, I know you won't be doing that. If this doesn't work the way you hope it will, are you sure that you're not going to relapse? You mean go back into that dark hole I've been in for a year? I wasn't about to let myself slip back down there. I'm not saying that I can do it without help, but I've got you. I've got my family too. I still hadn't thought about how I would tell my parents that I'd gotten married. And that no, they could not meet their new son-in-law. Not yet anyway. Speaking of your family, how do you think they'll take this news? Yeah about that, I am not sure at all. Both of them are devout Catholics, so this won't be welcome news. Not that they'll be discriminatory about Maxim not being Catholic, but they won't like that he's already asking to end our marriage. As a therapist, I must tell you that most marriages that begin so impulsively do end. It's just so odd to me that Maxim switched gears on this thing. He was the one who wanted to marry you. And now, you're the one hanging on to the marriage while all he wants to do is let it go. I saw a light in him. And he turned something on inside of me. Even though I can't remember the way I felt when we made our vows in that video, I saw a look on my face that I had never seen before. I glowed and so did he. This might have come on fast and reckless, but I know there's something there between us. I can't say what it is exactly. It's almost as if we're old friends or something like that. That's how you two were acting. Like you had been together for years instead of only hours. I know it's completely unorthodox, and I wouldn't recommend doing something like that to anyone. But it seemed so right at the time. But now that Maxim is acting this way, I'm not so sure. You know that we also don't know a thing about him or his mental state. I know. It was hard to know what the right thing to do was. Maybe I should call him. Maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. Well, hang on a second, Coco began second-guessing herself. Maybe this will make Maxim miss you and wonder about you. That would be a good thing. But it is manipulative. Sometimes, manipulation is a necessary tactic. Tell me how you would feel if you went through with the annulment? Would you want to date Maxim? I had to think about it for a while. I wasn't sure what I would want to do if that happened. Is it wrong that I would be hurt if we ended this marriage? I mean, we hardly know each other. So it makes no sense to say that I would be affected like that. But still, I know that I would. 
and I don't know whether I would ever be able to trust him again. Do you trust him now? I honestly don't know. Then why would it matter either way? I'm just playing devil's advocate here, helping you explore both sides of this equation. So you want me to think like Maxim? Sure, why not? He's worried and afraid that you will take half of everything he's worked hard for. He wants to end this marriage, a thing he believes is a mistake. You told me that he's not saying that he wants to end things with you. Just the marriage. At least he's been honest with you. And I have been honest with him. So, if you were thinking the way he is, how would ending the marriage make him feel? Relieved, obviously. I wouldn't feel that way at all, though. I would have some serious issues about breaking one of the cardinal rules of my faith. But there's more than that. I honestly believe that fate stepped in, and that is why we found each other. Is that silly of me? Who knows why two people find each other? She smiled at me, then winked. For all we know, Jacob stepped into Maxim's body for a bit and made it so that you married him quickly and in such a hurry. Maxim is nothing like Jacob. I looked up to say a few words to my late fiancé. I loved you, Jacob. But you and Maxim are worlds apart. Maxim makes me smile and laugh, and when he touched me, the parts one can remember, he lit my flesh on fire. I really wish I could remember our night of passion. And I know it wasn't just from the substances. I bet you do. And while we're on the subject of substances, what do you know about Maxim's use of them? He did ask that Tyler guy to give him something, so is he an avid drug user? I don't think so. But I had no clue if that was the truth. Don't you think Noah would have told you if he was? What if Noah is a drug user, she asked. It's not like I know much about him, beyond that he's amazing in bed and a sports medicine doctor. Hell, they could all be addicts for all we know. They did bring a drug dealer with them to Vegas, after all. I had to consider that for a moment. I really should do some digging on Maxim. But I told him that I wouldn't do that. Then don't do that, she cautioned me. Earn his trust. If you have said something to him, stand by it. That's the only way you're going to make him see that you're the sort of person who says what you mean and mean what you say. Show him that your words can be trusted. I have always been that way before. She was right. I don't know why the idea even came to me. Because we're talking about things he could be into that are deal breakers for you. Speculation can bring up odd thoughts in the human mind. It's okay to have thoughts. It's another thing to act on them. I don't want to go down that slippery path. I'm not sure at all how to handle this. If we hadn't been together, I would probably agree with him that we moved too fast and shouldn't have gotten married. But we did sleep together. We consummated the marriage. In God's eyes, we are married. Okay, back to playing devil's advocate, she said. If you truly believe that, then you were married to every man you've ever slept with. She had a point. I think it's the idea of bringing God into it, prior to consummating the marriage, that makes it a binding commitment between ourselves and God. But I'm not entirely sure about that. Is there any way that you can take God out of this thing? I honestly don't have an answer for that. I don't think I can change the ideals I've had practically my whole life. What about the fact that you weren't married by a priest? What about the fact that you and Maxim didn't go through the couple's classes you were supposed to take before getting married? Those were things you felt that you had to do before entering into a marriage. And you didn't do them with Maxim, so are you actually married in God's eyes? Good question. It looked like I was going to have to make a visit to my church to get answers. It's been a very long time since I've gone to church. Then explain to me why you think that you have to stay married to Maxim or you'll go to hell. Do you think it's just something I've been told a lot, and that's why I think it's true? I had to consider whether that was a fact. That could be the case. You have to think about Maxim here and not only yourself. I just remembered about my aunt's marriage when she was still in her teens. Like 18 or 19, somewhere around that age. She married some guy, not Uncle Joe though. 
I'm not sure how long she was married to that guy, but they did get their marriage annulled, and a few years later she was able to marry Uncle Joe in the church. So what you're thinking can't be true. Otherwise, they would have thrown her out of the church. You're saying that she was with that other husband long enough for them to have most definitely slept together, but they still annulled the marriage? Yes, that is what I'm saying. You may have mixed some things up in your mind. So, if that is the case and the priest tells you that you can end this marriage and still not only go to heaven but you can even get married in the church in the future, what would you do? Good question. I had no idea what I would do if it came to that. The biggest part of me doesn't want to end the marriage. But I also don't want to upset Maxim this way or hurt him in any way. And I'm not even ready to date him. I need time. And what about him? What's he supposed to do? Not see anyone while he waits for you to get ready to date him. And then what? How long until you make this a real marriage? How long is he supposed to wait for you? You're right. I'm not being fair to him at all. I should give him what he wants. I'm just not sure I can do that though. Not yet. It doesn't feel right to do that right now. Is that unfair of me? I really didn't know. I'd spent so much time being by myself, shutting everyone out, that I wasn't sure I was even capable of making big decisions like this. Maybe if you tell Maxim that you will think about giving him what he wants, that would be best. I want to be sure before I tell him anything. Like you said, I need to say what I mean and mean what I say. I want to know that I will end this if I feel it would be best for us both. Right now, I don't believe that it would be. But things can change. Chapter 17 Maxim Day 31, I said as I called Adele's phone number, the way I'd done each day since she'd ghosted me. Let's see if you've unblocked me, wife. It rang instead of going straight to voicemail, the way it had 30 times before. Hello, Maxim. I hadn't been ready to hear her voice, and the shock that filled me left my body on pins and needles. Adele? You did call my phone so yes, it is me. How are you, Maxim? Startled. I wasn't sure what to say now that I had her on the phone. I figured I would go with the basics. How are you? I'm fine, actually. Really doing well. Good. I couldn't believe how great it was to hear her voice. I've missed you. I've missed you too. You have? I had thought that she was trying to forget I even existed. Yes I have. I've been seeing a therapist, and he's helping me get through things. He has? Yes Dr. Frank has been very helpful. I've even begun applying for jobs again, as a reporter. Is your company doing well? It is. Why do you ask? I knew she was going to go after my money. Because it's how people have conversations. They ask how things are going in their personal and business lives. It's a common thing to talk about, you know, she teased. But if you feel uncomfortable talking about that, then I won't ask you again. I felt a little bit like a J for being so rude. Sorry if I'm coming off like a jerk. Well, I guess I can't expect you to be all rainbows and butterflies after having you blocked for a month. And I shouldn't have said anything about your business. That is a sore spot with you, and I should have been more aware of that. That's okay, I reassured, though it was still something I didn't feel comfortable talking about. So I changed the subject. I've had a few breakthrough with memories of our night together, after the wedding. You know. And it has me wondering if we could maybe go out sometime. Like, are you ready for that? You've been able to remember more about that night? She sounded excited about that. Yeah, a little. Not much. But a few things. I dreamt of us, and honestly believed that the dreams had to have come from knowledge of what we'd really done. Um how can I say this without sounding like a super freak? What we did was steamy. Yeah not super freaky at all, she said with a laugh. I had the idea that it was pretty hot myself. Yeah. So, what do you say? 
Want to go eat dinner or lunch or whatever meal you feel like eating in the very near future? I really wanted to see her. I'd had no idea that talking to her would get me this pumped. I'm not sure about that yet, Maxim. My doctor says that I'm emotionally unstable, and that's why I agreed to marry you so quickly. So let's get unmarried and fix that mistake we made in Vegas. I hoped she would agree with me now that she was seeing a professional. Surely now she knew that it had been a very stupid thing for us to do. Disappointment filled her voice as she said, I see that you still feel the same way. You don't feel that way. I mean, you're seeing a shrink. Hasn't he told you that getting married to a stranger was a very bad idea? If he hadn't, then he wasn't much of a shrink. He doesn't tell me how to think. So no, he hasn't given me his opinion of our marriage. I don't think now is a good time for us to see each other. Whoa. I needed to slow things down. This got off track. Let's get back on track. I miss you. You miss me. Let's talk about what we can do to rectify that situation. Maxim, doesn't missing each other tell you something, she asked. It tells me that we had a great time together, and that we'd like to have more great times together. We didn't need to be married to do that. I wasn't about to say that to her though, because she was obviously still on the sensitive side about ending the marriage. You're not ready for that, she said like it was a matter of fact. Yes I am. I'm more than ready for that. If you had the dreams I've been having, you would be ready for that too. What kinds of dreams have you been having? She sounded very intrigued. Steamy ones starring you. Really? Really? In these dreams, are we married? Get off the marriage thing please, for the love of all that's holy. Not sure. Not much talking going on in these dreams. Lots of kissing. Your nails running across my body so many times I lost count. And you know for a fact that part really happened for us. I've still got remnants of them. You bad girl. Coco has told me that you and I weren't drunk the way we had thought we were. That makes a difference in my opinion. How? We weren't making drunk decisions. That's what I'm saying. We were uninhibited, but that was mostly because of our attraction and connection, not alcohol. Noah told me about that too. I do recall how I felt when we were dancing. I was intoxicated. My head was light. My mind ran free as a bird too. That's not the real me. I wasn't the me I'd been either. I wasn't the me I was before Jacob died, and I fell into that dark well of depression I wasn't sure I ever wanted to come out of. I was someone else when I was with you. I liked the way that felt too. You made me feel good about myself and about my future. That can't be a mistake. I wasn't ready for this. She was right about that. You know Adele, I've never been depressed. So I can't tell you that I understand what you've been through or felt. I just know that I had a great time with you. I know that we had lots of fun in more ways than one. I wanted to spend time with you. I wanted to get to know you better. That's all I was aiming for. You know, like normal getting to know each other as relationships usually go. I want that as well. But what I don't want is to be pestered about dissolving this marriage. It happened for a reason. We might not know what the reason was, but there was most definitely a reason. The reason was that we were foolish. Why can't you see that? Why can't you find the positive in this situation, instead of only seeing the negative? Can you explain to me what positive points there are in two strangers getting married? She was quiet for a minute then said, I find it positive that I'm connected to you now. A permanent bond that no one can break apart from you or me. We're not really connected, Adele. That piece of paper isn't magic. We're still two people who don't really know each other. I'd like to fix that. Have you told your family about me? No. I wasn't going to tell my parents about the idiot thing I did in Vegas. Have you? I have. Tell me what they think about this. My father thinks you're just afraid. He's right about that. 
I am afraid. I'm not ready to be married. I'm not ready to live my life with anyone. Not just you, anyone. I just turned 30 a few months ago. You're 30, she asked, sounding surprised. Yeah. That's old enough to get married. Why do you say it like that? I'm 28. I was 25 when I got engaged to Jacob. I don't think of myself as some kid who's not ready to grow up. Is that how you see yourself? No, I don't see myself as a kid. But I don't see myself as super grown up either. I like to play video games. Like a lot. And I like to watch certain cartoons too, and I read comic books. Now you tell me, if you and I were living together, would those things bother you? Hesitating she finally answered, sort of. Okay. But only sort of. I think that if I was around, you wouldn't want to do those things as much as you do now. I go to every comic con in the Bay Area. And I dress up like different video game or cartoon characters whenever I go. You do not, she said with a laugh. I do too. Want to know why my body is so damn buff? I assume that it is because you work out. I've been working out for about a year and a half. Want to know why that is? Because you want to have a smoking body. Not exactly. I bought a Batman costume. When I put it on, I looked sort of flabby and gross. So, I put the costume away, and swore to myself that I would get into prime condition before putting it on again. The muscles are for the costume. See what I'm saying? I'm not a kid, but I'm not exactly a grown-up either. You really only got your body in such good shape so that you could prance around in a silly costume at some silly convention. That's right. Only I don't consider it prancing around, and I definitely don't consider them silly conventions. I value my privacy so that I can be myself without some girl laughing at me or calling me a dork. I'm a dork. I know that about myself. I don't need anyone pointing it out for me. You're not a dork. She laughed. You're like Peter Pan. You never want to grow up. That's what it sounds like to me. Besides, what else should I expect out of a man who created his own tech company and made it super successful? I like you just the way you are. And when you see me wearing tights and a cape, then what? I knew she would laugh her butt off at me, and that would either crush me or piss me off. She burst into laughter, and I assumed she must have pictured me wearing those things in her mind. You've got to stop, Maxim. You're killing me. You in tights and a cape. Ha. Huh. Do you think I want to live with someone who's going to be laughing at me every time I turn around? If you don't want to be laughed at, then why do you wear stuff like that in the first place? Isn't that the idea, to make people laugh? No. That's not the idea at all. The idea is to have fun. The idea is to live a fantasy for a little while. Get out of my own head. Pretend to be something that no real human can ever be. That sounds kind of fun in a crazy way. It is fun. I've got an entire wall full of pictures I've taken with all sorts of superhero actors, writers who created some of the world's most fascinating series, and comic book writers as well. I dare you to come see them, and still think that I'm marriage material. Maxim, do you think I wouldn't care about you just because you like comics? Because that's not the case. I think you're fun and funny. I've never had a funny man in my life. Being with you was very different. A good different. It was different being with you too, Adele. I liked the way we were together. And I'd like to be able to be together a lot more. Maybe you can come with me to the next comic book convention and see if you think it's as fun as I do. Or maybe I could come with you to do whatever you think is fun. I had no idea what that would be. What is fun to you? I've never really done fun. I've worked a lot. I've been a rather serious person most of my life. Like most people, I do enjoy a good laugh. I'm not against having fun. I just haven't ever really thought about doing something just for fun. Maybe that's why we would be good for each other. 
I could add some seriousness to your life, and you could add some fun to mine. Well, let's give that a try and find out if it's something we both like. Let's date Adele. Let's do it right, though. Right? She asked. Yeah, right. Let's date the right way. You know, without the pressure of marriage hanging over our heads. I see, she said tersely. You want to end our marriage so we can date and see where things go from there. You want to see if you want to keep spending time with me or not. She'd summed it up perfectly. That's right. Let's see where this thing can go without assuming it will end up in holy matrimony. But it has already ended up there, she said with a matter of fact tone to her voice. I find it interesting that the first time you contact me, you try to manipulate me. Hang on, Adele. This may be the first time I've contacted you, but it's not the first time I've tried to do that. I've called you once a day ever since you left Vegas without saying a word to me. You blocked my number too. I could have tried calling you off some other phone, but I didn't want to be that sneaky. If we're going to keep tabs on the manipulations, you started them. First, you ghosted me, and that is one of the biggest manipulation tricks in the book. What else was I supposed to do, Maxim? All you wanted to talk about was ending the marriage. I didn't want to talk about that anymore, and I still don't. What's done is done. I think it was fate that brought us together. Spitting in fate's face isn't a thing I want to do. Also, I don't think our marriage license is what connects us. I think it's the vows that we made to each other that do that. And I will stand by mine. Even though I'm not willing to stand by mine? My hope is that one day, you will see that this was meant to be, and stop trying to deny the fact that you wanted this marriage. I'll be right here when you come to your senses. Until then, don't bother contacting me. I'm sorry for manipulating you, and I refuse to let you do that to me. From now on, you'll only get honesty from me. I had to try one last thing. What if I give you a million dollars to end this marriage? I hadn't wanted to play that card, but there it was. She didn't even hesitate. There is no amount of money that will make me end our marriage. Think about that fact long and hard, Maxim. I hope to hear from you in the future. And the next time you call, please speak to me from your heart and leave the fear far behind you. I will accept you for who you are. You have my word on that. Goodbye. She hung up, but I sat there holding my phone to my ear, dumbfounded. Had she really just turned down a million bucks? Who does that? Chapter 18 Adele Three months to the day of marrying Maxim, I ran my hand over the bump of my stomach. Time to see a doctor about you, little munchkin. I'd put off going to the doctor about the pregnancy until I had hit the third month marker. My mother advised me to wait until then to be sure the pregnancy stuck. In the meantime, I'd be avidly browsing pregnancy forums online, making sure I was taking all the right prenatal vitamins to keep me and the baby healthy. You're on in three minutes, Adele, the cameraman told me. The local station I'd worked at before Jacob's death had given me my old job back. I was about to do a remote report about an area of Oakland that had become a dumping ground for some reason. Thanks, Paul. It was my first on-air report. I'd been mostly writing for the anchors, not ready to be back on television yet. But now that the baby bump was showing a bit, I felt like I needed to be more proactive in my life. I wanted to be the best influence for my child that I could possibly be. You ready, Adele? He asked. Ready? I brought the microphone close to my mouth. Five, four, three, he said, then held up two fingers, then one, then made a fist. That was my cue to begin my report. Hi, Adele Cambridge Constantine here, reporting from an area just south of downtown Oakland. As you can see, some of our citizens have begun dumping their trash, old furniture, broken bicycles, and anything else they no longer want around their homes right here in this vacant field. But this is not a legal dumping ground, the city says. The homes and businesses within a two-mile radius of this area have complained of rodents and insects that had not previously been an issue. They blame this dump for it. 
The city has agreed to clean this mess up, but wants it known that if anyone is caught dumping in this area again, fines will be issued. If multiple fines are issues, it could cost them their freedom as well, putting them behind bars for up to five years. In other words, don't dump your stuff in unauthorized areas or it will cost you dearly. Back to you at the desk, Mike. Clear, Paul said. Thanks, Paul. That went well, don't you think? I do think so. Let's get out of here. It reeks? I agree. Getting back into the news van, I took the passenger seat as Paul drove us back to the station. He looked at me with a smile on his face. I noticed that you used your married name, Adele. I didn't know you were going to do that. Well, I thought it would be the smart thing to do. Running my hand over the baby bump, I went on. With the pregnancy showing now, I thought the public might as well know that I got married while I've been away from the spotlight. And when are we going to get to meet this husband of yours? he asked. I hadn't given any details about my unusual marriage to the people I worked with. He's a busy man. He owns a tech company. Oh yeah? Which one? The fact that I didn't know the name of my husband's company bothered me. Well, that is a good question. Unfortunately, one that I didn't have an answer for. He's very private, so I'm not sure he'd want me talking about it. I see. He pulled up at the station. Will he be at this year's Christmas party? I'm sure he'll try his best to be there. I had no idea if Maxim would be there or not. It was still a month away, so there was a slight chance he might be back in my life by then. I had kept up hope that he would stop being afraid and begin to see that this was fate. Later, after work, I went home and made myself a cup of warm tea, adding some honey to it before calling my mother. She picked up on the first ring. I saw you on television. You did great, honey. Thanks, Mom. It was good to get back at it. Writing for the anchors has been good, but I really like doing live reports. I notice my grandbaby is beginning to show too. Yes, he or she is beginning to show. In the morning, I'm going to call and make an appointment with that doctor you told me about. I'm excited about starting the appointments. It's an exciting time for you. Would you like me to go with you? She asked. Or better yet, you might think about calling the father to see if he wants to be there. I'm waiting for him to call me. You could call him. I think you should. He should know about the baby. Now that it's been three months and the pregnancy has stuck, he should know about it. Who knows, maybe the baby will bring you two together. Mom, I don't want him to be with me just because we're having a baby. Well, you expect him to be with you just because you two got married, so I don't see much difference. Plus, I think he needs to know that he's going to be a father. I don't really expect him to be with me because we got married. I would like us to be together, but I don't expect it. There was a difference. If neither one of you will put forth any effort, how do you think things will ever change? She asked. It was a plausible question, so I answered, I'm giving him time to think. How much time are you going to give him? As much time as he needs. I'm not going to rush him. I have faith that he'll come around. What if a year goes by without him coming around? Then what? What if the baby is born and he still hasn't come around? You have more than just yourself to think about now, Adele. I noticed that you used your new married name when you gave that report. What do the people you work with think about this marriage of yours? They don't know the specifics. I grabbed a pen and the pad of paper that I kept on the coffee table and jotted down a reminder to look up the name of Maxim's company. My cameraman asked me the name of Maxim's company, and I didn't know it. I had promised Maxim not to snoop about him, but I'm going to have to do a little snooping. Otherwise, I'm going to look like a fool when people ask about normal things a wife should know about her husband. Don't go snooping around. Just call the man up and ask him yourself. Mom, I don't want to call him. My mom sighed. Adele, you sound like a spoiled teenager. You are a grown woman who is in the middle of a strange situation, but you need to start acting like an adult here. 
for you and the baby. So don't snoop. If you told him that you wouldn't, then stand by your word. Her words hurt, but I knew there was truth to them. This is just really hard, Mom. I've never been in this kind of predicament before. Heck, I doubt many people have been. It's hard to know what the right thing to do is. Then I will tell you what the right thing to do is. Call your husband and ask him for the name of his company. Ask him about his birthday. Ask him the names of his parents and tell him those things about yourself too. And then tell him that you two are having a baby. I hear what you're saying and I know that you believe that's the right thing to do. But I don't right now. I heard a beep on the phone and looked to find that Maxim was calling me. Oh my gosh, mom. He's calling me. I'll call you back. Tell him about the baby, she said one more time before I took the other call. Maxim, how are you? Adele, is there anything you'd like to tell me? I miss you. I've thought about you every day. I've wondered what you've been thinking. Nothing has changed if that's what you're wondering about. I still do not want to be married to you or anyone. My heart sank. Oh, I see. Is there any other reason that you won't give me an annulment other than the vows you made? He asked in a tense tone. Maxim, why do you sound angry? Because I am angry, Adele. It's been two months since we last spoke. It's been three months since Vegas and still, you won't end this mistake of a marriage. I want this to end. Unless there is some reason why it can't. Maybe I should just let him have the annulment. It was obvious that he didn't want me. Maxim, is there no chance for us? I'm not saying that. I like you. I'm not sure why you want to stay in a marriage that's not even real, but I still like you and I care about you too. I think about you all the time. I miss you like I've never missed anyone in my life. Then stop doing this. With time, we can have a real marriage. But you have to want it too. I don't want a marriage. I want us to date. I want us to do normal shit. This isn't normal at all. Aren't you tired of this? Aren't you ready to move on from the huge mistake we made? You might think of this marriage as a mistake, but I don't. Yes, I know. You think it was fate. But it's not fate. It's a mistake and mistakes need correcting. That's what we need to do. I'm tired of living with this hanging over my head. What exactly is hanging over your head, Maxim? I truly wanted to know. You want me to say it, don't you? Yes, I do want to hear you say it. He huffed, sounding aggravated as he said, every time I get a phone call from a number I don't recognize, I get sick to my stomach that it's some lawyer you've hired to take half my shit. Well, that's not going to happen, so stop thinking that it will. What do I need to do to make you understand that I'm not after your money? I'm working now. I don't even need your money. No one needs millions of dollars. They just end up wanting it. You can't tell me that you're some angel who isn't going to want money. I don't believe it. You should believe it. I'm not an angel, but I don't want your money. Not even one penny of it. You've worked hard for what you have. I don't consider what you have as mine at all. If the tables were turned and I was the one with lots of money, would you want to take half of it away from me? I don't know. I'm not in that position. I would hope not, but who knows? I am just a human after all, and so are you. You ask me what you could do to make me understand that you're not going to take my money. You can agree to an annulment is what you can do. Sorry, no. Sorry? He laughed hysterically and sounded crazy as he added, You're so not sorry, Adele. If you were sorry, you would let me fix this. You would let this marriage thing go. We can be together. We can have fun if that's what you want. We don't have to be glued together by a damn piece of paper that makes me vulnerable. I am begging you. Please let this end already so we can move on from here. His words made me pause for a moment. But ultimately, I knew they were coming from a place of fear. You have nothing to be afraid of, Maxim. You're making yourself crazy with this fear that you have. 
I don't even think the fear is about your money at all. I think you just fear commitment. I've never been in a committed relationship. I've dated casually, but never committed myself to anyone. I've never even asked anyone I've dated to stop seeing other people. I have no idea why I asked you to marry me. I have no idea what got into me. And don't you say that it was fate either, if you do, I'm going to scream, he yelled. You're already screaming, Maxim, and there's no reason for it. I have to scream, because I feel like you're not listening to me. I want out, Adele. I want this over. You must love commitment. You probably would have given up your life for that guy you were going to marry. You went into a deep depression when you no longer had a commitment you could hang on to. Think about that. Sitting there, I did think about what he was saying. I had felt very comfortable when I was engaged to Jacob. A certain security came along with knowing that, one day, he and I would get married and have a family. Maxim, you might be right about that. I what? You might be right. I should think about that. You agree with me that you need a commitment in order to be happy? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I should think about that. What if I'm holding on to this marriage only because it makes me feel secure in some way? That's not what I want. I want to stay married because I believe it's the right thing to do. But you might be right. I might just need the security of it. I might need the connection it gives me to you. I ran my hand over the baby I carried and wondered if I should tell him about it. I'm going to let you think about that then, he said. I'll give you some time to do that. You can call me if you want to talk. I do care about you. But I don't love you. And a marriage should be about love. Since I'd found out that I was pregnant, I'd fallen in love with the baby inside of me. I knew love could be spontaneous and still be very real. You're right. It should be. Without love, how can we get through all the tough challenges life will throw at us? So you agree with me? He asked, sounding hopeful. You might want to end this mistake too. I knew one thing for certain. God does not make mistakes, Maxim. I'll think about things and give you a call when I've made up my mind. Well, that call hadn't gone at all how I'd expected. But it certainly gave me a lot to think about, like if staying married was the wrong thing to do after all. Chapter 19 Maxim A few days had passed since I'd seen Adele on television. The obvious bump underneath her shirt had me wondering whether she might be pregnant. Surely she would have told me if she were, right? But when I'd called her to see if there was anything that she wanted to tell me, she didn't mention a thing about a baby. All she had wanted to talk about was our marriage. I'd been waiting for days for her to call me back, but she still hadn't done that yet. So, I called my friend Callan to see what he thought about it all. He answered my call, Hi Maxim, how are things? Most things are going well. However, the marriage thing is not. You're kidding me. You haven't gotten that annulled yet. She won't agree to it. Hire a lawyer to deal with her then, he advised me. It's been what? Three months? You can't wait much longer, or you'll have to get a full-fledged divorce. And that could cost you more than just the lawyer fees. I know. But what I wanted to talk to you about is something else. She's a reporter for a local news station, and I saw her on television a few days ago. She's sporting a baby bump. Shit, this is bad. Hang on. I'm not sure it's mine. See, I called her and asked her if she had anything to tell me. She didn't say a word about her pregnancy. So, I'm wondering what I could do if she's gotten herself pregnant by another man. You should just come out and ask her about the baby and whose it is. If she says it's someone else's, then demand the annulment. See, that's what I was thinking too. If she tells me that it's not mine, then I have every right to not want to be married to her. It wouldn't even be fair to me if she wanted to stay married while she's carrying another guy's baby. Has she asked you for any money? No. 
she said that she doesn't want my money. I even offered her a million dollars to end the marriage, but she refused it. Wow. That's what I thought too. She really wants this marriage. Well, she did. I filled him in on our earlier conversation, about how I thought she might just be looking for commitment, about her past with her fiancé, and why she was in Vegas in the first place. So, it seems like she came out of that depression rather miraculously after marrying me. She's back working, looks great, and the dark days seem to be behind her. I think that's only because she's gotten herself into another committed relationship. Have you two been spending any time together? Enough to make her think that the relationship she's in is real. Not a single minute. We've only talked over the phone twice. So maybe you're right. She is obviously happy just being in a marriage without any husband being around. But maybe she's not alone. Since she's pregnant, she might have a boyfriend now. She might. That idea actually bothered me. Is it wrong that I feel jealous about her being with someone else? Yeah. You don't need to be thinking about her if you want to end this marriage. You don't need to worry about who she's with if you want this to be over. But I do think about her a hell of a lot. So, you want to be with her? He sounded confused, and I couldn't blame him. I was confused too. I did. I'm not sure now that I think she might be carrying another man's baby. If you want to be with her, then why do you want to end the marriage? I don't understand. Pinching the bridge of my nose, I tried to think of how to explain it. Truth was, I didn't understand either. The whole being married thing is getting in my way. I don't want to be bound to her. I want to date her. I hate to say this, but you should have thought about that before you married her. He was right. I know it sounds stupid. But it is what it is. I hate that phrase. It's not even accurate. It is what you make it. Nothing just is what it is and something that you need to accept. You have free will. You can change your mind too. Search your heart to find the answer that's best for you, Maxim. My question to you is this, if she is carrying your baby and didn't tell you about it when you gave her the chance, how will you feel about her then? I got pretty damn heated when I saw her on television with that baby bump. I was sure it was mine at first. But after I gave her the chance to tell me about it, and she didn't bring it up at all, I began to think that it's not mine, and maybe that's why she didn't bother to bring it up. So, you would be mad if she's trying to hide this from you. That's what you're saying, right? Callan, I have never even given a thought to becoming a father. But I've got to be honest with you. When I saw that little bump, my heart sped up, and not just because I was angry that she hadn't told me about it. It sped up because I was happy. I can't explain why I felt that way, but I did. Since I wasn't around to see you two in action that night, I can only tell you what I saw when you showed me the wedding video. You looked at her like a man who was hopelessly in love. I know because that's how I look at my wife even still. Is it even possible that I fell in love with Adele within a matter of hours? I didn't think that could be possible. Love is crazy, man. I'm here to tell you that. It'll make you do stupid shit too. Like getting married to a stranger. But love is real and solid, he informed me. Maxim, being a father is an amazing experience. So is being a husband. If you want to see this woman romantically, you should think about why you want that. You should think about why you need to make sure you're not married, if you're just going to pursue her anyway. Where do you think adult, loving relationships end up anyway? At the altar. I asked but I knew the answer. You bet they do. So, you think I need to stay married to her and start seeing her? I'm not trying to decide for you. I just think you should stop fighting over the annulment if you want to see this woman. Leave the marriage in place for now. See where this thing goes. If it doesn't work out, then get a divorce. It's not like you can't afford it. You know, maybe this woman isn't lying to you about not wanting your money. Even if she's pregnant by some other man, 
she could have lied and used the pregnancy to already get loads of money out of you. She's not doing that. Maybe she's one of the good ones. Maybe she is. I had to admit that Adele hadn't done any of the things I had been worried about. She hadn't hired a lawyer. She hadn't asked me for money. She didn't take the money I offered her either. Maybe I've been wrong. Everything hinges on whether this baby is yours or not. No matter what she tells you, you're going to need to have a paternity test done. I suggest you stay married to her until you know for sure if you're the father of that baby or not. That would mean I would need to let her know that I no longer want to end the marriage. Although that sort of terrified me, I knew I had to do it. But I wanted to tell her in person. I wanted her to tell me about the baby in person. I've got to try and see if I can find out her address. I need to do all of this face to face. I think that's best too. You'll be able to get a much better vibe from her if you're with her when you're talking. Like, if that baby is yours, or at least she tells you it is, then you probably get her to live with you so that you can be a part of the pregnancy. And you'll want to make sure she's taken care of while carrying your baby too. If it is yours. Like I know how to take care of anyone. I wasn't good at things like that. Callan, I'm not that guy. I'm not super thoughtful. I don't know the first thing about what pregnant women want or even need. I've got to go see Adele. I've got to talk to her. You've made me see that I've been having issues that I need to start controlling. No more it is what it is and more it is what you make it. I like that one better anyway. It feels like I have more control when I say that. You always have control. The ability to say yes or no is always yours and yours alone. So go say yes or go say no, but do something. Don't keep waiting for her to call or for what you feel is the right moment to call her. Go to her and start something real. Whatever it is. Or don't. That's all up to you. What would you do? I trusted my old friend. I knew he would steer me in the right direction. Honestly, I would probably be as wishy-washy as you've been. You sort of ran before you could even get a chance to crawl. You two have missed a lot of steps. And once you're running, it's impossible to push yourself back to the crawling stage. So, you're going to have to keep on running. That's what I would do. I would keep on running with her, if that's the way we had started things. It's always good talking to you, Cowan. Give my best to the wife and kiddos. I'll let you know how things turn out. Once I find that out for myself. You do that. And good luck. I hope you're going to be a father. I really do. You're a fun guy. You'll make an awesome father. Do you really think so? I'm sort of still a kid myself. It doesn't matter what sort of person you are. You can be the best dad for your kid. That kid will have your DNA. Remember that. They're a lot more like you than you would ever believe. Just don't worry and do your best. That's all you can do. Great advice as always, Callan. Catch ya later, dude. Bye, Maxim. Ending the call, I opened the internet and searched Adele Constantine in Oakland, California, and her picture popped right up. A little more digging, and I found more information on her, including a Facebook account. So I looked that up and found that her phone number and address were right there too. Checking the time, I saw that it was almost 10 at night. Knowing that was kind of on the late side, I wondered if I should wait until the next day. Hell no. I'd already let too much time pass without seeing her. I needed to go to her and tell her that I'd been, I'd been focusing on the wrong things. We'd found something. Everything told me that. I'd just been afraid. And Adele was right. I hadn't really been afraid of her taking half my stuff. I'd been afraid of the commitment we had made to each other. Maybe rushing into marriage was the only way I was ever going to get into one in the first place. Like when you can't seem to get into a cold lake, and you just have to jump in and get that shock of cold over with so you can move on to having fun. I went to clean myself up a bit before heading to her place. Looking in the mirror, 
I realized that I'd let my beard grow back, and my hair was longer than it had been. I wasn't quite the dapper-looking dude she'd married. I had on khaki pants and a white polo shirt with red sneakers. I looked nowhere near the guy she'd fallen for. Standing there, I looked at the unused razor next to the sink and thought about using it. Instead I looked at my reflection and said, this is who you really are. Don't try to fancy yourself up for anyone. If she truly likes me for who I am and not what I represented, then she's a keeper. If not then she's not the girl for me. I hadn't worn any of the suits I'd bought while in Vegas. They'd come back from the cleaners and hung in a section of my closet that I hadn't even looked at since I got back. Suits and ties just weren't me. I knew I couldn't pretend with her, or this would never work. Not that I was sure it was going to work anyway. Heading out to the garage, butterflies swarmed inside my stomach as I tried to prepare myself to see Adele again. And this time, I was going to look like the man I really was. I passed another mirror by the door that led to the garage and gave myself another look. A little scruffy but not too much. I ran my hand through my hair. Hair still on the short side. Shaking my head, I walked away from the mirror. I had to let her see who I really was. Gosh, I hope she likes the real me. Chapter 20 Adele After a shower, I wiped away all remnants of my makeup before throwing on a crop t-shirt and some comfy shorts to sleep in. Going to the kitchen to pour myself a glass of water and take it to bed with me, I heard the doorbell ring and stopped in the middle of the living room. It's like 10 at night. Who could that be? Going to the door, I looked through the peephole and found a man standing there. He was looking down, so I couldn't see his face. Who is it? He looked up, and I recognized him instantly, even with a thick beard covering his handsome face. Adele, it's me. Can I come in so we can talk? Maxim? I unlocked the door to let him inside. Why didn't you call first? As I stepped back to let him inside, I saw his eyes glued to my uncovered baby bump as the shirt did a terrible job at covering it. He stepped inside and then I closed the door. My heart raced, my thighs quivered, and something inside of me melted. Yet he only looked at my stomach and not my face as he asked, Is that mine? I didn't want to talk about the baby. Maxim, why are you here? Finally, his eyes met mine. You said you would call me back when you knew what you wanted to do. It's been three days. You had to have made some kind of decision by now. Well, I still haven't made any decisions about that yet. I have a session with my therapist the day after tomorrow. I want to talk to him about this issue I might have. He nodded his head slowly. You look great by the way, he said as his eyes scanned my body then rested on my eyes. Are you happy? I could be happier. But I am happy. I'm not depressed about anything anymore. Jacob wasn't meant to be my husband. It just wasn't written in the stars. You think our marriage was written in the stars? He asked with concern in his dark eyes. I'm not sure about where our marriage was written. Somewhere I suppose. But I'm not sure if it was supposed to start so early, or even at all. So, you're not going to say that fate played a part in us getting married? I'm not going to say that yet. I want to get a professional opinion, before I make any statements. Adele? You don't need a shrink to tell you how to think or feel. You're a smart woman. He laughed, pressing his hand to his chest. My heart is about to explode. I want to grab you and hold you, kiss you and hug you so bad, you have no idea. That's not a good idea. Even if I wanted the same thing. That's what got us into trouble in the first place, the almost instant attraction. A relationship can't be based on only that. You're right. There should be much more. Like trust for instance. He looked at my stomach again. Do you trust me, Adele? Should I? I had no idea how trustworthy he was. We don't know each other well enough to make those kinds of determinations. Do we? We do not, he agreed. Neither of us have a clue of the moral character of the other. 
that should be a deal breaker, shouldn't it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure of anything anymore. I can't seem to understand you. And that's not all. I can't seem to understand myself. It's like I'm unaware of who I really am anymore. I'm afraid of something but not sure what that is. Me too. I went to sit down. Please have a seat. I'd rather stand. I'm not feeling super comfortable right now. See, I've asked you a question that you have sidestepped, and that bothers me a hell of a lot. What we talk about should be based on us and nothing else. You have a fear of commitment, and I might have a fear of not being in a committed relationship. This may be a very bad pairing. Do you agree? You know, I'm not sure yet. Sometimes when two people are opposites, they even each other out. I've got an assistant at work who is my exact opposite. Because of that, he thinks in ways I don't. Together, we've come up with some great concepts. I also think it's impossible for two people to think exactly alike. I suppose that's true. I didn't like him standing when I was sitting. Please sit down and let's talk, Maxim. The question I've asked you is a very simple one. Why can't you just answer me? Because I want to talk about us. I want to know how you've been feeling about us. I feel like I want you. Okay. There you have it. I want you, Adele. And I'm not sure that ending our marriage is the right thing to do right now. And why is that? I put my hand on my stomach, hoping he wasn't basing things on what grew inside of it. He looked into my eyes. I've been thinking about who I am. I've never had a committed relationship in my life. Yet, I ran to that chapel to marry you. And it wasn't because I was plastered either. But I can't exactly figure out why I did that. And I can't figure out why you went along with it. Me neither. I think you can thank your friend Tyler for that. I still was very unhappy with that guy. I mean, I would have loved to have been able to remember my wedding and honeymoon. What person wouldn't want that? I couldn't even remember how our baby was conceived. That bothered me a hell of a lot. I liked the way you felt in my arms. I remember that. I liked your smile. I loved your laugh. And you're easy on the eyes too. As are you. I gestured to his beard. I like the beard too. And the tech geek uniform isn't bad either. Well. I am a tech geek, so this is pretty much what I wear all the time. He ran his hand over his beard. So you still like the way I look? Nodding I sighed. You're still as attractive as I remember. You too. He looked away. But a marriage can't be based on mutual attraction alone. Love is usually the glue that holds a marriage together. He nodded. Love is a big one. Do you think that it is possible to fall in love at first sight? I asked. No. Shrugging, I wasn't as sure as he was. Well, I'm not sure if it is or not. I didn't tell you this before, but I noticed you before you noticed me. His dark brows shot up high on his forehead. What? I did. I'm not saying that I instantly fell in love with you, or anything like that. But out of all the people who were around me, you stood out. And I have to wonder why that was. You were in a group of good-looking men. Why were you the only one to catch my eye? And why did I catch yours? You're freaking gorgeous, that's why you caught my eye. Was I the only girl who caught your eye, Maxim? Be honest. You won't hurt my feelings if you were looking at other prospects that night. His lips pulled up to one side as he thought about it. I can't say that anyone else did catch my eye. Once I spotted you, I couldn't seem to look at anyone else. And I was pretty sure you didn't even like me at first. But I kept on looking for you anyway. It wasn't until we met in the club that I realized that you did like me. Or I was the only guy who'd talk to you. He looked directly at me. Was I the only guy who talked to you? You were. He looked relieved. You were the only girl I talked to. There was this crazy chick who tried to grind on me when I was dancing through the club, looking for you. 
She was a total weirdo who came out of nowhere, trying to get all up on me. I hate when that happens. I laughed and realized something. You know what? I haven't laughed much until you showed up. Like in life. Yeah. And now too. I've been happy, but I haven't laughed a lot. What is it about you that makes me laugh? I'm sort of a funny guy sometimes. To me, you're almost always funny. It's the way you talk, I think. The way you explain things. I like it. I like you. Ah, but do you love me? Running my hand over our baby, I nodded. I think that I do love you. I think about you more than I don't. Same. That means something. You know that, right? I mean, I don't think about people to whom I don't feel a connection. I love my mom and dad, but they don't come to mind as often as you do, Maxim. That makes me feel pretty special. I should be honest and tell you that when I'm working on a project, you don't enter my mind at all. But that's just me and how focused I can get. But once that project is done, there you are, hovering around in my brain. I like your honesty, Maxim. It would be nice if you could be honest with me, Adele. He gestured to my stomach. You've got a bun in the oven, don't you? I am pregnant. So are we pregnant? The last time we talked, you wanted to end our marriage and now you're talking like that's no longer the case. I patted my stomach. Is this why you haven't asked for an annulment thus far? Throwing his hands in the air he asked, sounding aggravated, what do you want me to say? The truth of course. I talked to one of my closest friends before I decided to come over here to see you. He told me some things I hadn't thought of before. He said something about crawling before walking or running. And we started out running, bypassing the other things. So we can't go back to crawling then walking. We just have to keep running. And I don't mean running away from each other, like you did when you left Vegas without saying shit to me. You sound a little angry, Maxim. I am angry. I'm angry that you left Vegas. I'm angry that you blocked my number for a solid month. I'm angry that you won't tell me if I'm going to be a father or not. There's quite a bit to be angry about. Don't you think? What about me? Don't you think I've got things I could be angry about if I chose to go that route? My husband doesn't want to be married to me, but he'd love to go out and take me home to sleep together a few times without us having any commitment whatsoever. Adele, that's a really skewed way to look at it. You said that you want to see me without having anything binding us together. I think that is the only way to look at it. But I'm not mad at you for thinking that way. Even though, finally saying that out loud does make me wonder why I've been hanging on to something with someone who wants all the things that go with a committed relationship without really having one. I was afraid of being in a committed relationship. But now I'm thinking differently. I think that somewhere deep inside of me, I rushed to marry you because I knew that dating you the way I have dated everyone else would end with us drifting apart. And my subconscious didn't want to drift away from you. So it made me do something unlike anything I'd ever done before. What about you? Why do you think you married me? And please do not say fate. To be honest with you, I think it might have something to do with what you told me the other day when we talked. I think I might need to be in a committed relationship to be happy. He gave me a blank look. That's a load of crap, Adele. Were you always in committed relationships prior to your engagement? No. I was sort of a free spirit before Jacob came along. I didn't like to be tied down to one guy. But then I met Jacob, and he was so driven and played by the rules. He was a serious man. He went by the book, too. We dated for a year before he asked me to marry him. But the engagement was open-ended. We couldn't set a date because he never knew when he would get to come home. And then I found out that he was never going to come home again. I felt my throat closing and shook my head to keep the tears from coming. You married me before you could lose me, Adele. That's why you said yes. You might be right. 
it seems like we were sort of desperate to tie ourselves together. I hadn't ever thought of it like that. We both might have deeper issues than either of us even realized. This marriage might really be the giant mistake you've always said it was. His eyes went to my tummy. Or it might not have been a mistake at all. You might have been right all along. It might have been fate that stepped in and took over for us. He couldn't have just begun to believe that. It had to be the baby that had him wanting the marriage now. But I didn't want him to want to be with me, only because of the baby we'd made together. I want you to want me for me, Maxim. I want the same from you, Adele. Take me as I am or don't take me at all. I feel like the man you married wasn't really me. You mean because you were wearing a suit and had a clean-shaven face and new haircut? I had to laugh. Maxim, I liked your personality and the way you made me feel. Your touch took my breath away. That's one of the many reasons I wish I could remember last night. I bet it was the best time I've had in a long time. Me too. I've had dreams though. Spicy ones. I want to be with you, Adele. But why only now? I had to believe it was because of the baby I carried. I don't want to lie to you. It might be because I think that baby is mine. I saw you on television doing that report and noticed the baby bump. And what happened to me was nothing like anything I had ever experienced. I was elated to think that I was going to be a father. But then I was super pissed that you hadn't told me about it. And then I called you and asked you if you had anything to tell me and you didn't tell me about it. So I began to think that it was only because it's not mine. So I want to know if that baby is mine or not. What he'd said hurt me in a way I had never hurt before. He didn't want me. He wanted the baby. It's your baby. Now get out of my house. Are you insane? Getting up, I stormed through the living room and threw open the door. Get out of my house, Maxim. If you don't want me for me, then I don't want anything to do with you. I'll leave you off the birth certificate. I don't want anything from you. Not one damn dime. You can have the annulment you've been begging for. I don't want to be married to a man who only wants me because I'm going to have his baby. Now get out. Fine. He walked past me, pulling his wedding ring off and shoving it into my hand. Take this. I don't want it, if you're going to end this just when I'm ready to begin it. Pulling mine off, I held them both in the palm of my hand. I'll give them to this child when he or she finds someone to marry. I shouldn't have ever thought that you, a man I didn't know at all, would be worthy of something this special. Forget that you ever knew me. After he walked out, I slammed the door. Chapter 21 Maxim What the hell just happened? I'd left her home in a hurry, but as reality began hitting me, I slowed my pace. I'm going to be a father. I felt the smile on my entire face and even inside my heart. I am going to be a father. Congratulations, came a woman's voice from behind me. I turned around to find an older lady coming up behind me on the sidewalk. Thank you. Having your first child is always so special. It's a wonderful time in your life. Be sure to take in each precious moment and thoroughly enjoy every single thing about this adventure you're about to embark on. How many kids do you have? Me? She shook her head. I don't have any. Well, not anymore. I had three children, all boys. Unfortunately, they've all passed on before me. All of them were brave soldiers though. They fought for this country, and they died for this country. I lost them rather early on. My husband didn't live a year after our last son died. He just couldn't take all that pain. I'm so sorry to hear that. Man what a trooper you are. Living through all of that. Yes there were hard times. But what I hang on to are the good ones that we all had. There were more of those times than the bad ones. So you take my word for it, 
and be present for every little thing that's going to come your way. Children are a true blessing. And you never know how long you'll get to keep them. Enjoy that baby of yours. I've got to get into the house. Night. Night. And thank you for telling me all that. I'm taking your words to heart. I watched the stranger walk into her home, and suddenly it hit me like a ton of bricks. I couldn't let Adele end things. So, I headed right back to her front door and rang the bell. Adele, let me in. Go away, she yelled from behind the locked door. Adele, I'm not going away. I'm never going away. Now let me in. No. Pounding on the door I said, I'm serious. I'm not leaving you. I'm never leaving you. I've been wrong this whole time. My heart knows that now. I'm done being afraid, and you need to be done with that too. Who says that I'm afraid? Your actions say that. They're screaming that you're afraid that I don't love you, and only want the baby you're carrying. But that's not true. I can feel it now. I can admit it to myself and you now. I love. You. I really really do. Let me in. Please. I heard the door unlock and then it opened, but I didn't see her standing there. Easing through the door I found her standing behind it, hugging herself and shivering. Did you just say those words to get me to open the door, or did you really mean it when you said that you love me? I really mean it. Closing the door I reached out and took her by the shoulders, drawing her into my arms, hugging her, and rocking slowly with her. Now this is what I wanted to do when I first saw you. Hold you in my arms, inhale your sweet scent. I looked at her. Kiss your plump lips. You know where that will lead. I hope so. She gulped, and I saw fear in her pretty eyes. Does this mean we're going to stay married, and try to be a real couple? It does mean that. I don't want to date you, Adele. I want to be married to you. I want you and I to live together in my house. I want to take care of you and our baby. I want you to have everything and even more than that. I can give you and our baby the whole world if you guys want it. Let me be your husband in every way and I'll be the best father I can be. I've got my first doctor's appointment on Friday. Wanna come? I will be there. I'll be there for you through this entire pregnancy. And when the baby comes, you and I can both take care of him or her. I have never changed a diaper in my life, so you might need to teach me how to do that. I haven't done that either. I think we should take a parenting class. We should do that. We want to be experts on being parents by the time our little bundle of joy arrives. It'll be fun learning how to be parents together. I think so too. Wrapping her arms around my neck she went on. I'm sorry for what I said to you. You were right. I was afraid of you wanting to be with me, only because of the baby. My emotions have kind of been getting away from me. I think it's because of the pregnancy hormones. Thank you for the apology. I am also sorry for how I've been talking to you. It's kind of shitty what fear can make people say and do. I'm going to put that behind me and move on from here though. No more fear. I agree. No more fear. Her chest heaved as she sighed. But I still have issues that I need to deal with before I can be with you. That's just fear talking again Adele. We don't have to wait for you to be 100% back to yourself before we get this marriage really going. Being apart isn't going to work. We don't have to be apart for you to continue seeing your therapist. Plus, I want to be a part of this pregnancy. I can't be a part of it if I'm not around. I'll give you back massages. I hear pregnant women love those things. That actually sounds nice. But what if my depression comes back? What if I'm not really ready to live with anyone? You're going to have to live with this kid we're having anyway. Don't you think it would be much easier to share the responsibility of the baby with me, rather than trying to do it on your own? I'm sure it's going to be kind of hard if I do it alone. She looked into my eyes. And I do want this baby to have you in its life. He or she deserves a good father. 
I bet you're going to be the best dad ever too. I'm sure gonna try to be that. And I know you'll be the best mom ever. But we need to do this together. This is our marriage. I rested my hand on her baby bump. This is our baby. It's time to let me be a part of things. You can't be afraid of me or even of yourself. It's time Adele. Time to really become Mr. and Mrs. Cambridge Constantine. You really think now is the time to do this? She asked with a wary expression on her pretty face. We've just reconciled. You don't think this is rushing it? Of course, this is rushing it. That's what we do, baby. We rush to things. I promise you that once our baby gets here, we can slow down a bit. I want you home with me. I've got a pretty amazing home, you know. And since you're my wife, that makes it your home too. I've told you before that I don't consider your things as my things. Well, they are yours too. And not because it's the law or anything like that. I want to share my things with you. I want you to feel like you're a part of me, in every way imaginable. What's mine is yours. I want to keep working. Then keep working. I'm not trying to run your life for you. Just live with me. Love with me. Grow with me. Just be with me. I'm tired of living life alone. And we've got a nursery to put together too. I'll even put away my video games. It's not like I'll have time to play them anyway. Not with you around. And once the baby comes, then neither of us will have time for much else. No, you keep your video games. I don't want me and the baby to interfere that much in your life. There's nothing wrong with having a hobby. Think that if we have a boy, then I can buy him a Batman costume just like mine, and I'll get you a Catwoman costume, so that we could go to Comic-Con together as a family? I thought we'd look so freaking cute, if she was into the idea. Catwoman is really attractive, isn't she? She's pretty hot. Yeah. Just like you are. Think I'll be back in shape enough to pull off an outfit like that. I'm sure you'll bounce back like a champ. At my place, there's a home gym too. You can work out whenever you want to. If that's what you want to do. I don't care if you get plump. I'll still love you, no matter what kind of shape you're in. Her eyes began to shine as she smiled. You will? I promise you that I will love you forever, Adele. Do you think we can really make it, Maxim? Like stay married forever? Stay in love forever? I believe that we can most certainly make it forever. We rushed to get married for some reason. And we made a baby in record time too. The stars must have aligned perfectly for us. Let's not spit in fate's face. A very wise woman said that to me one time. I should have listened to her. Wise huh? Wise beautiful smart and all mine. I had no idea how much better I would feel with her in my arms. I shouldn't have waited so damn long to come to you. I don't want to wait any longer. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'll keep getting better and better, even if I'm not alone. Maybe I don't have to be in a committed relationship to be happy. But I feel very happy right now with you. And I don't want you to leave. I'll stay the night with you, if that's what you want. Tomorrow we can pack you up and take you to your new home. I wanted her with me, as much as we could possibly be together. Do you cook? Not very well. How about you? I am an order out kind of guy. We'll hire a chef. Our very own chef. Yeah. I've already got a housekeeper, so you won't have to clean. That'll free us up so we can spend more time doing other things together. I want to take you all over the world, too. I've always wanted to travel, but not alone. I've always wanted to travel, too. Maybe we're more alike than I thought we were. We both don't cook. Neither of us likes to clean. And we've always wanted to travel, too. I wonder what else we have in common. You know, I think we're really gonna like sleeping together. Something just tells me that we're going to have that in common, too. The dreams of being with her were things of the past now that I was going to get to be with her in real life. 
You're not afraid of my talons? She asked as she raked her nails across the front of my shirt. Mark me up, baby. I want to remember everything this time. You think we'll be as uninhibited as we were last time? I know I'm ravenous for you. I'm gonna taste every last inch of your sweet body, and I hope you want to taste every last inch of mine too. She laughed, and I loved the way it sounded. Something tells me tonight will be something to remember. The first time being together as husband and wife, that will remember, anyway. I scooped her up, not wanting to wait any longer. Point me to your bedroom, wife. First, carry me over there, she said, pointing at the coffee table. I want to put the ring back on your finger. Great idea. I carried her over, and she picked up the rings. Sitting on the sofa, I kept her on my lap. She handed me her ring, and I slid it onto her finger. With this ring I thee wed. She then put mine on my finger. Until death do us part. Pointing down the hallway she said, Take me to bed husband. Let us consummate this marriage and remember it this time. She leaned in close, her lips nearly touching mine. I've missed you more than I can express. As soon as her lips pressed against mine, fireworks went off inside of me. Passion came like an explosion. I barely made it to her bed before she had my shirt off and thrown across the room. Damn your gorgeous baby. Oh yeah, this is what it's all about right here. Chapter 22 Adele My nails dug into his back as I arched up to meet him with every move he made. I can't believe I could forget how this felt. My dreams were right on the money. I knew we had some serious heat between us. No wonder we ran to the altar. I've never felt this happy in my entire life. And I've got you to thank for it. I'm feeling very happy too. I think we're going to like doing life together, Mr. Cambridge Constantine. I agree, Mrs. Cambridge Constantine. His lips met mine. With our kiss growing deeper and more intimate, I lost myself in him. And things had never felt more right. I like this. Me too. He kissed the top of my head softly. It's easy being with you. It's easy being with you too, Maxim. For the first time, I honestly think that everything is going to work out. It will work out. You and I will make sure of that. Something told me that he was right. It would take both of us to make things work. Do you want the boy or a girl? Well, I do believe we've already named our kids. Jack is first, then comes George and Kate is going to be our last one, our baby girl. So you think they'll come in that order? I asked as I traced my finger over his chest. They have to come in that order, or it wouldn't have come to me the way it did. Fate must have been whispering in my ear that night. You know, like Cyrano de Bergerac. Fate told me what to say, what to do, and when to kiss you. Ah yes. With my eyes closed, I recalled the first kiss we'd ever had. I'm glad I can remember most of the things that happened at the club. That kiss was something else. It really was. I've never had one like it. Running his fingers up and down my arm, he sighed. And I will never have another first kiss with anyone else for the rest of my life. And neither will you. Does that scare you? It's the opposite of scary. It's more like a sense of security. Like I've kissed all the frogs I had to to find you. Giggling a little, I had the impression that my life would be full of laughter now that Maxim would be a permanent part of it. I had never imagined living this way. My life with Jacob would have been on the serious side. Laughter hadn't come often with him and it wouldn't have been a staple in our lives had he lived long enough for us to have a marriage. I'd been happy with that. I'd thought that was what I wanted. Until Maxim had come along and brought his unique character with him. A rare electricity charged the air around us even while we relaxed. We really had found something neither of us had known existed. A true love that I knew without any doubt at all would stand the test of time. Our love had been written in the stars a very long time ago. It was something I could feel deep inside of me, and knew it was true. When we woke the next morning, 
the first thing I felt was his arm tightening around me. Morning, wife. Good morning to you, husband. With a yawn and a stretch, we climbed out of bed and I led him to my shower. Allow me to shower you with my love. In we go then, he grinned as he picked me up and I wrapped my legs around him. The warm water poured over us as he took me to another world once more. I finally understood why people took a week for their honeymoon. The need was more than real, it was insistent. Somehow we managed to get cleaned up and dressed. I called into work, telling them I was going to take the day off to do some personal things. Maxim helped me pack my things then we went to his place, my new home. Floor-to-ceiling windows gave an excellent view of San Francisco Bay. This isn't just a home, Maxim. This is a palace. We like to call it a mansion, though. He took my hand, showing me around all the different rooms. I think this would be the perfect room to turn into a nursery. Our bedroom is right across the hallway. He opened the door, and there I found an odd chair with no legs sitting on the floor in front of a gigantic television. This is one of my gaming rooms. One of them? I asked with surprise. I've got five of them. So turning this one into our baby's nursery won't upset the balance at all. Draping his arm over my shoulders, he led me inside. There's only one window, so there's some natural light but not too much. I'm sure the baby will sleep a lot. It'll probably prefer dim lighting, right? Sounds good to me. I think this room makes the most sense. Ready to see your new sleeping quarters? I am ready. I was excited to be sharing a bedroom with him. Let's go check it out. Crossing the hall, he opened the door. The first thing that caught my eye was another enormous television hanging on the wall. Another television, Maxim? I do have a lot of them. What can I say? I like to be entertained. Maybe I won't need to watch this one so much with you in my bed to entertain me now. I hope so. I can't sleep with a television on. I've only had the one I keep in the living room. His brow cocked. One television? That's crazy? Just one. I looked around, admiring the stylish furnishings. Really nice stuff you have in here. I like the muted colors. The olive-colored bedspread and curtains are nice. But it's sort of manly in here. Do to it whatever you want. The interior designer I hired to put this place together picked this stuff out. If you want, you can call him and see what kinds of ideas he has for a married couple. I'll do that. He might have some great ideas for the nursery too. We can start our search for a chef too. I want our kids to eat only homemade organic baby food. None of that crap out of a jar. Our kids are going to be healthy. No sugar? I asked with a smile. No sugar. No sodas. No junk food. We'll sacrifice ourselves and eat any that comes into this house so they won't have to. So this chef of ours has to be a nutritionist too. Nodding he said, I'm thinking someone who is trained in French cuisine and has a PhD in nutrition. I think that person would cost you an arm and a leg. I've got a few to spare. Taking me in his arms, he fell backward onto the bed. It's a California king. I don't want you getting lost on the other side of the bed, though. You're an exceptional cuddler. Am I? I played with his hair as I lay on top of him. You are. I like cuddling with you. He paused, then continued, I owe you a honeymoon. You get to pick the place we'll spend this coming week. Wow. Anywhere in the whole world. As long as it's luxurious, I'm rather fond of being around things like indoor toilets and running water. Who doesn't? I said with a chuckle. I've always wanted to see Paris. Which one? I've heard they have one in Texas and another in Tennessee. France, you goof. I punched him lightly in the arm. Ow, he faked pain. What a right hook you got there. Yeah, so you better watch out. So France, huh? I think they have casinos over there too. We can play a little roulette since you're so good at it. That would be fun. 
Making honeymoon plans sounded exciting, especially since I didn't have to be overly concerned about how much things would cost. I want to see if I can find a hotel that has a view of the Eiffel Tower. That sounds romantic. It sounds that way to me too. Can I ask you something personal? You can. Was Paris the plan with the other guy? No. That plan was a weekend in wine country, right here in California. Jacob had to do so much traveling in the military that he didn't want to waste much time traveling to get to our honeymoon destination. Glad you didn't say you wanted to do that with me. I hate wine. It gives me a splitting headache every time I drink it. That's good to know. You have any food allergies I should be aware of? No food allergies, but I'm allergic to bee stings. I swell up like a balloon. I'm allergic to kale. Yuck. I hate that crap. Yeah, I hate it too. So I tell people that I'm allergic to it. I laughed. I'm not really allergic to anything, but if you hear me saying that I am, it means I hate the food or drink they're trying to get me to try. Got ya. You're one of those people who don't like to hurt other people's feelings. So you tell little white lies to get around doing things you don't want to do. He grinned. I felt like we'd be doing a lot of laughing in this marriage, which gave me the impression that we'd make one happy family. I want to take you to meet my parents very soon. A worried expression took over his face. Do you think they'll actually like me? They will love you. How about your parents? Do you think they'll like me? I have to admit that I haven't told them a thing about you or the marriage thing. So, hitting them with everything all at once will probably shock them. They might not even like me once we tell them the whole scoop. But my sister is a totally free spirit, and she's the fence mender in our family. She'll smooth things over. This won't be their first grandkid either. They've got eight of them. My sister has three. Then my younger brother has two, and he's married to a woman who has three kids from another marriage. I'm an only child, so this is my parents' first one. They're very excited about it too. My parents will be happy, but it's old hat to them now. Don't get your feelings hurt if they don't jump up and down with joy when we tell them the news about the baby. They honestly don't get very excited at all. I think they did a lot of pot back in the day. They're not super cool or anything like that. They just lack much emotion. If that's the case, then I don't have anything to worry about. No emotion means they won't hate me. That's all I really care about. They don't hate anyone. I'm not sure if they love anyone either. They've never told any of us that they love us. They're kind of weird. I know. My mom is a hugger, and she and dad always tell me they love me. You'll get used to hearing it from them. They love everyone. We come from very different backgrounds. He rolled me onto my back, then lay on his side beside me, looking down at me as he played with a chunk of my hair, twirling it around his finger. I don't mean that in a bad way. I think it's good. We can pull from our different backgrounds to come up with something that's uniquely us, the Cambridge Constantine family. We're going to be a great family. I can't wait for this little one to come out and join us. I wondered if this would be a little boy, and whether we would really name him Jack. What if what you said that night all came true? I think that it would only be another sign that this really was meant to be. He kissed me softly on the lips. But even if it doesn't work out the way I spouted off the top of my head about our kids, I still believe that this was meant to be. It was written in the stars by the hand of God. You are my forever, Adele. And you are mine. Closing my eyes, I knew that this was always meant to be. Chapter 23 Maxim Adele dragged me along with her, as my feet didn't want to take me to meet her parents. Your dad probably thinks I'm a total loser for asking you for the annulment. No, he doesn't. Come on. I met your parents, and it wasn't nearly as bad as I'd thought it would be. I can't believe you think they have no emotions. They're perfectly nice people. 
they had quite the reaction to the baby news too. Your mom even gave me a hug before we left. They acted so differently with you around. I can't explain it. It's like they like you more than they like their own kids. I almost passed out when mom asked you to meet her for lunch sometime soon. I don't think I've ever been on a lunch date with her. She's sweet. We're going to get along great. And the same will happen with you and my parents. I promise. Just before we got to the door, it swung open and a woman ran out. Maxim. Her arms were thrown around me just as Adele let go of my hand. I'm so happy to finally meet you. And I you. I patted her on the back awkwardly. I'm Vanessa. That was the name Adele gave me for her mother. I watched Adele shaking her head. This is my Aunt Jane. Oh okay. Nice to meet you too Aunt Jane. The woman finally let me out of the bear hug she'd given me, her face all smiles. I'm her mother's younger more attractive sister. Adele rolled her eyes. Hi Aunt Jane. Jane took my hand pulling me with her. Hi Tinkles. One of my brows shot up as I looked at Adele. Tinkles? Adele didn't answer me, but her aunt did. She used to have potty troubles and peed in her pants a lot, until she was eight. So I nicknamed her Tinkles. Eight. I had an immature bladder, Adele said with pink flushed cheeks. Thanks for telling him about that awful nickname Aunt Jane. You're welcome. She pulled me inside the house, where there were more people than the two that I had expected to meet. He's here. Waving at the people I did not know I said, Yes, it's me, Maxim. Tinkles' new husband and baby daddy. The look Adele shot me was so cold that it could have turned my blood into ice cubes. Maxim. Sorry. Adele's new husband and baby daddy. Suddenly they all got up, and every single one of them shook my hand or gave me a hug as they told me their names. Patty North. I'm not a relative, just a neighbor. I've heard so much about you, Maxim. I have heard nothing about you, but it's a pleasure to meet you, Patty North. Glancing sideways at Adele, I gave her a wide-eyed look to let her know that she should have given me the heads up about the fact that I was about to meet everyone her parents knew. She just shrugged and walked away, leaving me to the wolves. I'm getting something to drink. I'll bring you something too. Yeah, make it strong, I shouted over the noise of so many people talking at once. Bob Lang. I've been Terry's barber for the last three decades. Hi there Bob Lang. Glad to know that. Aunt Trish Maxim. Terry's sister. Hello Aunt Trish. It felt like I had never met so many people at one time before, and I knew that I wouldn't remember any of their names. After what felt like an eternity later, my wife came up behind me, taking my hand. Okay, everyone, that's enough greetings. It's going to take some time before he'll really know all your names. Dad just told me that the food's ready out back. I watched them stomp toward the back door like a herd of elephants, leaving Adele and me alone in the living room. I've met everyone but your parents. Come on, let's go outside so you can meet them. Sneaky trick, tossing me into the deep end there, Adele. If you knew, you would have given me a tough time getting you here. That is true. How do you know me so well, when we've only been together for a couple of days? I don't know how I know you so well. It's weird, huh? A great weird. I kissed the top of her head and slipped my arm around her waist. Just as we walked outside, a large black dog jumped up, putting his massive paws on my chest and barking in my face. This is Chester, Adele said. My dad's best friend. I'd never been around dogs much. And this one seemed a little intimidating. Does Chester bite? He hasn't ever bitten anyone so far. She gently pushed him away from me. Chester bad dog. No jumping. You don't want us to ever get a dog. Do you? You don't like dogs? Chester eyed me warily, as he seemed to be waiting for my answer. Sure I like dogs. I nodded at Chester. Right buddy? He wagged his tail then barked one time. Adele nodded. He likes you. You've passed the big test now. A man walked up to me, holding his arms open. 
Come here, son-in-law. So you're Terry. I hugged the man, since he was into that sort of thing. Nice to finally meet you. I've met your barber, and I think you're podiatrist. Sorry about that hammer toe you have that gives you fits at times. He's a blabbermouth, isn't he? He said, letting me go. I keep telling Sam that there's a thing called doctor-patient confidentiality, but he doesn't believe me. Terry, stop hogging him, came a woman's voice from behind him. He stepped out of her way, and I saw an older version of Adele. Now, you have to be Vanessa, my new mother-in-law. That's right, Maxim. She hugged me. So happy to have you joining our family. Thanks for having me. Letting me go, she pointed at the food set up on a nearby table, where people waited in line, holding styrofoam plates. Adele told me that you're Jewish, so there is no pork of any kind. Everything is kosher, including the dill pickles. I'm not a practicing Jew. My mom's Jewish, and she's not a practicing Jew either. But for some reason, we still say that we're Jewish. It's also an ethnicity, darling, Vanessa let me know. I feel dumb. Don't, she replied with a gentle pat on my shoulder. Now, when are we going to get to meet your family? I was thinking at the baby shower, Adele tossed in helpfully. Her mother looked at her. And when will that be? Who's throwing it for you? Coco is throwing it, and will do it sometime in my seventh month of pregnancy. That long? Vanessa shook her head. No. That's not going to work for me. I'll schedule a dinner here, and you can invite them all. How many people are there in your family, Maxim? Um, well, there's me, that's one. Adele smiled at me, taking my hand as she took over for me. Six adults and eight kids, plus Maxim and I fix a date, then I'll invite them. Leaning in, I whispered, Do you think that's a good idea? My family isn't like your family. She whispered back, My mother doesn't take no for an answer. Did I forget to tell you that she's in sales? You did not mention that. Never tell her no to anything, or it will cause a long, drawn-out sales pitch to make you see things her way. Got it. Sounds like someone else I know. Lemonade. Vanessa asked as she handed us two glasses without waiting for our answers. I added some vanilla to soften the sourness of the lemon. Tasting it, I fell in love. My new favorite. Thank you. Adele and I took seats at a nearby table, preferring not to stand in line to wait to get something to eat. I looked around at all the people in their backyard. You know, it's funny. I've got a decent-sized family, and you are an only child. Yet your parents' gathering is much bigger than the one my family had for us. I suppose that being just the three of us, had my parents inviting friends and family over to make things more fun. I'm used to it. It's always been this way. You know, I can't recall a time that my parents had anyone over. We would go to my grandparents' house for the holidays. One would be at my mom's parents, the next one would be at my dad's parents. What are we going to do with our holidays, Adele? I'm sure that will just work itself out. She took my hand, holding our clasped hands on top of my knee. Everything will work itself out as we go along. Don't you think so? It has so far. I had no idea what was in store for us, but I had a good feeling about all of it. Adele's eyes scanned the yard full of people. Do you notice something missing, Maxim? No. There was a shit ton of people, and one happy-go-lucky dog. I didn't see anything missing, unless she was talking about a cat. There are no kids here. We're going to be bringing in the first kid to this crazy bunch of people. Surely these people have kids. They do. But they never bring them. It's like this was always adults only. Except for me, of course. Sounds a little lonely to me. It wasn't. They've always treated me like they're equal. Maybe that's why I didn't know how to have fun. I was treated like an adult from the beginning of my life. Well, we're not doing that to our kids. Didn't you have toys as a kid? You know, things to pay with? I had books. Oh, wow. I mean, wow. That's terrible, baby. Our kids are going to have every toy ever made. 
Smiling, she leaned her head on my shoulder. You're going to make sure they have fun. I know that. And you'll make sure they're smart and read and stuff. Yeah, I can do that. We're gonna have great kids. The best kids ever. I agree. You know, I have to say that I like all these people. What we did, you know, marrying as strangers, was on the dumb side. But no one here seems to be judging us. I've been afraid of all the wrong things. Yes, you have. Thanks for so quickly agreeing with me, honey. I had to laugh at her. Very supportive of you. I am here to support you. You can always count on me to agree with you when you say that you're wrong. Well, I wasn't wrong about one thing. What was that? Marrying you. That wasn't the mistake I kept saying it was. That was the smartest thing I've ever done. And I've done some pretty smart shit. That's why you make the big bucks. She squeezed my hand. Marrying you was the smartest thing I've ever done too. She moved our hands and pressed the back of mine to her baby bump. Our little one is proof of that. Staring into her eyes, I leaned in for a kiss. Aren't you too adorable? A woman's voice broke the spell Adele had me under. We looked to see who had made the comment. Adele said, Thank you, Lois. No problem. I can see why you two got hitched right off the bat. You were made for each other. Perfect. Just perfect. She walked away, holding a hamburger in one hand and a loaded plate in the other. I waited for her to get out of earshot before I asked Adele, And she's who now? She's the librarian from our favorite library. Of course, you would have a favorite library. Books instead of toys. I get it now. What about games? Did you guys play any games? Chess and backgammon. Chinese checkers. I asked, trying to find out if this poor woman had ever had any real fun. No. We did play cribbage once or twice. Dad didn't like it though. It got put into the attic and never came back down. What the hell is cribbage? I hadn't even heard of that game. It's a card game, but it comes with a pegboard, and it's extremely complicated. We never got it down good, and Dad didn't like card games in the first place. He prefers skill over luck. He and I have nothing in common. I sat back and sighed. I can't play chess, and I don't even want to learn. Backgammon seems boring too. Think I can talk him into trying his hand at a video game? My dad? Play a video game, she laughed and shook her head. I don't see that happening. I'm going to get him to play. I'm going to even get your mom to play. You'll see. I'm going to have them playing in no time at all. Don't be upset when they turn you down each and every time you try. Pulling out my cell phone, I looked up games that needed skill and found some video games I thought they would like. Getting up, I was going to put my plan into action right away. I'm going to get my game console out of the car, take it inside, and hook it up. Her brows shot up. You brought one? There's always one in the trunk of my car. There is, she asked with surprise. I'm a tech mogul. Hell yes, there's always a console in my car. You never know when I'll need some inspiration, and playing games has given me plenty of them. Thirty minutes later, I downloaded a game I knew everyone would want to play. One by one, people straggled into the house, and each one of them asked what I was playing. Then soon after, Terry came inside to see where everyone had gone. Well, here you all are. What's this? I patted the spot next to me. Come take a seat and try this out, Terry. He took the seat, and I handed him a game controller. Is this luck or skill? Skill. Tell me what buttons to push for what. After giving him the directions, I saw Adele and her mother walking inside. Both of their jaws dropped as they saw Terry having the time of his life and laughing like a little kid. The way Adele smiled melted my heart as she mouthed, I love you. Can I try? Vanessa asked as she came up on my other side. This looks like fun. It is fun. Here, take my controller and I'll tell you what to do. Where can I buy one of these things? Terry asked, without taking his eyes off the television screen. 
You guys can keep this one. I've got lots more at home. And I'm going to have a bigger, better television delivered and set up tomorrow. One with surround sound. It makes playing even more fun. That would be awesome, Vanessa said as she played alongside her husband. Adele ran her arm around me and leaned against my side. I cannot believe the effect you have on them. Seems we each have pretty amazing effects on each other's families. I think that's cool. Fate, she whispered. It really was fate that brought us together that night. She just might be right about that. Epilogue Adele Six months later Hey there, Jack, Maxim cooed as he held our newborn son. It's nice to finally meet you. Lying in the hospital bed, I couldn't wipe the smile off my extremely tired face. Twenty-eight hours of labor. But it was well worth it. He's the cutest baby I've ever seen. Right? Maxim looked at me with a huge grin. I mean, he's red and wrinkly but he's adorable. I loved him the moment I saw him. Even covered in gore, our son was the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. Because we love him. There was no way I could ever love anyone more than I already loved our son. So, what are we going to give him for a middle name? What goes good with Jack? I mean, we didn't know if we were having a boy or a girl, and I wasn't even sure you were sure about naming him Jack if he was a boy. But just looking at him, I knew his name was supposed to be Jack. Me too. I closed my eyes, resting them a bit. Let's see what comes to me, since you chose the first names of our kids. Maybe I can pick up on at least this one's middle name. Give it a shot, honey. I was coming up empty. Nothing. I got absolutely nothing at all. Maybe because you're exhausted. He grinned at me. That was some great pushing you did, by the way. Way to go, mama. You were a trooper, holding my hand while I squeezed the hell out of it. You only whimpered a couple of times. I laughed as I recalled his pained expression. You're very strong but it was the least I could do while you went through what looked like complete, torturous hell. I'm not sure you should have any more kids. That could not have been pleasant. I definitely don't want to talk about having more kids right now. Maybe in a few years, we'll see what I think about it. It was not pleasant at all. But it was worth it. I'm glad you feel that way. I'm glad we made this little man right here that fateful night in Vegas. Or morning, or whatever time it was. I wish your mommy and daddy could remember how they made you. Let's not tell him about that. I didn't want our kids to know our whole sordid history. He doesn't need to know that we were so reckless and irresponsible. And he definitely doesn't need to know how we had a difference of opinion at the beginning of our marriage. I agree. I come off as a rather giant jerk in that story. The tale we will tell will be this, we met, fell in love, and got married. That's it. That is the entire story. We won't go into the timeline at all. And I don't see any reason to go into the details of where we met either. It doesn't matter, I agreed. Who cares if we met in Vegas or in Oakland or wherever? That's not the part of the story that matters at all. The only parts that matter are that we did meet and we did fall in love. And we did get married. No one tells their kids about when they were conceived anyway. I mean, no one that I know does that. It would be creepy if we did talk about that. I agree. My parents never told me about my conception. And thank God for that. Yeah. Mine neither. It's not really a secret we'll be keeping from him. He wouldn't want to know about all that nasty stuff anyway. No, he definitely would not. A name came to mind and I said it out loud, Jack Rufus. Because we were roofied. He laughed and shook his head. No. We can't do that to him. But what about Jack Daniel? You want to name our son after Whiskey? I wasn't going to go along with that. Vetoed. Vetoed? He looked at me with surprise. So we have vetoes? 
Did I miss a meeting or something? You might have. No way we're naming our son after alcohol. He looked back at the sleeping baby in his arms. I know. We can name this one after my father, and then when we have George, we'll give him your father's first name as his middle name. Jack Michael, I said. Yeah. I do like that idea. And someday, we'll have George Terry. But what about Kate? What's her middle name going to be? I think that one is obvious. You do. I didn't see how it was, though. Kate Lynn. He wiggled his brows. Right? Well, we have some time to think about her middle name. It's not horrible, but I'm not sure about that one. I like it. It's gonna stick. Just watch. He was probably right about that. I'd had no idea Jack's name would stick, but it had. Somehow, things in our lives fell into place in easy ways. Not too much thought had to go into anything we'd done together. It was easy, and that was just the way things happened for us. I just hope things keep going this way. Maxim. The day we brought Jack home from the hospital was the hardest but best day of my life. Why is he crying? I think he's hungry. But he won't latch onto the nipple. Adele had breastfed him in the hospital, but once we got home, he wanted nothing to do with her. You seem tense. Yeah, his crying is making me tense. Come on Jack, eat something. Maybe you shouldn't boss him around. Maybe he doesn't like that. I sat down beside her on the sofa. If you're hungry, there's some food right there, son. She looked over her shoulder at me. Seriously? What? I'm just letting him know that it's available only if he wants it. I ran my hand over his little head that was covered with a blue beanie. It's 100% organic. The nurse said that if he doesn't get a couple of ounces of milk every two hours, it's bad. How many hours has it been since I fed him last? Two and a half. You haven't fed him since we got home. Maybe he doesn't like change. Maybe he knew the hospital, and this place is freaking him out. I don't think his baby brain is capable of all that. Then it's you. You have to calm down, honey. Jack took it up a notch, and his crying got louder. How can I calm down when he's screeching like this? I had to get this situation under control. So I ran one arm around my wife and put my hand on my son's head, cradling it from behind, and then began rocking back and forth, humming quietly. Hum. Hum. I began humming the happy birthday tune, and closed my eyes to bring the vibe to calmness. The sound of snorting and sucking made me open my eyes. I found the baby eating, and Adele looking down at him as a tear ran down her cheek. Great job, Daddy. You too, Mama. I kept rocking while I watched our son fill up his tiny belly before he drifted off to sleep. Night, night, little man. Adele pulled him from her breast and handed him to me. You got to burp him. I'm going to go take a shower. Think you'll be okay for a few minutes? I think we'll be fine. Take your time. I kissed her cheek. I love you. I love you too. She kissed my lips softly. I really do. As she walked away, I watched her. Her pace was slow, as she was as sore as she'd ever been in her entire life. But she didn't moan or complain even once. My heart overflowed with love for her and our son. Placing my tiny son against my chest, I patted his back to help him burp. Your mother is the best lady in the whole wide world. You're lucky to have her. I'm lucky to have her. We're going to be a great family, Jack. Don't worry about that. He let out a burp, then wiggled a little, making himself more comfortable before he settled into a deeper sleep. I thought it might be the right time to let him try out his new baby bed. Taking him to the nursery, I looked at the bed and tried to figure out how to very gently lay him in it in a way that wouldn't wake him up. But as soon as his little body left my chest, he began to wiggle, and I had to bring him close to me again. Okay, so not ready to lay in your bed that mommy and I took forever picking out to make sure it was the most special bed any baby has ever had. I mean, the mattress alone costs like a thousand bucks. 
it's so comfy even I like laying on it. You're missing out, is what I'm trying to tell you, Jack. I tried again to lay him down, but he wiggled again. So I aborted that mission and went to the kitchen to get myself a drink of water. While there, I started searching for something to eat that wouldn't be noisy or leave crumbs or be too hard to eat using only one hand. I came up empty on the food, but I did find a bottle of water. Maybe letting the chef have the next couple of days off was a mistake. I'd wanted us to have our privacy when we brought the baby home. I'd had no idea how that would go, and didn't want to worry about our chef thinking we were super amateurs at taking care of our own baby, which we were. Going to sit down, I grabbed the remote and tried to find something quiet to watch on television as my son slept soundly on my chest. Even though I was sort of trapped and kind of starving, it still felt good to have him with me. The next thing I knew, I felt someone pushing my shoulder. Maxim, you fell asleep. Opening my eyes, I saw Adele standing there, the baby in her arms. I did what? You fell asleep while holding the baby. You can't do that. Come on, let's put him into his bed. I tried. He kept almost waking up every time I tried to put him down. Come on. Let's try it again. We can't sleep with him. We might squish him. We were able to put him in the bassinet at the hospital. How different can it be to put him in the baby bed? Following her to his room, I felt terrible that I'd fallen asleep while holding him. I could have dropped him. But you didn't. Yeah, but I could've. Man, what the hell is wrong with me? You're almost as tired as I am. It's okay. We'll catch up on our rest and be good as new in no time at all. I hope you're right. When we got to his bed she tried to lay him down and this time, he whined a little. So she put him back against her chest. Why is he doing that? Like I know. Nodding, I pointed to the bed. It's like he can sense that it's not the same as the bassinet or something. The sides are higher, she pointed out. Maybe having to lift him to get him over them is what's not working. I think you can make the rails lower. Let me see. I wiggled the rail and it made a terrible sound. Shush. Yeah, I know. I can't get it to come loose. She lifted her foot a little. Look here. I can slightly recall the guy who came to set this thing up telling me that you can use your foot to push this thing and then be able to move the rails. Using my foot, I pressed the little lever and the rail fell down with a loud clank. And that's when Jack woke up screaming in anger. Great. I'm going to take him to our room and rock him in the chair in there to get him to go back to sleep. You figure this thing out. And we can't leave the rail all the way down or he might wiggle out and fall. Try as I may, I could not figure out how to make the rail low enough without it being too low. So I did the only other thing I could do. Opening the door to our bedroom, I said, I'm going down to the superstore to buy a bassinet. Then I'm setting it up in our room, right next to the bed, just like the one in the hospital was set up. I'm also going to grab some food while I'm out. What can I get you? Chinese. Those noodles that I like. And some hot tea too. Don't forget the egg roll, and make sure they give you a fortune cookie. Please. She rocked the baby. And hurry, Maxim. I'm very tired. So I rushed like a madman to get the bassinet and the food. I scarfed down a burger and some fries as I drove home, breaking the speed limit and running stop signs as I had my flashers on. This is an emergency. An hour later, I had a very tired wife looking at me with frightened eyes, as it was approaching the time our son would wake and want to be fed again. Do you think you'll have that thing put together before he eats and goes back to sleep? I will have it done. You can count on me. I screwed things in and locked wheels into place like an expert. Almost there. I pulled the backing off the little blue bow and stuck it on the bassinet. All ready for our little bundle of joy. Why? Jack cried as he woke up starving. You know, it's hectic and sort of on the scary side, honey, but I think we've found it. What have we found, Maxim? Our happily ever after, of course. 
The End Sneak peek for Cowboy Protector, a bad boy secret baby romance accidental love too. Roman It felt good to hear the crowd cheering for me. My hometown of Carthage, Texas had always held my most avid supporters, and I needed all the support that I could get. Sitting atop a 1,500-pound bull, my hand tethered to it with a bull rope, I gripped the leather lacing, making sure it didn't slip. All that was left to do was to give the cowboys who held the bull inside the chute a nod. Then they'd set him free, and my ride would begin. Are you ready? The sound of the announcer's voice over the loudspeaker did nothing to calm my nerves. Not that I was scared, I had done this plenty of times before. Adrenaline coursed through my veins, making the blood inside them boil. Sweat formed on my forehead, the way it always did when I was in this particular position. The not knowing what would happen was the hardest part of bull riding. You could watch the same bull do its thing 20 times, and not two of those times would be exactly the same. Rodeo fans, allow me to introduce you to Old Yeller, the bull beneath our hometown rider, Roman Etheridge, the announcer said. This is the young bull's debut. Raised right here in Carthage, Texas, on the Whisper Ranch, owned by the Gentry Brothers. Roman is not only a rodeo cowboy. He's also the man who raised this young bull from a little calf. Roman manages the bucking bull breeding program for Whisper Ranch. What better cowboy to introduce this bull to the world of rodeo? The crowd roared, and I began to get pumped up for the ride. I nodded my head, signaling the cowboys to release Old Yeller. He bucked forward, nearly unseating me right there in the chute. I held on tight though, tightening my grip around the rope with both hands. The bull continued to get more excited, jumping up and down. Settle down, boy. It's just me, your old buddy from the ranch. Now let's give these people a good show. Once the bull settled down, I leaned forward, gripping the rope with all my strength. The cowboy in charge of opening the chute asked, You ready, Roman? As I'll ever be. I gave one more nod and this time, the gate came open, and out we slipped like molten lava. The bull jumped up in the air, and then started running in a circle, coming back around to where he had started. I tried my best to stay on top of him, but when he came down from a jump, my hand slipped along with the rest of me. Unfortunately, my hand didn't slip all the way out of the rope, leaving me dangling off the side of the monstrous bull who acted like we'd never met before. Yella slow down. The bull wasn't listening to me at all as he continued to jump, kick, snort, and bellow like he was being beaten to death. Which he was not. Other than having me on his back, nothing else was happening to him. As the bull came around again, I was able to swing my other hand onto the rope and hold tightly once more, pulling myself back up onto the bull's back. I wasn't going to get any points now, since I'd used both hands. But the people in the stands cheered me on anyway. They cheered so loud I could barely hear anything else. I waved to them as we went by and tried to smile, but it felt like my face would break with how hard I had been clenching my jaw. Focused on trying to get my hand free from the rope, I looked at the knot that had gotten screwed up somehow. Come on! I shouted as the knot refused to loosen. The rodeo clowns moved around the bull, trying to get him to follow them out of the arena so that they could help me get off the beast. One of them whistled. Over here, Yeller. His bright red suspenders held up old blue jean shorts that were three sizes too big for him. He took his oversized cowboy hat off and began waving it in the bull's face to get his attention. The bull was not impressed, and instead of following the clowns, he turned and ran directly toward the stands. Oh shit. I yelled as we headed right for them. I leaned forward and wrapped my arms tightly around the beast's neck, just in time to avoid getting head-butted by him when he jumped up into the air once again. There was nothing I could do. Old Yeller was headed for the tall fence that surrounded the arena. He meant to get the hell out of there, and fast. And I was stuck to him, going along for the ride whether I wanted to or not. I began fishing for a handhold as best I could with only one arm to work with. In the meantime, Old Yeller kept scrambling along as fast as he could go, and it must have been pretty darn fast, because the sounds of those clowns out there screaming at me had begun to fade away behind us. But before we could make it to the fence, Old Yeller skidded to a stop, somehow wrenching my hand free of the rope. He turned me loose with one mighty buck that left me lying in the dirt. 
All I could see was his belly, and my ribs felt like they'd just been stepped on by an elephant. The next thing I knew, he'd pick me up with his horns and tossed me like a ragdoll. I flew through the air, heading for a future starring nothing but sky and birds who didn't give two hoots about the predicament I was currently in. This is it. I'm a goner for sure this time. Before the last bit of air left my lungs, I came down hard on my ass, the rest of the breath knocked right out of me. For a moment, I just sat there, looking at the stands but not seeing anything but a blurry scene. I heard nothing at all, the fans had gone silent. Then one voice penetrated the silence as a little girl shrieked, help him? The bull's coming for him again. Turning my head, I saw the bull I'd raised from a tiny calf charging toward me. Suddenly, someone grabbed me by the shoulders and began pulling me backward at a fast speed. But it wasn't fast enough. The bull got to me and managed to get one last stomp in, breaking my leg, before a couple of cowboys caught him with their ropes, stopping him from doing any more damage to my body. Unable to breathe, I heard the siren as the ambulance came into the arena now that the bull had been cleared out of it. The light faded a little at a time until there was no light left, and I heard no more. The sound of something beeping woke me up. I tried to open my eyes, but it was extremely difficult. Finally, I managed the simple task, only to find a small figure moving about the room. I noticed that my left leg was lifted into the air by some sort of contraption. There was a tightness in my chest. I also felt something underneath me, keeping my butt off the bed. With all the lines hooked up to me, it took me no time at all to realize where I was, and then I remembered why I was there in the first place. That damn bull. The figure turned around and moved toward me. The closer it got, the better I could make out that it was a pretty girl. You're awake. Good. She leaned over me, the scent of flowers filling my nose. You've been asleep for a few hours. Are you in any pain? Her name tag said Bryn. And her eyes were green. A blonde ponytail hung down her back. She was the prettiest girl I'd ever seen. Hi. I smiled at her, and it hurt to do that, but I did it anyway. Hi, she said as she smiled back at me before putting something against my mouth. You shouldn't try to smile. Your lower lip is split a little. Not enough to require stitches, but enough to bleed if you try to smile. Here, drink some water. It'll help. She looked around, and I saw her pick up a cup off a table and then come back to me. Thank you, I said as I sipped on the straw, not worrying about anything with her looking after me. No problem cowboy, she said, and I noticed that her voice had a thin twang to it. Do you need anything for pain? You were given some by the paramedics, but it might have begun to wear off by now. I don't want you in any pain. That's nice of you. It's my job. She put her fingers on the inside of my wrist, lifting it up a little. Even though I was mostly numb, I felt a bit of electricity coming from her touch. Your pulse is good. She eased my hand back to lie on the bed. You are one tough dude, Mr. Etheridge. Roman, I said. Mr. Etheridge is my dad. Roman. She ran her finger over her name tag. I'm Bryn. I'll be your day nurse while you're staying with us at Carthage Hospital. How long am I going to be here? I was fine right where I was, but it wasn't easy finding conversation topics, and I wanted her to keep talking to me. I'm not sure. Dr. Green will be in to see you shortly. She pulled out her cell phone and tapped on the screen. I'm letting him know that you're awake now. He'll be in soon to explain your injuries. Why can't you tell me what they are? I didn't know who Dr. Green was, but I knew I would much rather hear her sweet voice delivering the news to me than anyone else's. I'm not really supposed to do that, she said and put her phone away. Dr. Green will do that. So the pain, are you in any? I don't feel a thing, I lied, not wanting her to think I was some wimpy guy who cried over a little or a lot of pain. Shaking her head she said, that's not good. If you feel nothing, then you might have spinal cord injuries which would mean surgery for you. I can feel. I'm just not feeling any pain. I'm tough like you said. Don't let that bravado get in the way of me, treating your pain Roman. I don't care who you are or how well your body is built. Everyone feels pain. 
She softly ran her hand over my left leg that was strung up. I want to know if this is too high. Are you uncomfortable? Does your hip feel like it's in a bind? Nah. There was no real pain in my leg. Is my leg broken? Dr. Green will tell you about that. So, it is broken? I didn't say that. You can just tell me. I won't tattle on you. She looked at the door, which was closed, then back at me as she bit her lower lip. No. I can't. It seemed to me that she was a little afraid of this doctor she'd told me was coming to see me. Is this guy mean? Or is it a woman? The doctor is a man, she told me, straightening the blanket that covered me. And he's not mean, just strict. He's a great doctor, and you can trust him. Now, I really need you to tell me if you need anything for pain and where it hurts. I had the feeling she would get into trouble with the strict doctor if I didn't tell her the truth. My butt hurts. My chest is tight and it's uncomfortable. Thank you. Her smile lit me up inside. I'll put you on a morphine drip. It will allow you to give yourself a boost of painkillers every half hour. But only use it if you need it. I don't want you using it only to feel high. It's so easy to get addicted to pain medication. Thanks for caring. I could sense that she was a kind person. I'll use it responsibly. The door opened and in stepped the strict doctor. His salt and pepper hair told me he was middle-aged and his lips formed one thin line. He looked strict too. I'm Dr. Green, Mr. Etheridge. Call me Roman. He looked at the chart in his hands instead of looking at me. Have you been given anything for pain? He looked at Bryn with a burning expression. As if daring her to have done something wrong. I just told the nurse that I am experiencing some pain and she's about to hook me up, I said, trying to draw his attention off her. Good, he huffed as he finally looked at me. Well, you've really done a number on yourself. You have bruised ribs on both sides of your chest. I thought so. It actually felt like they were broken, but I took his word for them just being bruised. You have a severely bruised coccyx which is also quite swollen. That's why we have that donut underneath you, to alleviate the pressure on it. The lower vertebra suffered trauma as well. Your left tibia has a hairline fracture, which is lucky for you, because there's a hoof print right in the middle of your shin that's black and blue. As a matter of fact, you have hoof prints on your chest too. I'm not sure how you managed not to break more bones in your body. I drink milk every single morning, and I take vitamin D supplements. When you ride bulls, it pays to keep your bones strong. Bryn came up beside me, holding a bag of something clear, then hooking it onto the contraption that held some other bags of fluid. It's very smart of you to think about keeping your bones and your body in great shape if you're going to be doing dangerous activities. Nurse Davis, please refrain from commenting on a patient's physique, the doctor said. It's unprofessional. Sorry, sir. Her eyes came to mine. I apologize for what I said. No need. I looked at the stern doctor. It's cool, man. She didn't offend me at all. I'm dying for a Dr. Pepper. Y'all got any around here? No. You can't have any soda right now. And I'm sure she didn't offend you with her remark. It's not you I'm worried about. He put the clipboard into the little box at the end of the hospital bed. You'll be staying here for about a week or so. A week? I didn't want to be laid up that long. And what about my leg being up like this? How am I supposed to go to the bathroom or take a shower? You won't be able to get up to do those things. A nurse will help you when you need to use the toilet. And you'll be given sponge baths. The sponge bath was more than okay with me. Especially if Bryn would be the one doing them. But the help with the bathroom was not. I want to be able to go to the bathroom by myself. Then you shouldn't have gotten onto the back of a thousand pound animal, the doc said without an ounce of emotion in his expression or his voice. It was fifteen hundred pounds for your information. And I didn't know I would end up not being able to go to the bathroom without help. Well now you know. He looked at Bryn. Monitor him for 15 minutes to make sure he doesn't have a bad reaction to the morphine, then get to the other patients. 
Yes, Dr. Green, she said with reverence in her voice. I'll check on you each morning when I make my rounds, Mr. Etheridge. If you need anything, just press the nurse's button on your bed. And then he left without even saying goodbye. He's a real treat. I rolled my eyes at Bryn with the sarcastic remark. I saw the little grin that she tried to fight off, and for a moment all the pain left my chest. If I could coax some of those sweet smiles from her each day, I'd be healed in no time. Bryn. He's adorable, I said with a sigh as I sipped hot coffee from a styrofoam cup in the nurse's lounge. He's beaten up pretty good too. But you wouldn't know it from the way he's talking. He's as tough as they come. Don't go falling in love, Bryn, Bethany, a fellow nurse, teased me. Dr. Green would kill me if I did anything remotely romantic with any patient. I knew better than to do anything that was against the doctor's rules. I bet he's a real cowboy, Tammy, another nurse, said with a sigh. Hard working and doesn't complain about anything. You're right about that. The only thing he asked for was a Dr. Pepper, which the doctor refused him for some odd reason. I didn't see why Roman couldn't have a soda if he wanted one, but I wasn't about to question Dr. Green. You should totally take one to him, Bryn. Some doctors can be jerks, Bethany said, Dr. Green being one of the biggest ones who works here. I didn't like to talk about people behind their backs. And I sure as hell wasn't going to say bad things about the man who'd taken me under his wing since I'd first shown up to intern for his office. He's strict but fair. An utter professional at all times too. I shouldn't even have questioned why he didn't want the patient to have a soda. Um, you are human, right? Tammy asked, then laughed. Sometimes you can be such a Stepford. A what? I asked. You know, Tammy said, like the movie Stepford Wives? The women were all very pretty and totally subservient to their husbands. That's you, but you're that way with Dr. Green instead of a husband. I am not. There was no way I would have ever considered myself to be subservient. He's my boss, Tammy. I'm supposed to follow his orders. Bethany added her two cents, saying, but do you have to enjoy doing it so thoroughly? It's not like I enjoy following orders, Bethany. I couldn't believe these two ganging up on me. You both follow orders too. At least we gripe about it though, Tammy said as her hands moved to rest on her ample hips. That's all we're really saying to you, Bryn. Stop thinking that Dr. Green is always right. He's not. And he's not even as fair as you say he is, either. Personally, I see him as a control freak. And since you're the only one who actually allows him to control you, he's turned you into his favorite puppet. I would show them. They would see that I wasn't some puppet for the doctor. Going to the fridge, I found a couple of cans of Dr. Pepper inside and grabbed one. You two are wrong about me. I stomped away, on a mission now to get the carbonated beverage to the poor cowboy who was in need of something fizzy and sweet. I am not anyone's puppet. Grumbling to myself as I went into the hallway, I missed seeing the man who had obviously spotted me. Nurse Davis, where do you think you're going with that thing? It was Dr. Green, and the frown he wore told me he had already figured me out. So I had to come up with something quick. I'm nowhere, sir. You looked like you were definitely heading somewhere. He looked up the hallway, his eyes on the door to Roman's room. You wouldn't be going against my order that he not have any soda right now, would you? No, sir. But I did want to know why he would deprive the poor broken man of anything. May I ask you why you told him that he couldn't have any soda? I mean, for my own medical knowledge. Not that I'm trying to challenge your decision. His dark brows drew together as anger became clear in his expression. Do you have any idea how sugar-laden that soda is? Yes? I nodded. But how can a little sugar hurt him? You've seen the bruises on his body. He's got a lot of healing to do, and sugary substances won't help him do that. Plus, there's caffeine in that soda, and that will interact with the morphine and make it less effective than he needs it to be right now. Even though he may be acting tough, that boy is in a lot of pain right now. He was just putting up a front to impress you. 
He put a hand on my shoulder. I saw the way he looked at you, Bryn. And I noticed the way you looked at him too. I froze at that comment. I didn't look at him any differently than I look at any other patient doctor. I lied. I hadn't realized I'd been such an open book while in Roman's company. Don't try to fool me. He removed his hand. I'm too old and wise to ever believe that lie you just told me. If I looked at him in any way that was unbecoming of a nurse, then I am sorry. And I will be sure to watch myself whenever I have to check up on him. I lifted the can of soda. As for this, it's mine. I had no intentions of giving it to anyone but myself. Bryn, if you continue lying to me, there will be consequences. He looked at the door across the hall from us. That storeroom looks like the perfect place for a timeout. A timeout? Does he think I'm some spoiled child? You know what I mean. Put that thing in the trash and get on with your duties, he ordered. Of course, Dr. Green. I did not like the way he'd treated me as if I was some child who needed to be punished. Just as I turned to go back to the nurse's lounge to put the soda back into the fridge, I felt his fingers graze up my arm. Then he rested his hand on my shoulder, turning me back to face him. Hey! You know that I care about you, right? I nodded, though I wasn't sure what he was getting at. I know you do. Good. I just don't want you to get hurt. Cowboys are nothing but trouble. You don't need any trouble in your life. You're going places, Bryn. Someone like that self-destructive kid would only slow you down. He could even bring you down to his level if you let him. He placed his hand on my cheek, looking at me as if I were the only person around, which I was not, as Tammy and Bethany had just come out of the lounge and into the hallway. I cut my eyes at them as they moved past us, giggling. Insanely embarrassed, I felt my cheeks heating with a fierce blush. I'm not about to let anyone bring me down. Good. Because you deserve to be happy. But you need to be careful of who you're happy with. When you're as gifted as you are, you have to be on the lookout for those individuals who are looking to take advantage of you. That boy in there is definitely looking to take advantage of your generous nature. But he'll give you nothing in return. You do understand what I'm saying, right? I understand. The words felt thick in my throat, as I knew exactly what he was saying. I honestly doubted whether he had the right to tell me such things. But I had no idea how to say that to him without sounding rude. Thank you for your concern, Dr. Green. That's all I have to say about that. Just know what I said is only for your own good. He removed his hand from my shoulder. Now go ahead and get rid of that thing. I'm going to put it back where I found it. So you were going to give it to him, he said with a smile. I wasn't going to admit a thing. No sir. I was not going to give this to him. When he brought up the drink, it made me crave it myself. But after talking to you and this thing stirring up so much, I've decided that I no longer want it. Hum. He didn't seem to know whether to believe me or not. Don't you see that the boy has already manipulated your mind? I could not believe him. I can't see how he's managed to do that in the few minutes I was in that room with him. He said he wants something and you end up wanting the same thing. Don't be a sheep, Bryn. You're much too smart for that. I almost wanted to tell him the truth so that he wouldn't think I was some dumb sheep but I couldn't bring myself to do that. I'll watch myself when I'm around him, like I said before. See that you do. You know his looks will diminish as he ages. You might think he's hot stuff right now, but the life he's living will ensure he looks 90 by the time he's only 40. Mark my words. I've never seen a cowboy who hasn't aged remarkably badly. It almost seemed as if the doctor was jealous of Roman. What makes you think that I think is hot stuff? With a chuckle, he put his hand back on my shoulder. This time his thumb grazed my chin. I can read you like a book, girl. How long have we known each other? I was 18 when I walked into your office for the internship. I'm 22 now. So about four years. Plenty long enough for me to know who you really are. 
You know that I think the world of you, and I know you're going places. Like when you join me to take on jobs for Doctors Without Borders. I can count on you. I can trust you. I've always got your back. Just know that. He'd begun to make me feel a bit uncomfortable with all the touching, so I took a step back to put some space between us and make it so he couldn't touch me anymore. I know that, Dr. Green. I understand you perfectly too. I'll keep myself in check. I've got patience to see to now. Yes you do, he went back to stoic mode and strode away from me. So, what was that all about? Tammy asked as I turned around and found her walking up to me. Well he thinks I've got a crush on the broken cowboy. I held up the can of soda. And he was sure I was taking this to him too. Man he's good isn't he? Like he can read your mind or something. I guess he does have a point though. I mean we did just meet. And how do I know that cowboy isn't trying to take advantage of me? It's impossible to take advantage of someone when you share a mutual attraction Bryn, she shrugged. Maybe you should at least give him the soda, before you make any final judgments about him. You're right. I looked over my shoulder to check that the doctor was nowhere to be seen. What the doc doesn't know won't hurt him. I don't think a little Dr. Pepper will take the edge off the morphine. And now that I can see that he's sort of jealous of Roman, I know he did it out of spite. Tammy smiled. So you're okay then? I mean, he really worked you over. It was that noticeable. I winced with embarrassment. With a nod she said, I think you should try to distance yourself from that man. Not the cowboy, the doctor. He gives off a weird vibe when he's with you. I don't like it at all. It's not quite fatherly either. It's more like he has this idea that you're his in some way. You know what I mean? Not at all. I didn't see Dr. Green that way. He's my mentor, that's all he is to me. He's trying to train me, so that I can be the professional that I'm seeking to be. I trust him. Tammy looked dubious. I don't know Bryn. I'm not sure it's a good idea to trust him with anything. You don't even know the man well enough to be talking bad about him. I arched an eyebrow at her, accusingly. She was just trying to drive a wedge between me and the doctor. The bad part was that the doctor had warned me that people might try to do this, so they could shove me out of the way to make room for them to be mentored by him. Maybe you're into him, she said with a snarky sound to her voice. Sorry I didn't realize that sooner. I am not into him in that way. Well he's into you. You can't really be that blind Bryn. Whatever Tammy. I'm done with this conversation. I've got work to do and so do you. We need to get back to it and stop talking about dumb things that don't matter at all. Every direction I turned towards seemed to lead to me feeling awkward and sort of attacked, and I was done feeling that way. Shoving the can of soda into my pocket, I headed toward Roman's room. I wasn't sure if I would give it to him or not. But I would be the one making that decision, and I promised myself that I wouldn't let what anyone else said influence my decision in the least. No matter what, I was going to try and be a professional in this situation. It didn't matter how good looking the cowboy was, he was just a patient. I had to think of him in that way and in that way only. Dr. Green was right. I had been looking at Roman with stars in my eyes. I had to stop doing that. Even if Roman had looked at me that way first. That didn't matter at all. If I were going to be the professional that I wanted to be, I had to not think about how a person looked. I couldn't care if they had amazing eyes or lush, thick dark waves of hair. I had to deal with their symptoms. I had to help them alleviate their pain. I had to help them get back on the road to good health again, and nothing more than that. In my career, there were sure to be handsome men who would come and go. I couldn't go falling for any of them. And I had to maintain professionalism, so that they wouldn't fall for me. Since Roman was the first patient that I had immediately been attracted to, he would be the one I would learn from. I would learn to separate my personal and professional sides. I had to learn how to do that anyway. 
Letting myself be around him more would help me find ways to make that separation. Inundating myself in the attraction and learning how to make it not matter was my mission. I would be the epitome of professionalism. No matter how hard it would be to learn, I would learn to do it. End of sneak peek for Cowboy Protector. A bad boy secret baby romance accidental love too. Thank you for listening to this audiobook. Audio copyright 2024 BFA Publishing. Please like and subscribe to support this channel. It helps more than you know.